Uh, we just got to find a way to score. Um, obviously, we, we, we didn't bat the allotted overs. And that's one of the main focuses for us right now, especially for this second game. But now we got to bowl first. So we got to make sure we put them under pressure and then we can have a decent score to, to chase today. Are there any changes to the 11 for today? Yes, Robin Paul is out, Dominic Drake is out, and Alzari comes in, Casey Cardi comes in. Okay, all the very best to you and your team. Thank you very much. Good luck, brother. Hardik Pandya. What would you have done had you won the toss? Uh, we were looking to bat first as well. Uh, uh, last game, obviously, we bowled. Uh, we want to put some uh, challenge with our batters as well. Uh, wicket last game played a uh, little up and down in the first half. And uh, we want to see that, you know, if we are batting first, how much we can score and how much we can get out of this. Of course, you're standing in for Rohit Sharma. Care to explain uh, the uh, reason it's just why? That, uh, it's just that few, uh, you know, few questions has to be answered and Rohan uh, Virat has been playing constant cricket so uh, they just thought that you know, they just might rest in this game and you know, be fresh for the third ODI and uh, yeah, that's it, just resting and uh, making sure the opportunities are given to the other guys. India won the first one day international of this series by five wickets. What impressed you the most about that win? Um, obviously, the way we bowled, and I think, see, some, when, when you get uh, someone out for 115, yeah, it's obviously a tremendous bowling effort, but at the same point of time, I think the way we uh, caught the ball, um, you know, some very, very good catches, and I think that changed the momentum and kind of made sure that they never got rhythm. And uh, for me, fielding, catching was impressive. Uh, obviously, there are certain areas where we could get better, which could be in, in our energy as well on the field at the same point of time, finishing game. Uh, uh, we would have liked to finish the game in maybe a couple of wickets down rather than having five wickets down. And uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that. This Any game. other change? Rohit Sharma, you mentioned. And Rohit and Virat only. Um, and Sanju and uh, Akshar comes in place. Okay, all the very best to thank, you. Thank you. Cheers. Well, the West Indies, they've won the toss. And not surprisingly, they're bowling. Thank you very much. Thank you to Darren Ganga, and I think it's the obvious decision for me with the overcast conditions and this torrential rain we had. But this is Ronald Kapoor, uh, as we have had him all series, and Samuel Badri is here as well. I give my opinion on the toss. It doesn't guarantee anything. Samuel, what do you make of that decision by Shane? Good morning, uh, Bish. Good morning, Ronald. Good morning, everyone. I think um, it's the right decision. Given the way they batted in that first innings and given the overhead conditions, it's the same pitch. That's the only area of concern. So having to bat second, it just might be a little bit tricky. But yes, I concur with that decision. Ronak, India coming into this game. Um, expectations? Uh, I think more of what we saw, and we know there are some big team changes. We've seen Ardik Pandya at the toss, so we know that India are going to try and take even more boxes. So I think we'll find out very soon what the nature of the balance is. There are quite a few players, and if I could just go straight into it, Sanju Samson gets a game, Bish, and that's nice to see. He's had to wait his time. He has an excellent ODI record. Whether he stays at three or whether he bats in the middle order, we'll know in time. And Aksar Patel comes in as well. So no Virat Kohli and no Rohit Sharma. That's two big changes. It technically makes the batting look a little weaker. There's a lot of all-rounders, but it is two frontline batters out, one batter in and one all-rounder. So, And they're batting first now, so interesting to see. And Samuel Badri, the West Indies today. Yeah, a couple of changes for them. Casey Carty, who scored that half century against Sri Lanka the last time he batted, as well as Alzari Joseph into the squad. Alzari Joseph, of course, has a tremendous record at the Kensington Oval, but it's all about the batting. Carl Mears and Brandon King at the top. Can they provide that platform? Athenas looks good once again. And then Chevron at Mayan She Hope, a lot of batting responsibility on their shoulders, so they need to come good to keep this series alive. Let's then stay with that theme of West Indies batting. And you mentioned a couple of names there in Carl Mears and Shimon Hetmeyer. And what happened in that first one, the international? Expand on your thoughts for me. I, I, I said it um, on commentary. I thought that it was ill-advised. They went yeah. too early, both of them, Mears in the third over. And then Shimon Hetmeyer in the 16th over of a one-day international game. These guys need to understand the requirements of one-day international and what it means to bat out the 50 overs firstly and to put up a competitive score. I think uh, they'll both learn from that experience. I know they're batting second today, so it will be dictated by the score that they're chasing. But certainly, the experience that these two have now, we expect much better. Shaman Maya coming back into the team after a prolonged absence. I know that he wanted to do well, but the manner of the dismissal is what irks me time and time again. Let's jump to the Indian team now and Shipman Gill, how much mm -hmm. concern is there? Because you look back at the Queen's Park Oval and you look back at the first ODI and we're seeing the pattern of these dismissals run up. Talk us through your concern. I wouldn't be too worried about it. I think 
uh, wiser heads than mine have said that there is perhaps a technical adjustment required, Bish, which I'd love to throw back to you to try and elaborate, but I wouldn't be too worried. He's slightly short of runs, but he's coming at the back of a terrific IPL. He's got, he's got a, he's averaging over 16 ODI cricket, so I wouldn't be too worried with this, and it, could, it takes one game to turn that around. But if there's something that you've noticed as to wise edging it slip, please do enlighten me. Oh, but, but, okay, I'm a big Shipman Gill fan, but particularly uh, with his dismissal in the first ODI, he stands on leg stump and feels for deliveries outside his right eye. And once the ball is outside your right eye line, then you're not behind it, uh, you're not covering it, and it brings that outside and inside edge into play. So there's some negotiation to do there, but he's still a young man, so there's no doubt with his talent, the right coaches, he will overcome it. So um, back to you, Samuel, and Gudakesh Moti, and, and what we saw in his return in that first ODI. Yeah, the last time he played an ODI was against the Indians at the Queen's Park Oval before he was injured. And he showed no signs of slowing down. I thought that his control was exceptional. That first wicket of Surya Kumar Yadav was on the back of a few deliveries that spun viciously past the bat and sort of forced him to play that sweep shot. So he looked really good. I thought that he was putting a lot of energy on the ball and bowling particularly from that end with that drift into the right-handed batters. So I liked what I saw, and I liked the bowling effort in totality from the West Indians. Just yeah. defending 115, they could have quite easily come out and, and just lie down and, and be done and dusted. But they came out and they put up a fight. They eventually took five wickets. Who knows if they got to 175 or 200, we might have had a much greater game of it. But I thought that the bowling all around, and in particular Moti, was quite good. The other left arm spinner for India, Roger Deja. Um, how do you think he went? Yeah, they did, did what we expect Jadeja to do, Vish. He'll put it in a good area. Said in the last game, the fact that he was taken down in the first two overs, went it over tens and came back. Bit of help with the first wicket, but then just perfect areas on a pitch which was assisting and some real help with the slips. Those are two sharp catches from Shubman first and then Virat Kohli. Yes, so much more will be expected from him. Kuldi Yadav? A uh, good first performance to reinforce the fact that he is India's premier spinner in ODI cricket. Uh, and at the point at which he came on to bowl with the quality of batters that were remaining, it was almost a no contest. So we expect more of this and the fact that, he'll be, uh, that, that they'll be bowling second will perhaps give him even further assistance. But all eyes on what kind of surface we get, Bish. Yes, that will be the key thing, I suppose, gentlemen. We can leave it there for the moment because we need to find out what this surface holds in store for us here at Kensington Oval today. It was a tough one in that first game, so we'll jump out to the middle and join Shakira Selman and Darren Ganga. At the Mecca Kensington Oval, and I'm alongside one of the queens of women's cricket, uh, Shakira Selman. Well, it's match number two. Few elements which are important here. Of course, uh, the strong wind that comes uh, from the east and as well, the boundaries are pretty much the same. The other important thing is that we're playing on the same pitch. Same pitch as that first one day international. And I'm going to invite Shakira to tell me a little bit of what you're seeing here in terms of the pitch condition. The most noticeable thing is how much grass has been rolled into this pitch, especially at this Malcolm Marshall end. It is generally hard, but there's still this area of concern that is a bit spongy. And I think that may be an area that bowlers may be able to extract some bounce and some turn. Yeah, and a little more root structure and grass in this Malcolm Marshall end as compared to the Joel Garner end. And what we saw in that first one-day international was variable bounce. When Kyle Mears was batting, of course, a few deliveries taking off, a few deliveries staying low. So it's going to be challenging for batters in terms of the bounce. The other factor which we saw in that first one-day international was the great degree of turn. Gudakesh Moti, 4.6. And then we saw Kuldeep be very effective, 2.4 degrees of turn. So that's a range of turn with that variable bounce, which might just make things very challenging for batters once more. Shakira? Will those elements again be on show? Yeah, of course. It is the same pitch. The groundsmen have only had around 48 hours to do anything to this pitch. So I expect that the batters will have a challenge today, but it is a little bit more harder. So if they can apply themselves, maybe we can see more runs. Yeah, batters on top, batters, batters will be challenged with stroke play technique and shot selection. We'll wait and see what transpires. Thank you to Shakira and to Darren. Um, and let's talk, Samuel Badri, about another Darren, Darren Sammy, and, and, and what 
he potentially is looking to get out of this team in the midterm? Well, prior to this uh, series, he didn't have much influence on selection. This is the first time that he had some level of influence. So he's looking to build. This series, in terms of the result, doesn't mean too much for either team, but it's about those building blocks for the next ODI World Cup in 2027 for the West Indies. And I suppose in many ways it's an opportunity to look at some of these players, the batters, and who he thinks are the ones to carry this team forward in the medium term and in the long term. So the likes of Casey Carty, the likes of Alec Athanas, even Brandon King and Kyle Mears at the top, he's looking for them to consolidate and to continue that growing curve that we've seen from them. Quickly, Sanjo Samson. Mm. Important game for him, and not necessarily in the ideal setup that he would have liked, because this is a weakened Indian batting lineup. Bish, India's changes make them weaker. The West Indies changes, I think, make them stronger. Mm. So I've had some time to think about it. This could be a game that India lose. All right, thank you very much once again to these two gentlemen. We'll probably hear more from them a little bit later. But for now, we will go to a short break and we'll hear from both camps on the other side. The teams are going through their processes and they're getting ready for the second One Day International. Don't go too far away, short break. And as promised, we'll hear from the camps on the other side.
Yes, back here at Kensington Oval. Welcome back once again. I should say the sun trying to peep through. And just a reminder, the West Indies have won the toss. They'll be bowling first. So we get a chance now to listen to one of their young seamers who will be having that new ball a little bit earlier. He was chatting with Dan Ganga. I have the pleasure of chatting with Jaden Seals, the West Indies fast bowler. Jaden, congratulations on your return to international cricket. So one for 21 in that first game. Narrate how things went for you bowling-wise. Um, honestly, I was a bit nervous coming into the game, seeing it being my first game back after so long. Um, getting through the game was obviously pleasing for me and knowing that my body could handle it again. And I'm just happy to be back and playing international cricket again. It was a good wicket, that of Shubman Gill. Um, just talk us through your bowling strengths as a young fast bowler. Right, well, for me, in terms of my strength, is basically hitting my lengths as consistent as possible and trying to force the batsman to do something different every time. Ten test matches to, to your name, of course, eight one-day internationals. How do you adapt across formats? Is it challenging? Um, seeing that I haven't played as much, I think it's relatively easy for me personally. Seeing that my lengths don't really change as much, I tend to be a little fuller than most bowlers, so it's a bit easier for me to switch to formats. Looking at this CG United One Day International Series, of course, India winning the first One Day International by five wickets. Uh, in your estimation, what were the factors that challenged the West Indies in that first game? Um, I think the conditions were a bit tricky up front, batting first, and we didn't really get through that period as we wanted to. I'm still pleased with the way we went about it in the field and we gave a good account of ourselves for the ball. So hopefully this game we can give a better showing for ourselves and probably get the win this time around. Was the pitch a significant factor in terms of what you just mentioned and the challenges? Yeah, definitely. Even when India batted, you could have seen it was a bit challenging for the batsmen to get away the ball easily. Once they hit a consistent area just around a good length, it was hard for them to score. Today, what's important uh, for the West Indies to secure a win and keep the series alive? Execution, being consistent and trusting our process for as long as possible. Even if, the, even if it gets hard out there, we need to stick it out, fight and take it to the end. All the very best to you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Darren Ganga chatting with Jaden Seals, Ronak and uh, Samia Badri still here. Just a thought on Jaden Seals. What should the West Indian fans expect of him and how should he be handled across the series? Well, first of all, it's nice to see him back on the field, um, just bowling four overs, but there wasn't any significant drop in pace and he's still getting that outswing. So from that standpoint, it's nice to see him fit and healthy once again. And I guess it's, it's about management as well, just as they're managing Alzari Joseph a prized asset is Jaden Seals, so it's important that they look after him well, especially returning from injury and the amount of cricket that he actually plays in a short space of time. But like I say, he's one of the few fast bowlers we have in the region of international quality, one who supports Alzari Joseph. I like what I've seen from him on return, and hopefully he can continue in that vein. Yeah, just, I agree with that. Just manage him, manage him properly, because playing across formats is not an easy thing. So, all right, we've heard from one seamer. Let's keep on that theme and hear from another one, this time from the Indian camp, and Rana Kapoor caught up with him a little bit earlier. Shardul Thakur with me ahead of uh, the second ODI. Shardul, lots of talk about the pitch and spinners, but from a Pacers point of view, tell me what you made of the pitch in the first game. I think it was a little bit damp. Uh, probably it rained or they watered it, so it was a little damp in the first game. And there was enough help in the pitch where bowler could extract something out of it. As, as a Pacers also, you could extract some seam movement and then Later on, we saw how the spinners came in and they spun the ball. Yeah, lots of chat about India wanting to tick boxes ahead of the World Cup players as well. It's been a difficult few months for you with injury. You had to struggle with injury through the IPL. You missed the second test also. How are you feeling and what are your goals building up to the World Cup? I think injuries are part and parcel of the game. Sometimes they do come when you're not expecting it. And, uh, you know, that's one sad part of it. But it's OK. I mean, you have to... Uh, take it in your stride and keep moving forward. What about your wicket the other day? I was curious to your reaction. Something distracted you. What happened there after your wicket? Well, I haven't been celebrating my wickets off lately. Thought, you know, uh, let me celebrate now on. <laughs> no, I was talking about when you were batting. When you oh, got my out batting. Day, yeah, so what happened over there? I was very curious to know. The side screen just changed oh. Uh, oh. when he was bowling. So, uh, you know, I, I got confused and suddenly I played the ball out of nowhere. So I just went and spoke to the umpires, but they said, oh, you should have 
moved away. Once it's out, we cannot do anything. I said, okay. All right, no worries. Go well today, Shardul. All the very best. Yeah, thank you. That was Ranak a little bit earlier in the morning chatting to Shadul Taku. Ranak is still here alongside us. What did you pick up from that chat with Shadul? Uh, he's always been a very chilled sort of customer. Shadul Taku doesn't get too bothered by either the praise or the criticism. And often there is criticism that comes his way. We tend to think that batters gift him wickets, taking away some of the credit. But it's an important series for him, Bish. He may very well be competing with frontline seamers to just add depth with the bat and there may not be room for as many seamers when India play their World Cup uh, back home. So this is an important couple of games and I like that they're playing him even though the batting's a bit light. He'll probably get a chance to bat as well today. Yeah, he's a, a very charismatic guy. Thank you very much to Ranak. Thank you very much to Samuel. You, of course, you'll be hearing much more from them across this day's play. The West Indies have won the toss. They'll be bowling first here at Kensington Oval. We've had early morning showers and overnight rain, but the sun is peeping out here right now. So we're getting very excited here on this Saturday morning. Darren Sami and his troops have warmed up India without... Rohit and without Virat, Sanju Samson is in. So if you're a fan of his and Shimron Hetmeyer, don't go too far away. Short break and closer to live action on the other side. Cloudy Saturday morning greets us here at the Kensington Oval in Barbados. Had some inclement weather yesterday and overnight. But the good news is uh, 
conditions look very good and we should have play starting very soon in the second one day international. So Gary Sober's pavilion in the background, the great man celebrated his birthday yesterday as we get ready for this uh, second CG United One Day International powered by Yes Bank. These are the two teams and a reminder that India, they've made two changes, no Rohit Sharma, no Virat Kohli, in comes Sanju Samson and Aksa Patel. Of course, the West Indies with two changes as well. Casey Carty and Alzari Joseph in their 11 for this all-important match for the West Indies. Of course, uh, India taking a lead in the series by virtue of a five-wicket win in that first match. And the West Indies winning the toss, electing to field first. They'll have to win to level the series. In come the openers, Shubman Gill, Ishan Kishan with a fabulous half century in that first match. And Rana Kapoor alongside me will describe what we can expect from these two. Yeah, good morning Darren, morning everyone. Shubman Gill, important game for him. We haven't seen the best of Shubman Gill since he started off this tour of the Caribbean. Make no mistake, that average of 62. Tells you all you need to know. Nishan Kishan has made the most the other hand of every opportunity he's got. It's an opening spot that uh, was vacant when Rohit Sharma decided to bat lower down the order. And Kishan, as we've seen before, grabs every opportunity presented to him. So it's going to be Ishan Kishan and Shubman Gill in the absence of Rohit and Virat. Here's Kyle Myers. We'll take the new ball. It's done that often, especially in the T20i format. Starts off uh, from the Joel Garner end to slips in place. There's a real opportunity here for the West Indies. Winning the toss, seeing two key players absent, rested from the Indian side. Here we go. There's a hint of swing early on from Kyle Mayers. Yeah, interesting option by She Hope in Kyle Mayers, especially when you have the likes of Jaden Seals, Alzari Joseph in your 11. Not uncommon to see him in this role. Of course, he bowled one over in that first one day international, just conceded six runs, Kyle Mayers. This man, of course, most reputable one day international bowler for the West Indies. Not with the new ball. Change of angle straight away for Kyle Mayers. Just the two balls over the wicket. Comes around. That's a good one. Hey, his accuracy is something that has carried him well with his bowling, Kyle Mayers, and that ability to move the ball either off the pitch or with swing. Yeah. Off the mark. Ishan Kishan and India. Oh. Patrick Moon pointing out Kyle Mayers six times that he's taken the new ball in ODI cricket and three of those six occasions, Darren, at this ground. He's a local boy, Kyle Mayers from Barbados. Are you hinting a bias there because of uh, familiarity with conditions. Yeah, it's not like if you are a local, you have a bigger say, unless you're captain. She hopes Bayesian too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They go through for the quick single, so Shubman Gill's off the mark as well, but he is getting that shape. 
goes uh, away from the left-hander and into Shubman Gill. Spoke a lot about spin and assistance it got. Shardul Thakur just speaking before play, saying there was uh, plenty of assistance to the seam bowlers too. Watchful over. Just two off it though. Good start from the West Indies. Few fans in. I'm sure that number is going to grow as we progress through the day in the second one day international. Not a working day here in Barbados. Already kids uh, surrounding Sagari Sobers. That statue of the great man. Right of screen, another statue of uh, Wes Hall, alongside Sagari Sobers, as mentioned. The great man celebrated his 87th birthday yesterday. So happy birthday to you, Sagari, although belatedly. We have reliable intel that Sagari enjoyed a round of golf on his 87th birthday. Here's Jaden Seals. Sounded good. Placement was, was very good as well. First boundary for India and for Shubman Gill. Check class from Gill. That's why he's so highly rated. Wrist work, ability to get on top of the bounce. With a relatively new ball. Off the middle of the bat and into the gap. Wow, that's the shot of a top-class batter early in his innings. I don't know what you make of Shubman Gill and what we've seen from him on this store. Of course, uh, below par in the Test Series, Shubman Gill. Six from 11 balls in the first test match, then 10 from 12 in the second. Also 29 from 37, that second innings of the second test. Missed out again in the first one day international when he scored seven of 16. Seals was the man who accounted for him. Looked like he got all of it. it, was a full toss. So just a single. Yeah, criticism of Shubman Gill at times is the promise he shows with the starts he gets. And then invariably, if you bowl exactly in that range, you are always in the game against Shubman Gill. Can be said about a lot of batters in fairness. Fourth, fifth stump, Ian Bishop pointing out the technical observation he made of him standing on leg stump or standing to leg side. We've also seen the other side of it. Great hands, gifted when it comes to placing the ball. That's any length of time. It's ominous. And there's a reason that India persisted with Shubman Gill even after Ishan Kishan got a double hundred in Bangladesh. So they clearly have identified what the pecking order is. Seen a huge hunger for runs at the IPL too. Yeah, well, before the start of this series, uh, his average 65 in one day internationals. <laughs> With four centuries to his name, Shub Shubman Gill. Mentioned that double century as well. Jaden Seals just adds something more to this West Indies lineup. It's a pity we didn't get to see him in the tests, was undergoing rehabilitation from injury. And even though he bowled just the four overs in the first game, quite like what you see. And that's the reason why. 
seven without loss. Great clouds uh, in the background. Again, evidence of the gloom on a Saturday here in Barbados. Doesn't take away from the beauty of the Caribbean Sea and the wonderful beaches surrounding this uh, easterly island. Good start by Mayors and Seals. There's a cry for catch it. Shubman Gill gave Kyle Mayers the charge. It's gone on the bounce to the fielder at cover. Gurakesh Moti will have a job to do later. This was the last ball of the previous over. And Jaden Seals, especially with a little assistance, cloud cover that you point out, Darren, will be a handful. And the scramble seam, as we often see from fast bowlers to get the ball to nip into right handers. His stop delivery, of course, is that delivery that goes away from the right hander into the left hander with a very upright seam. Then he'll just use that scrambled seam to bring the ball into right handers and away from the left handers, as we just saw Taishan Kishan. He'll be hoping the West Indies put up a better fight. Still, quite a few loyal fans at the ground here. Ouch. Gave him the charge again, hit it better, Shubman Gill. Whether intentional or not, Kyle Mears has done well to get his foot in the way of what would have been a certain boundary. Not a recommended approach to saving runs. We'll look and see if there was a chance in that effort. Yeah, hand put down. Although difficult. You've played the game. Surely you wouldn't say that's a chance. Come on. Maybe a better effort on the part of the <laughs> bowler trying to get two hands or trying to pouch this one. Yeah, to be fair, it came, came back so hard, I thought it just ended up hitting his foot. But those can stick. So half an opportunity. Prompts a change in tactics from Shea Hope. Who's up to the stumps now? Oh, yes, no nothing in there. What we'll see, of course, is an approach from batters given what transpired in that first one day international. Of course, the West Indies uh, bowled out for 114. India finding the chase quite difficult. Maria Rasmus, uh, one of the two. Presiding umpires for this second one day, Gregory Brathwaite in his 56 ODI from Barbados. And just saying with the approach, it will be a calculated one, one that will test batters and their technique. They will work hard on their defense and more so at the start of the innings. They will be aware that bowlers will have a significant advantage bowling on this surface. And they'll be looking for another win. Seal the series going into Trinidad. Indian fans. Yeah. No Libya single to finish the third over. Nine without loss. Sanju Samson gets an opportunity for the first time in this one-day series. Hardik Pandya with the role as captain. He is uh, India's T20 international captain that will take control of proceedings beyond this ODI series. Kishan has taken off. And it's a good single. 
We saw this approach uh, when he batted for that wonderful half century to secure in there that first win in the series. He was watchful, very calculated and selective with his stroke play. Focus a lot on rotation of strike, placing the ball into the gaps, accumulating singles. Again, showing his maturity, his ability to play the situation and the conditions. Conditions just getting a little more overcast here at Kensington Oval in Barbados. So that's another good advantage for the West Indies. Winning the toss, electing to bowl first. Not quite sure if Duckworth Lewis Stern might come into play. Yeah, it comes from the east. Those clouds, the winds blow across the ground. Yes, so they're coming in the direction from behind the screen that you're seeing. Going across the ground. Questions will be asked of uh, surface as well. Both captains did give it a mention in the post-match presentation comments. How quickly does uh, Shea Hope bring on spin? That is beautiful. Oh, those wrists are something from Shubman Gill. That's four. An over pitch delivery might have been looking for the Yorker and maybe some extra swing away from the right hander, but he's so good. Shubman Gill, he covers the line. Any possible swing away from him. And that ability to find gaps ever so present in his batting. Supremely entertaining to watch. Same pitch being used to the one used in that first one day international. There are spots of uh, green grass, but there is a root structure. Not as hard as you'd expect. A few soft areas that are not compacted enough, so might just see some variable bounce. Test of the outfield as well. Different paths. We've had some rain. But that's still good enough to get another boundary for Shubman Gill. That's nine of the over. He's racing away. 18 without loss. Shubman Gill dealing in boundaries. There's one more to finish the last over. Now, umpire Rasmus thought about that and was ruled was a bit too wide. Excessive seam from this delivery just moved away. Borderline? Maybe. Yeah. Kishan just had to go around Kyle Mayers. Maria Erasmus will send this upstairs. This is interesting because Kishan had to go around the bowler to complete that single. Review Let's see what Michael Goff. Thank you. Uh, TV umpire to director. We have an umpire review for a run out at the bowler's end. Um, can I see side on angle, please? Oh, 
Okay, just take it back, please. Take it back. Yeah, and freeze there. Freeze, yeah, just go back when he's made his ground. Yeah, okay. Batsman has made good his ground before the wicket is broken. So I'm ready for my decision on the big screen. My decision is not out. Repeat, not out. Yes, he's made it. It's quick, Kishan, Kishan. And in spite of a uh, slight challenge he had to face, safely home. Oh, yes. He's taken a couple of sharp singles. In a little, huh? It's a good bit of feeling, though. Romario Shepard with the direct hit. Oh, no, 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 no. He took off instantly. Oh, it wasn't as... Would have perhaps had some role in just... adjusting his momentum, but safely home. Shea Hope at the stumps has uh, kept Shubman Gill in his crease. Oh, no. He's otherwise keen to give Kyle Mayers the charge. You're talking about Shubman Gill, Darren, and just the first 15, 16 balls and the approach with which he's come out today doesn't seem like he's short of runs or form. So he's clearly not going to just nudge his way around to a score. The very good players, uh, they take note of times when they have performed below par in their estimation. They always come with a stronger resolve and resilience. Empire Cricket Club. Members, young members, though, at the ground. No, 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 no! Could already see a different approach to his batting. He has a clear plan. 20 without loss. Cricket in Barbados is a deep passion. Young, middle age, old age, everyone, they're well invested in this sport. He doesn't need his shades on. It's the in thing to have slightly bigger ones for your face. Seals. Oh, beautiful, with authority. Ishan Kishan gets his first boundary. Yeah, just not consistent with his lengths, Jaden Seals. Very different to what we saw from him in that first one day international. Found the right length early. Already going a little too short. Maybe trying to compensate for the few deliveries which were in that full, full band. Again, he hasn't played international cricket for a while so still accumulating game time trying to find his rhythm had that meniscus tear first major injury for him as a cricketer and that's a good response some bounce as well darren yeah we did speak about this surface being variable with regard to that element. Ready. 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 Yeah, just having to take the bottom hand off and make the adjustment. But Jaden Seal spoke with me before the start of this game and mentioned that that full length is an asset that he has as a fast bowler. Of course, the concoction of that with swing can be lethal.
Isikari back in to the playing 11. An 87 in last outing for the West Indies in Zimbabwe in the World Cup qualifiers in Sri Lanka. just be the scramble scene yep there it is allowing the ball to go across the left hander yeah morning starts uh, day games these there is something with the new ball. Really good work from Seals. Been interesting to see if uh, he would have hit the stumps. Where that would have left Ishan Kishan. There's a smile on his face. Very athletic. Yeah, that's the energy and the effort that uh, you want to see from your fielders and bowlers. Just keeping Ishan Kishan in check. Had to change direction in his follow through. In the air, just short of Yannick Karia at mid off. Nervous over that. Four off at 24 without loss. Jaden Seals is testing Ishan Kishan, was hit of the boundary of the first ball, came back well. Last ball off the over, just did not carry to carrier. Now Kyle Mayers is into his fourth. He's done a tidy job, just six of his first three, but there's... Still, see there's what there's Jaden still, Seals is, is doing at the other end, Darren, and I wonder if... Uh, you would like to see Alzari Joseph on sooner? Indeed, more importantly, I think the West Indies in recent times have struggled to penetrate opposition teams. So to resolve that or work towards improving that has to be Alzari Joseph. No, no, no. I'll tell you why. In terms of uh, leading wicket takers in ODI cricket, it's this man on screen. 101 wickets, of course, one of two bowlers in this West Indies squad that has five wickets to their name in this format. So I'm a little bit surprised that he's not been introduced just yet in the innings. She hopes done well standing up to the stumps. So it'll just be the one wide. Of course, Kyle Mayer's his strength. I did mention that ability to swing the new ball. But you'd want to prize one of these two out quite early. Not allow them to settle, get accustomed to the conditions, get themselves in, make an adjustment to their game. It becomes much more difficult to prize. Oh, yeah. Two men back uh, on the leg side for Kyle Mayers, for Shubman Gill. Yeah, I just wonder if it's prompted with the selection calls that the West Indies have made. No Dominic Drakes. And Casey Carty coming in. On whether that just makes Shea Hope think of how he wants to use bowlers in specific roles. Drakes took the new ball in the last game. I think it would be a great opportunity if I was Shea Hope to know that I'm playing against an Indian team without Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli, 
That's an opportunity. Couple of runs. So it must be seen as an opportunity for the West Indies to secure a win, starting with bowling in the out in favorable conditions for bowlers. There he is, the Indian captain, not playing today. Of course, Hardik Pandya mentioned that the boat himself, Richama, that is, and Brad Cooley, they're being arrested. Glorious from Ishan Kishan. Straight down the ground, all the way for four. Too easy for a man coming off a half century who spent quite a considerable time on this set pitch in the first game. So very much aware of the conditions and the strokes that are going to be useful for scoring runs. And that is as elegant as you will find. And that'll be more runs. Fielders in pursuit. We've had some rain this morning and yesterday. And it'll still be three. Expensive over from uh, Kyle Mayers. 11 off it. It's 35 without loss. The last over, the most expensive of this innings. 11 conceded by Kyle Mayers. And Darren Ganga wanted Alzari Joseph. So Shea Hope's heard part of that plea. 101 wickets, leading wicket take at this ground in recent times for the West Indies. 23 wickets in nine matches here at the Kensington Oval. He's going to bowl from the Malcolm Marshall end, which Jaden Seals was operating. I think what Darren wanted was Seals and Joseph in tandem. Yeah, to give the value of bowling combinations that are penetrative. Excellence there from Yannick Carrier. And this is a real opportunity for the West Indies. Supporters have been waiting for them to register a win over India. Not even come close to a contest on a number of occasions. But without Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli, lighter looking batting lineup, they won the toss. Big appeal. Empire Brathway deems it uh, hasn't touched anything. Shea hopes having a chat with his bowler. I think he's just having a chat with uh, Umpire Rasmus on that it was uh, ruled as a wide. It may have well brushed something of the body of Ishan Kishan. Just a bit of the thigh. So that's what Shea Hope was uh, debating. Of course, in the IPL, we had reviews for wides as well now. The international game doesn't allow that. So if he would have gone up, he might have had the wide overturn, but we still lost the review. Yeah, just coming back to the point of Joseph and Jaden Seals, Darren. 
early wickets are important, but even more so looking at India's batting lineup today. He's got that through. Deep third in pursuit does not get there. Such quick hands from Ishan Kishan. If you give him any semblance of wit with length, he can find the gap through that square offside region as he did on that occasion. That's Azari's uh, stock length. Wasn't that short though, but all credit to, to Ishan Kishan. He was able to find the room to access the ball and the gap. What a shot. Easy as you like. Back-to-back -back boundaries for Kishan. And Payson, of course, making it easier for these two. Haven't been there previously for seven overs. They've grown accustomed to the conditions. Just a firm push. Didn't finish with a flourish. Again, using the pace. No one deep, leg side. Well, Vishimran Hetmeyer in a previous over, now Alec Athanas has been uh, called in for assistance. He's not doing a lot of running, Ishan Kishan. It's four boundaries in his 25. Look, I understand she hope decision, of course, uh, to win the toss and to bowl first. But at the same time, you must think about taking wickets in the first power play. And if I'm she hope, I'll be thinking about my most attacking bowlers to dominate that phase. Of course, as we go deeper into the innings, we know the pitch is offering turn. So you'd expect Gurukesh Moti, Yannick Karia to come into play. So. That responsibility had to be Azari Joseph earlier. There's the reason why that has just flown past Kishan and into the gloves of Sheo. 44 without loss. Some spite in that last delivery. More of what you want to see from your quick bowlers here at Kensington Oval. Carl Mayer still. No, no, no. Shipman Gill. I just want to make it clear that because I think that there are one or two shortcomings. Technically, I still rate him highly as a young batter. And his record in white ball cricket suggests that he is. And shots like that always tell you with that short arm jab that he sees it early morning, Shakira. Good morning, Bish. Good morning, viewers. India off the flare. Shaman Gill wasn't able to score the runs he would have wanted in that first game. He's going quite well here. And he is very capable, especially against this white ball. The delivery by Kalmiers, just angled in and straightening. 
beating the bat of Ishan Kishan. West Indies will want more of that. Early thoughts on the surface. You were out there again before play started, Shakira Selman. Yeah, there is a lot of grass rolled into the surface. And the cracks aren't too wide. I thought generally it was harder than the surface in that first outing. But there was still that area of concern, which was a bit spongy. So would expect some variable bumps, but I think generally it is a better surface. Just one off the over, 45 without loss. Kevin Sinclair is on the field with Kishan and Gill. Solid, if not spectacular. Lovely drone shots. Oh, the, the port and overlooking this ground. Carl Mears has left the field for the moment. Joseph. No, no, no. Good line. Very good line. Some early morning showers, some overnight showers. A number of people at 7 o'clock this morning when we were getting ready to leave the Hotel Shakira. Locals were wondering whether we'd have any cricket. Well, the sun has broken out and we hope, fingers crossed, all day it will be. Another extra added to the total, wide by Alzari Joseph. I too was worried the game wasn't going to be able to start on time. When I got here just before eight, it was still raining. But we will know that it does dry quite quickly here at Kensington Oval. No, no, no. Barbados doesn't disappoint, does it, ever? It's a lot of bottom hand dominant in that shot with a little bit of a way shape from Alzari Joseph. And for Shubman Gill, he said, we've seen him, and a lot of us have seen him from youth cricket, under 19 cricket. And so it's a challenge. The battle here for him is just to get through this little period with these two new balls. He'll be hoping to do that and hoping the swing evaporates. And if he can do that, he's got enough hundreds under his belt now, particularly in 2023 and previously to know that he can capitalize. But that's a task ahead of him to get through it. And for the West Indies, I wonder if we'll see Shepard or Moti from the Joel Ghana end shortly. Yeah, with Carl Mears off the field, Unless they go to Jaden Seals from that Joel Garner end, you would expect one of the spinners to come in. Yeah. I think that's the length you have to bowl at Ishan Kishan more consistently. He just tends to reach for the ball when it's pitched up to him and not in full control.
familiar foes, Joseph and Shipman Gill. Moti has to stretch the hamstrings again. Maybe into one of those spots that you talked about. That is unusual bounce. And at 140 kilometers per hour, he's worn that painfully. Yeah, that one just seemed to have popped off a length. It wasn't too short. It's a good length delivery scramble scene. It really rose at Ishan Kishan. I think he does well not to have fended that one in the ear. Yeah, but 140. It's not easy to take a blow. It's a tough young man, Ishan Kishan, that would have hurt. How you move on from that and face the next delivery is always a question in a batter's okay. mind. A power play signaled. Second phase of power play. Four fielders allowed outside that inner circle. India, 49 without loss at the end of the first power play. We've seen shots all around the ground, especially by Ishan Kishan, who's 26 from 32 deliveries. West Indies opting to start with Kyle Mears and Jaden Seals. Udukesh Moti into the attack. Got two for 22. Of 6.5 in that first encounter. To see that again, to find out whether that actually gripped in the surface. He, he got the ball to grip significantly from that end, as you pointed out in the first game. That has spun as well. Oh, yeah. And there again, it's spun. Could be tight. Now, gets home. 50 comes up for India. That's excellent running between these two. It's the seventh opening partnership of 50 between these two. In India's last 11 ODIs, and Shaman Gill was involved in all of them. Good start by India. Really good running, putting the West Indies bowlers under pressure. West Indies fielders, forgive me. And one of the things to keep in mind, too, is that when Ishan Kishan, for example, is on strike at the Malcolm Marshall end, remember he got caught at deep mid-wicket last game. I don't know that the wind is as strong today. There's still a wind, but not as, or with the same velocity. So it'll be interesting to find out whether he could take it on again, if he gets the opportunity. Fifty one without loss.
Sanju Samson in today, Harik Pandya leading the team, Surya Kumar Yarov with work to do on his ODI batting. Aksa Patel also gets a game. Alzari Joseph to continue with a floating slip who has now been removed. Producer just told me the slip just floated out to mid-wicket. First ball since he was struck from Joseph. And a little bit of hesitancy in that right leg pushing forward. First delivery against Joseph since he was last struck. A little bit late and suspicious in that front foot prod. Yeah, not too surprising that he wasn't altogether ready to come forward. It's just struck the last ball from him. And it's surprising that West Indies took out the slip after that. That looks like a tremendous effort out there by Casey Carty. That's the sort of thing that many of us who saw them in the qualifiers were calling for, that level of ground fielding. Yeah, the one percenters, the effort, the attitude in the field. And that's exemplary by young Casey Carty. And the team today replacing Rothman Powell. That's the effort you will want to see from all West Indian fielders. There again, he follows it. Jaden Seals this time. I can't commend, it's only a small sample size, but I can't commend this highly enough. Because one of the, the things for me is that if you're you don't have as much resources, Shakira Selman and, and global audience, as let's say India or England or Australia. You don't have as much depth in playing resources. But these little things are where you can make up, as you said, the one percenters. You can be fitter than most of us. Your ground feeling and your catching can be better than most of us. Four runs. Got it fine enough away to the right of Moti at deep third. He's played this quite well. It rose and perhaps was a little closer than he initially anticipated. But he manages to get it fine of the fielder at deep third. Remember, he's very good off the back foot. But also quite good when he's given room. I'd like to see Alzari Joseph just pitch it up at him a bit more. Let's get it a bit fuller. That's the length. That front foot again, a little bit late. The heel is on the ground, and the toe is still in the air. So it just means that he's just being rushed a little bit on that length. Gujarat Titans, the Gujarat Titans. White signal by umpire Gregory Brofwitt. Last two overs or so, Alzari Joseph has just decided to bowl a lot straighter to Shaman Gill. Two fielders on the leg side behind square on the boundary. It's just not wanting to give him too much room outside of Austin. 
He did mention he's very familiar with him, teammates at IPL. Yeah, tighter lane to finish. It's the end of 12, India 60 without loss. Moti with that slip in place. No, no, no! Huh? Oh, yeah! Sweet Moti. Yeah, good from Gurukesh Moti. Yeah. After that wonderful test match, second test in Zimbabwe. 13 wickets. Seven for and a six for. He then went to South Africa and he was struggling physically in that first test match in South Africa. He got through it. Yeah, back spasms, back ailment. Dropped it, and it went to his favoured hand. And he'll feel definitely that he should have held on. You could see with the slap of the thigh. Yeah, it's the second time Ishan Kishan has been put down by a bowler. This one, the easier of the two opportunities. A bit too early in that shot, and hit back to the strong side of Gudish, Gudakesh Moti. Should have held on. Dropped nicely on him. Still got it on the full though, Ishan Kishan, and should have done better. Moti will feel he should have done better. Yeah, Moti missed the first test because of back spasm. Played the second, but was struggling. Went to Bangladesh, was limited. Went to the UAE, pulled out of the qualifiers. But I still believe he's the best finger spinner across formats in the Caribbean. 62 without loss. No wickets yet. Shepard not introduced into the attack yet either. No Yannick Carrier yet. No, no Carrier, no Shepherd yet. We've gone through Mears. Now we have Romario Shepard. And he gets that extra bounce as well. So what the bowling group will be saying here is that 
Guys, if you hit that good length tight enough on off stump, there is some extra bounce that you can get. So can you be consistent enough in that area? Round the wicket immediately from Shepard. Okay, tight lane. Excuse me. All four fielders square. Boundary fielders. Deep backward square, deep fine leg, deep third, deep cover point. He only bowled one over in that first game. Only went for two runs. But he was pulled immediately to introduce the spinners. It's good length from Shepard to start with, creeping closer in his length over the three deliveries challenge for him is to continue it across his career he needs to continue getting better with ball playing his specific role slightly different from what you get from alzari joseph maybe on a Jaden seals no, no. yeah this is a really good start he did bowl well in that game against, I think it was all man at qualifiers. He is an improving talent for West Indies. I think with more opportunities, he will continue to get better as long as he understands his role with the ball in particular. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be the big part, Shakira, in my mind. For Shea Hope and for Darren Sammy, in this passage, it's a long time till the next World Cup for the West Indies, not the one coming up for India. Identify the roles, role clarity. What is Shepard's role? What will be Joseph's role? What's Kyle Mears' role with the bat? And give these players a long enough run to cement those roles. a good pickup shot that's a short arm jab i wouldn't say that's a bad ball at all just an extraordinarily good shot 67 without loss Good aggressive running from Gill and from Ishan Kishan. That last oh, ball stop, of Mario Shepard's previous one. over, just a short arm, arm jab, over wide, mid on. Not very short, but a very good shot. Ah, yeah. Turn again. I'm going to catch Moti. She will opt in to bring that slip over to leg slip with that ball turning in to Ishan Kishan. Got the length a little too full, maybe on a touch too straight because I go back to that first. ODI. The length was good and the line was good enough six inches outside of Stum, but because of the combination with length, he couldn't get to it to hit it down the ground, so he had to drag it to deep mid wicket. Oh. And those are the little subtleties he'll want to explore again. Yeah, Ishan Kishan 
as most left-handers would against left-arm orthodox spinners. Likes to hit the ball over long on and that called corner area. So that length is key. Albeit hitting into the wing. If he isn't able to get to it, then he has to drag it. He gets to this one though. Six runs, the result. Yeah, he got to that one. Close enough, and that's when he was dismissed in the first game. That's where he wanted to get close to hit it. The length wasn't there then, but he's close enough here to go straight. So he's ready to take on the challenge. Gloves are off to go to Kishmoti. <laughs> Shepard does some good work down there. 78 without loss. Power play two in motion. Wesson is still toiling hard for their first wicket in this uh, second CG United One Day International, powered by Yes Bank. And they're looking ominous with their batting despite not having Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma. There's uh, Romario Shepard. Front of square. So once more, gap finding so supremely good from these two. Quite a few West Indian fans. You can secure your tickets by using a Caribbean issued MasterCard. Visit windyscricket.com. Get the details and get a 20% discount on the home matches in this uh, 2023 series. There's an opportunity. Yeah. There is that uh, third and final one-day international to be played in Trinidad. That will signal the end of this three-match ODI series. And thereafter will be that T20 international series. Gap found again. Afternoon, Samuel Badri. Tough going for the West Indian bowlers. Good morning, Darren. Good morning, everyone. This is excellence once again from Shubman Gill. Very strong through that square point region. Gets on top of the bounce, finds the gap. And I can't afford to give him any bit, any bit of width. Sent back. Sensible. From Ishan Kishan. Yeah, I'm just rushing the, the day. Still morning here in Barbados. Firm strike. Was that another chance or half chance, you would say? So one from the bowling of Kyle Mayers, then Gudakish Moti. Now, Romario Shepard. One-handers. Stinging ones. Yeah, that was ferocious from Shubman Gill. High score so far for Gil on tour. End of the 16th, 85 without loss.
Still a few rain clouds around, but so far so good. No interruptions uh, for rain. Moti will continue. Fifty up for Ishan Kishan. He was looking for that uh, aggressive stroke. Had to make the adjustment and backs up that fine innings in the first one day with another very good one. Yeah, he continues to augment his reputation. Got his maiden test half century in Port of Spain. Continues along his merry way. Three half centuries in a row. Not forgetting that half century in the test. Just waited, waited sufficiently to find the gap. Just to go to the left of Atanas. Yeah, and really good running as well. Two young men, you'd expect mm. this from them. But again, he continues to demonstrate his prowess with that cut shot and that strength through the offside, Shubman Gill. Gurukesh Moti just seems to have lost his length. Was exceptional in the first ODI a couple of days ago, creating chances and beating the bat with some vicious turn. And Dominic Drakes. Oh, yeah. Not boy. featuring today and just stop, having an stop, opportunity stop, with the youngsters and signing autographs. Nice to see that. That there's still tremendous interest from the younger ones. Use of the feet, use of the feet, not properly struck. And he holds, holds out. Shubman Gill. Yeah, just the outer portion of the bat, very high, very well judged by Alzari Joseph. Maybe feeling a little bit bored, Shubman Gill. Taking on the fielder in the deep. Yeah, well caught by Alzari Joseph and Gudekish Moti picks up his first West Indies. Pick up their first. Gil goes for 34. The score now 90 for one and it's an opportunity for the Blue Waters drinks break. India 90 for one, no Roy Sharma, no Virat Kohli. Hardik Pandya, the standing captain. At the moment, 90 for one. 50 once more to this man. A naturally gifted cricketer, someone who is uh, quite flamboyant at the crease. But you must give it credit for this innings. He was watchful at the start, then started to get things going with his full range of strokes. 
His fifth one day international half century. One wicket uh, for the West Indians. Gudakish Moti accounted for Shubman Gill. It was Mayers and Seals who opened the bowling. If you missed it, Gill attempting that lofted drive down the ground. Just didn't get it off the middle of the bat. Maybe a little more turn from that delivery. Creating the challenge. Ball just taking the out top half of the bat and Azari Joseph giving good support. Barbados hosts for this leg of the multi-format tour. Beautiful island. Generally in the southern part of the Caribbean. It's an island destination, holiday destination. Cultural experiences, the beautiful beaches. It's something that you can enjoy when you visit this island. Of course, built on limestone. Always very welcoming Barbados. Just one delivery remaining in this over for Moti. Sanju Samson, the batter, not wearing his own shirt. Surya Kumar Yadav, I think, is the name at the back. Successful over for Moti and West Indies. And they're 90 for one. Surya Kumar having a good time. In the foreground, at the back left, Rich Sharma. But once more. Beating that fielder to his right at point. In the last over, Mario Shepard was caught by the right-handed Shubman Gill. And now by the left-handed Ishan Kishan. So presenting with for both the left-hander and the right-hander and paying the price, paying a hefty price, being struck ferociously for four, needs to adjust his line. Needs to do so quickly. 16 runs coming from 2.1 overs thus far. And though he's bowling wide of the crease from around the wicket, he's still presenting that amount of room. Yeah, gone very wide. To be fair to Romario Shepard, Ishan Kishan has this ability to access the ball despite it being very close to his off stump. I just feel that Shea Hoof has to make an adjustment in the field. That field at backward point should be a little more to that deep third angle. Don't feel you need a conventional cover for Ishan Kishan. Maybe have those two fielders, backward point and cover, closer to each other and closer to deep third. Wait. Yeah, encourage him to play in that extra cover region. Reach for the ball a little bit more to hit it early. That's when you can possibly create that outside edge. Take him out of his comfort zone. So important as a captain to stay at the pulse of what is unfolding. Especially given what the opposition batters are doing. Got him this time! He was close, he was backward point. And he did everything possible to support Romario Shepard in producing another wicket for the West Indies. Yeah, this guy can catch Alec Athena as we've seen him. 
in the slip region. And we've seen him at backward point. He himself was dismissed with a similar catch in the first ODI. Ravindra Jadeja at backward point, but look at that effort. Really excellent pair of hands. Ishan Kishan having just completed his half century goals for 55 consecutive wickets for the West Indies, 95 for two. Aksa Patel at number three, he's got a half century in ODI cricket. He's got Batten pedigree. ISC has ever batted in a one day international, so opportunities for numerous Indian players in different roles. The West Indies will remember him from the last time they were here in Port of Spain. And that excellent knock he played to get them over the line in a very close contest. So he has a lot of batting ability and an opportunity again to augment that. Just a little sprinkle at the moment. So important to have great protection behind points. But the excellence of this young man Atanas, not only with bat, but in the field, athleticism. Here is that evidence. Yep, appreciated by his captain and his teammates. He's taken quite a few catches in this tour already in the test matches and here in the one day internationals. Supporting for both teams, as you'd expect. But yeah, really good to see from him that feeling along with his batting. Also bowls some off spin. So provides options for his captain. And he can feel at any position. Usually your best feeler is at backward point. So to be in that position this early in your career means that you're highly rated. 95 for two. Hardik Pandya captaining today, no Rohit Sharma over at Kohli. Sky being demoted. Good start from the opening batters, partnership of 90, but then both fell in quick succession. West Indies trying to claw their way back into this contest. Gurukesh Moti, after having taken the wicket, of Shubman Gill in the previous over is replaced at the Joel Ghana end with Alzari Joseph. Alzari Joseph has an exceptional record at the Kensington Oval. I think his first three ODIs he played here had consecutive four wicket hauls. So Joseph to Samson. Some bat. Gets off the mark. Nope. Leg by signal. Azari Joseph switching ends. Bowling now from the Joel Garner end. Produced uh, three overs from the Malcolm Marshall end. Now let's see this field. There is a slip, so a little bit more attacking from Shea Hope. There is a deep backward square. Now Shimron Hetmeyer moves from deep point. And he 
might just be position in a forward short leg position or maybe Silimidov position. We'll wait and see. Yep. Forward short leg. Yeah, so the expectation from the batter is a short delivery. Does he double bluff him and go full? There's also a slip in position. Let's see what Alzari Joseph is thinking. Yeah, short it is. And the wicket of Shubman Gill. Excellent bowling from Godakesh Moti. Previous deliveries a little bit quicker. And then the wicket taken one, flighted and slower. And threw the shot perhaps a little bit too early and resulting in the wicket subtle changes in pace. Continues to grow his reputation as one of the premier spinners in the region, Gulakesh Moti, across formats. Oh. There is no Aki Lusin, so he is the lead spinner, the senior spinner in the team. There's also Yannick Carrier, the wrist spinner as well, who I'm sure we'll see not too long from now. Also, Bats, he's a good fielder, so it's a good package. One of the building blocks that Darren Sami, I'm sure, is looking at, along with some of the other young batters. Just got to continue to build and to grow. Off the mark. Yeah, just saying with that uh, conversation of spin and the omission of Akil Hussein, both yourself and Ian Bishop spoke about his omission. What would you advise both of them playing in this West Indies ODI team? Yeah, I think there's, there's an opportunity for that as well. They, they did it against Bangladesh last year in Guyana. Both Akil Hussein and Gurukesh Moti featured in that series. So it's not something that's altogether impossible or improbable. But I guess from a variety standpoint, they want to have the wrist spinner in Yannick Carrier in as well. As a spinner yourself, if you had to prioritize both left-arm spinners, how will that uh, unfold? I think... Naki Hussain is a proven campaigner. We know what he can do at the international level. He's done it for some time now. Amongst the top wicket takers, amongst all spinners in full member nations in that last cycle. So I guess it's an opportunity for West Indian coaching group to have a closer look at what Moti can do. Go run. And so far, he's done an excellent job 97 for two In that first one day international, of course, uh, both West Indies and India, they scored at around five runs uh, per over. Current run rate 5.1. Wickets uh, so far to Shepard and Moti. Feet nowhere close. Was driving off his back foot, so to speak. I just saw the opportunity to go after that one based on the length and the line. And that back foot going towards leg side, towards the square leg umpire more than anything else. Yeah, but played some important innings last time around. Aksa Patel. That's glove, that's glove, that, uh, that is out. Success for Romario Shepard once more. Maybe some extra bounce and then that angle into the left-handed Patel. 
Yeah, this is a vicious delivery from Romario. Shepard tried to drop his hand, couldn't do so in time. And Shea Hope gleefully accepts. Romario Shepard is all smiles. And credit to Aksa Patel, who walked immediately, goes for one. Three quick wickets, 97 for three. Hardik Pandya, standing captain for India in this second one-day international. No centuries yet in this format for the all-rounder. Seems to relish the opportunity to lead and to balance that with his primary roles as a batter and a bowler. Has been bowling a lot in uh, one international cricket in recent times. Of course, he had that injury of a stress fracture, Hardik Pandya. Stress fracture to his back. Yeah, this is the reason why he's here. Just confirmation of the glove on the way through to the wicket keeper but really well directed from Romario Shepard. Good pace, good aggression. And you're getting good bounce from the surface at the oval, at the Kensington Oval. This is exactly why I was advocating that the West Indies start with the likes of Alzari Joseph and Jaden Seals. Not allow the likes of Ishan Kishan and Shubman Gill to get in with the easy pace bowling of uh, Carl Mayers. Still Surya Kumar and Jadeja to come. Shadow Thakur can bat as well. Go run. Go run. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. If you're looking at 2027 and you're looking to be competitive and get back up to those levels and in the top rankings you want to ensure that you're getting early wickets in one day internationals and sort of understand that Calmiers is perhaps best with a new ball but you've got to balance that with trying to make early inroads and putting the opposition on the back foot that opening partnership of 90 could well be the difference in this game and utilizing the conditions as well. 20 overs gone, 97 for three. Yannick Carrier into the attack with the West Indies in a position of advantage. Having picked up three wickets in quick succession, both batters on naught. Having faced uh, four balls each, a return for Sanju Samson in a different looking playing 11, led by Hardik Pandey at the other end. Uh, there's a series about identifying things for India beyond just getting the result. 
That having been said, that would be Rat Kohli and Rohit Sharma. West Indies have an opportunity. Doesn't really seem perturbed by the situation or the fact that uh, this is an opportunity for the West Indies. Slip in place. Sanju Samson is off the mark. Seen some acrobatic fielding, some short bowling. It's Mehdi and Bishop. Quite excited. Morning, Bish. Hello, Ranak. Hello, everyone. Excited might be a strong word, but pleased to see particularly young fielders throwing themselves around. But also happy to see Romario Shepard put in a good shift. And when as the 100 when comes up for India, wondering as well when we'd see a short burst from Jaden Seals, for example, to two new batters at the crease. Scoring rates just dropped under five. Get him Carrier did get some turns, some bounds. The same surface a couple of days ago. It's the first that we're seeing of wrist spin in this game. It's a card that Hardik Pandya will have to play tune with Kuldeep Yadav. There's some turn. Which means that when India come to bowl, weather permitting, there'll be some grip in the surface as well. Hence, the West Indies have to play this to the ultimum in the field and try to cement their position. Tidy start from uh, Carrier. 101 for three, and the West Indies have been lifted by uh, serious effort in the field. Shubman Gill initially tried to take down Kyle Mayers. Smart bit of work by Romario Shepard. Kishan was home, though. Jaden Seals. Yannick Carrier. This was Casey Cardi into the side. He's given it everything. Wait and see. That was acrobatic excellence from Athanas. <laughs> right, Alzari Joseph. Four over spell. He replaced Jaden Seals, is back into the attack. Slip still in place. There's a fielder that's uh, just moving from left to right of screen. There's a man deep on the offside who's now coming in, Shimron Hetmeyer at cover. So no one deep on the offside, barring the third. Well, this time it's gone through. Just talking about the high standards of fielding set. But uh, Anik Kari, I would believe he could have stopped that. Yeah, definitely. But it, it's previous knowledge and familiar foes here as well. Of course, for the Gujarat Titans in the IPL, Hardik Pandya 
would have captained Alzari Joseph. And they would have worked a lot together during that season. So there's some familiar knowledge here. However, part of that is the short ball. We saw Romario Shepard. I'm happy for Romario Shepard every time he puts in a good stint. I was particularly interested in the short ball and the release of the short ball to Axel Patel that got his wicket. Cross seamer. Something that I think needs to become a greater part. Shepard does it well uh, of the West Indian bowling armory. Scramble seam and cross seam. I think the music came on just as he got into his delivery stride. And DJ got a little enthusiastic. Yeah, you talk about the familiarity, Alzari Joseph and Hardik Pandya. Pandya's captain decided to go without the services of Joseph for a significant part of this year's IPL. Pushing for two, just be a single though. Played a uh, total of seven games, Joseph, for Hardik Pandya's Titans on their route to the final. Missed out on the last five games, including the playoffs. I don't think a shower of rain is that far away. I don't think I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Never want to be. Don't go anywhere. I might be wrong. More purpose and aggression from the West Indies seamers on the surface that has allowed it. But this is good to see. A different way of bowling the short ball from Alzari Joseph. He is more comfortable with seam up and only occasionally going cross seam. I think the cross scene just holds up sometimes or slides on. Doran. Some deliveries have bounced more significantly than others, which in itself is a significant challenge. But you utilize it as a bowler as best as you can. Particularly against a subcontinent opposition. Four of the over. 105 for three. Lovely view of the harbour, deep water harbour, and the port. Shallow draft. India having to rebuild. Quick succession of wickets as Yannick Karia continues from the Joel Garner end. A slip in place for Sanju Samson. Innings of great significance for Samson back in the playing 11 in his uh, 11 previous one day internationals. It's 
been made to play different roles. Started off at number three. Last time he was here in the Caribbean, batted five. Batted six in his home series against South Africa. Oh. He's back at three in this uh, side. It's been that kind of day. Been lucky with an on time start and no interruptions in spite of consistent cloud cover. You just see Samson tempted. To resort to the flamboyance that he's known for. One thing I wouldn't mind seeing, at least for one over or just a few deliveries, is for the long on to come up to mid on and perhaps even shift the fielder over into that, that cover area with the ball turning as much as it is from middle, middle and off stump. Five singles off that over, 110 for three. India losing three wickets in four overs. As the West Indies striking after an opening partnership of 90. Jaden Seals, three overs with the new ball. From the same end that he's going to resume proceedings on. Very good from Samson. It's a decent effort from uh, Robman Powell. On as a substitute, West Indies vice captain. Yeah, I've had my say on that in the first game. I'd still like to know why one game with that. What, what is the thinking behind coming into the series? Anyway, that's for another time. Jaden Seals needs to get it maybe tighter onto the off stump. Yeah, so just one over for Alzari Joseph. That was obviously a familiarity thing, one would think, with him and Hardik Pandya to try to exploit it. The head of Dominic Drake's in the bottom corner there, not playing today. And seems for me still a work in progress. Bold a reasonable four overs, but as he gets longer spells now, fascinated to see how he goes, and he's fascinated to understand how he goes. Better line, Ronock, and if, if even 
coming a little bit, maybe one stump closer to off stump. There's a quick chat between Samson and Panda. There has been in the last couple of overs when Samson's looked tentative. Jeez, there'd be a few people up in arms if Samson would have gotten out like that. Tends to polarize a lot of the cricket loving Indian public. Why? Sweet time out of the ball. We've just got more evidence of. When he's on song, it's remarkable as we've seen in the IPL. It's a good start to his ODI career. But can Samson just scale it up to achieve a level of consistency, reliability? In fairness, in this format, he's not had a good run at all. Consistent run at one position, series after series. He finds himself batting at three. I thought India would look at him as someone to come in at five, compete for KL Rahul's position. We saw Surya Kumar Yadav bat three in the last game in a pretty straightforward run chase. So I think while India want more and more players to get runs, I'm not sure we're getting any closer to what role they're looking at for Sanju Samson, for Surya Kumar Yadav. Gone. Straight to Brandon King. Jaden Seals brought back into the attack. Repays his captain's fate and gets rid of the Indian captain of the day. India in trouble. Yeah, that's why I wanted this young man back into the attack, having only bowled three overs previously, and to try to use the short ball. Joseph had a little go at Hardik Pandya previously. That's a good catch. The West Indies have been sharp in most things in the field today, if not all. Excellent from Seals. Good leadership to get him back to. Pandya goes for seven. One thirteen for four. Right, here's Surya Kumar Yadav. He's a man who's still to nail this format. An average of just under 24. Average is double of that in T20i cricket. He wore Sanju Samson's shirt in uh, the last game. I think he's doing that again. Oi! Oh, there's another! India are falling apart at the Kensington Oval as Yannick Carrier turns one across Sanju Samson, who walks back immediately after Hardik Pandya. Carrier has his first. There is some grip in the surface and bounce as well. Try to get the hands inside the line to leave it alone, but too late. Good partnership bowling. Sanju Sampson goes for nine, one thirteen for five as the drizzle comes down here at Kensington. Well, it was a theme in the second test at Port of Spain. Wicket brought a shower instantly. And as India have lost half their side, covers are coming on. This is what happened just before the rain break. Trying to make sense of that from a better point of view in Bishop. 
Yeah, he's okay. seen the bounce, he's seen the spin, and initially he would have had one stroke in mind, and then having seen the bounce, was in two minds and tried to pull the bat inside the line of the ball, but by then it had already brushed the outside edge. Very good. Bowling from the West Indies. First from Gudakesh Moti, who took the first wicket. Jaden Seals. Carrier coming in and doing their work again, following each other. And that is good to see. The fielding, though, I know Moti put down one to his left. But I think the energy off of that is feeding into the rest of the bowling. Yeah, they've been up for this, the West Indies, and it's shown back-to-back -back half centuries for Ishan Kishan, who started well with Shubman Gill, opening partnership of 90. The wickets falling in quick succession thereafter. India losing half their side before we reach the halfway point in this innings. doesn't seem like a heavy shower. It's just a steady drizzle for the moment. This warrants the use of the umbrellas. Now let's hope it clears up soon. Because the West Indies will be eager to get back on the field. Romario Shepherds had a terrific little contribution, a cameo of four overs, if you want to call it that, with ball. Really made Akshar Patel jump up and down eventually. Short one to get rid of him. Surprise promotion for Akshar at four, but Shepard with the uh, wickets of Kishan and Akshar just opened this game up. The others have contributed. Yeah, I want to give Shepard a big shout out there. I, I left his name off the list, but he's been central to all that has happened. And every time he does well, not supposed to say this on commentary, but I rally for him because he's such a good guy and he gets a hard time from quite a few fans, understandably. His economy rate in T20s is not special, but he's a hard and diligent worker and he knows he needs to get better. And good to see him every time he gets a moment in the spotlight. And we could do it a spotlight with all this rain here. Well, Ishan Kishan, that's uh, three fifties in a row now across formats on this tour. Naturally aggressive player, flamboyant, some pace in the wicket, took down the spin too. Yeah, it's, it's time will tell how effective this knock from him is. It's certainly in the first ODI, his knock was was quite good. It's still a pitch that if we get full play today, it it's still has its challenges. Not as much as the first game, but the ball is still turning. There's enough bounce in it for the fast bowlers who hit the pitch on a length or short and might be some sideways movement. So, But I do like, I like the energy the West Indies have come out with. I really have enjoyed the and long may that continue to be drilled in. Right, five wickets taken by the West Indies. Shubman Gill trying to take on Gudakesh Moti, holding out well judged catch by Alzari Joseph. Just uh, started the trend of some very efficient catching in the field. That was the best of them. Alec Athanas It's going to be remembered. This tour uh, across formats as perhaps the tour of Alec Athanas from a West Indian point of view. Terrific catch at uh, backward point to get rid of Ishan Kishan. Coming closer. That was the plan from Shea Hope. Plan to send Akshar Patel up the order didn't work. Then change of angle, Romario Shepard coming round the wicket, had beaten him just balls before over the wicket. And Akshar Patel walked, he knew it had uh, taken his glove. 
This is another sharp catch by Brandon King as Jaden Seals. On returning into the attack. Striking. And literally of the next ball, just as India were recovering from the wicket of uh, Hardik Pandya, Karia oh. made Samson look silly. Ended up being two catches and two balls for Brandon King. This one, fairly regulation. One thirteen for five, fifty-five to Ishan Kishan. Gill looked promising for thirty-four. Sanju Samson still has work to do. No Virat Kohli, no Rohit Sharma in that lineup today. And Surya Kumar Yadav, if we get back to the normal run of things today, will be hoping to finally show what he's capable of in this format, as he has done in the shortest format. Again, a lot of plaudits. For Romario Shepard, Yannick Carrier picking up Sanjo Samson also very good. Moti, say it again, I think he's the best cross format finger spinner in the region. And Jaden Seals, always excited about his future. Handle him well. That's a point we were making of uh, how the West Indies were just up for this just new energy or different looking side, not a lot of players from the test team here, just the two in Joseph and Athanas. Significant number of changes from uh, the team in Zimbabwe as well. Casey Kati. Into the attack. That's, that sums it up, Alec Athanas. Well, it, you need the personnel to be able to do it one. That personnel must have the willingness to put their body on the line. Now, it's not going to be perfect. And there's still a long way to go because it's just a portion of one game. What this needs to be is to become a cultural part of cricket in the Caribbean, how we play the game. There'll be missed opportunities, and there have been. A couple of really hard ones. I don't know if you call these opportunities well. I that was tough. Could have probably gotten both hands to it. Moti certainly to his strong side will feel that certainly was one missed. And then that not easy for Shepard, but so there are missed chances, but already we've seen the energy and what they need run up to your point is to bring it every day, regardless of what success they get. The only thing you can control is your energy, your work ethic and your commitment. The outcome has to determine itself, but you have to put in the work. And if West Indies can do this, I think it's a good sign. One thing that will change the culture in the Caribbean. Still more to do. Yeah, and it's already a marked improvement from Zimbabwe, where we were there at the qualifiers and the kind of chances the West Indies put down, it just had us gobsmacked. Straightforward ones. It only just shows perhaps uh, the attitude in the field that needed perhaps, uh, you know, inspiration in the form of a few words perhaps from a captain or a coach, a kick on the right side. And we've seen that today. This looks like a much better all-round fielding unit. I, I just want to be clear. I'm, I'm not in any way prophesying the outcome of the game. I'm not saying who is going to win the game, but baby steps and that's what i am pleased with the energy that i'm seeing in the field now over time you're hoping that will translate into batting which is a much harder escape the bowling has been filled with discipline so baby steps and whatever the outcome is that'll take care of itself yeah, for the moment they'd uh, love to get back out onto the field i hope it's not a very long shower but it's a beautiful part of the world. Barbados. Now when it is sunny and you can get out to either the Atlantic Ocean or the Caribbean Sea that engulfs this wonderful island. If you're a fan of uh, venture sport, water sports, as Ian Bishop is. Sights and sounds of uh, Barbados. Of 
you love your snorkeling, scuba diving, there's plenty for you to see in uh, Barbados. Because the West Indies white ball captain, ODI captain, Shea Hope, also from this part of the world, and so too is uh, Joel Manning. So, two boys from Barbados would have plenty to say to each other. An absolute pleasure to be along Shea Hope, captain of the West Indies ODI side. A big series coming up versus India. Shea, how are you doing right now? I'm lovely. I'm home, so I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, how, how good is it to be back home? I had a bit of a stint on the road heading to Kensington Oval. How special is it to be here again? Well, it means a lot, especially playing in front of my fans, in front of my family, in front of my friends. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that every kid would dream of. So being here and being a leader to the group means even more to me. Yeah, leader, and this is actually going to be your first home series in the official capacity as captain. Let's take things back to a familiar setting in terms of Queen's College, where we both went to Shea. Uh, did either of us see this happening? Um, I would have to ask you that question. <laughs> for me, I always wanted to play for West Indies and getting the opportunity from a young age to showcase my skills and obviously just kicking on from there. I, I must say I was, was supported pretty nicely from my family and then obviously you guys at Queen's College. So again, I have to throw that question at you. Um, I don't think we ever really saw it coming. No, we always knew that you'd be there. Funny enough, uh, I can remember that game versus Garrison Secondary, the record-breaking part. So you remember that one? Yeah, I remember it for a week because it was broken, I think the week after <laughs> yeah. by, by Craig Braffy and Ade Chase. But yeah, we, again, Anthony Allen, he was another special player that one I wish who could kick on and play some more West Indies cricket. But started from a young age, as I said, I got the opportunity and the people around me supported me to get to get me to where I am at this present moment. Yeah, now let's just look at what happened just before this. Obviously, not necessarily the best in terms of results coming out of the World Cup. What were some of the lessons for you as a captain coming out of that? Uh, the, the biggest thing is to learn as quickly as you can. You have to push those things aside. Obviously, we, we, we can't change the result now, but it's important for us to make sure that we learn from that quickly because we got so much cricket ahead of us. We've got a, a, a young and exciting group of guys now and so talented, but it's to mesh that talent with performance. So that's the main thing I need to take from that tournament back in Zimbabwe. As long as we learn and improve, we're going to get better. Yeah, I know. And in terms of that learning curve, that learning process, what has been the conversation with the boys? Because obviously I know you've been in a bit of a training setup here in Barbados leading into the ODIs. What have the conversations been like with the boys? Uh, the key focus has been on attitude that positive attitude at that. And make sure that we, we understand how we're trying to go about our cricket. And the first we need to do is have that positive attitude going into to training and obviously transferring that into the game setting. So the main focus has been the attitude so far. Yeah, I know I want to head a bit back to the personal side of things. How have you kind of zoned out from it all since being back home. I, I know that beach has to be in there somewhere, but how are you zoned out, Shay? As you think, you know me too well. <laughs> but yeah, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of nature and it gets me back to that calmness. And I, I, I needed to do it. But obviously it's something that you can't, as I said before, you can't change your past. It's just about trying to find ways to improve on, on the performances that we had in Zimbabwe. And we need to improve a lot faster too. So. Yeah, I just had to come back home, take in some fresh air, get some sunlight, um, enjoy the waters, and then try to move on from there. Yeah, Jim, including in there as well, because I know that, you know, uh, 4.30 the other morning, I, <laughs> I saw you snapping inside of the gym. Yeah, that's a staple for me. I just believe every athlete, any elite athlete, has to, to make that a, a staple in their, in their regime. And for me, it's, it's part of me, it's like breathing. I, I love to be in the gym, I love to exercise, I love to push my body to the limits. And that same 4.30 morning start was one of those things. So it's easy to wake up at 9.30 in the day, go to gym at 11 and breathe through the rest of the day. But sometimes you have to take yourself out of your comfort zone. And that's exactly why I, I decided to go at 4.30 every now and again. Yeah, now that's the physical side of things. Let's take a look probably at the mental side of things. Uh, would you say that uh, it's somewhat of a mental burden having that captaincy? Yes and no. 
for me, I, I try not to focus on it too much. The aim for me is just to continue to inspire the ones around me, first and foremost, and then obviously the, the generations to come. But if I, if I focus on it as a, as, a, as a burden, then it would become a burden. But for me, it's, it's about understanding, yes, I'm a captain, but I'm also a player. I need to make sure I tick my boxes on and off the field as a player first and foremost, and then trying to get the guys to, 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 to play with that same attitude that we're trying to, to get towards. So I wouldn't say it's, it's too much of a difference being captain or just being a regular player for me. You, you mentioned ticking some boxes and we stick on the personal side of things in this series. What are some of those personal boxes that you want to tick off to say, OK, I can be happy with what I've done in this series? <sighs> Again, I'm a batter <laughs> and I want to lead from the front. Yes, I'm the captain, but I want to continue to lead from the front of the bat and trying to find ways to improve my game as well. Um, there's, there's always talk about my straight rate, but it's, it's about understanding what's necessary and playing the situation as best as I can for the team. And again, I want to get better. I, I'm never satisfied with where I am, so I have to continue um, improving my game and hopefully I can rub off on, on the rest of the batters in the team. Yeah, you also hold the gloves as well does that add another dynamic in terms of keeping yourself zoned into the game does that help at all with the overall performance for yourself yeah from a young age i always love to be involved and for me wicket keeping you don't have a choice but to be switched on for the entire game uh, so i guess maybe that's why i gravitated towards keeping rather than bowling but yeah it's, it's something that i always enjoy doing from a young age and it definitely keeps me in the game I can see the angles a lot better, especially when the bowlers are maybe taking a bit of stick to slow things down a bit. But the main thing is just to understand that I, I carry a few more hats now than, than, than normal. But yeah, I, I do enjoy keeping and it, it helps with my batting as well. It also helps with um, understanding angles, as I said, and understanding what, what's required in a certain situation. Yeah, I think two final questions for you, Shay. Looking at it now, even beyond this series, knowing that uh, a bit of responsibility now is on your shoulders. Where do you want to take this ODI side? It's, it's plain and simple. We, we need to get better. I want to get up that, that ranking. Um, for us, we, we all want to, to get there as well. It's not just one or two guys in the setup. But we need to understand there's a process to get there. It doesn't happen overnight. And we need to continue sticking to those processes that we speak of. And yeah, we just want to get into that top four, top three, top two, and then eventually being the number one right side. Yeah, and finally, you know, thinking back to childhood, she is short pants at St. Cyprian's school. <laughs> yeah, knees showing and all. <laughs> um, hey. Would you say that you continue to love cricket as much as you did back then? Honestly, it, it has some patches. Uh, I, I think I'm enjoying it a lot more these days than I was maybe two, three years ago. But I think that's a big part to play, especially churning out those consistent performances. If you're not enjoying what you're doing, it's going to make it so much more difficult. And I, I found it out firsthand. So I, I must say, if you're doing it, we have to enjoy, enjoy the training side of it, enjoy the off the field stuff. And then when you get onto the part, it becomes like second nature. How much do you enjoy just engaging Barbadian fans, being back home, knowing that they love you, they support you, getting to meet them, sign things? Yeah, again, it's, it's about inspiring people, inspiring the next generation. And when I was younger, I was always looking forward to being around some of my heroes as well, so I can, I can see it from this side. And any chance and any opportunity I get, I always take some time out to do so. So I'm looking forward to being around them, looking forward to, to sharing some experiences, um, having a chat, even learning from them, because you know the, the, yeah. the older folks have a lot of stories to tell us. I know I can make someone's day, and they, they certainly make my day when they do it. So looking forward to it. Oh, so you're, you're practiced, you're ready for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so show me the selfie pose. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolute pleasure, bud. Yes, man, for sure. Every time, every time. Well, Shay Hope has uh, not had a lot of reasons to smile and laugh in recent times on the field. Today is different, though as we still wait for better weather and brighter skies in Barbados. West Indies would be keen to get out there. They've picked up five Indian wickets. It's been a good day for Shea Hope. Won the toss, decided to bowl, and in spite of an opening partnership of 90, his bowlers, led by Romario Shepard's uh, double strike of Ishan Kishan and Aksar Patel, managed to pick up five Indian wickets. 
Aksar and Samson coming in for Rohit and Kohli and they've both been dismissed. Wickets shared between Shepard. Spinners in action again. Moti and Carrier with the wicket each. Jaden Seals dismissing Hardik Pandya. Right, while we wait for uh, more promising news in terms of the weather here at the Kensington Oval, it's time for us to take a short break. On the other side, enjoy highlights from the first ODI between these two sides a couple of days ago, where the ball seriously turned. First ODI, here we go. Into swing, Samuel. Yeah, just a, a little hint of swing from Hardik Pandya. Just letting us know from where they've come to look at this match. That is very pretty from Brandon King. First runs in the series. First runs for King. And they come in the form of four. The West Indies are underway. Uh, this is where he's particularly strong. Through the offside. A little bit too full. But that's the area that he looks to score in, Brandon King. And despite the hand, the left hand of the field, it still has enough to go all the way. So a confident start. Well, he'll not add any more today. Kyle Mayers trying to force the issue. 
He's given the easiest of catches to Rohit Sharma at mid-on. Hardik Pandya strikes for India, who've drawn first blood. Yeah, he was surprised by the bounce of a few deliveries earlier, high up on the bat. And didn't get the connection that he was looking for, a simple catch, really easy. The first wicket down for the West Indies. Kalmia's goal is for two, West Indies seven for one. What a pickup that is. And it goes all the way for six. Alagathanaz arrives in the Caribbean. And he unfurled on this one nicely. Just helped it along its way. Wasn't in any way threatening the stump, so. Come again. Follows that up with a shot and a half. And it'll be back-to-back -back boundaries for Athanas. This one was a little bit closer and fuller. And he finds the gap to perfection, almost surgical in nature. That sounded so sweet. Brandon King has a boundary of his own. Yeah, very rarely does he miss out whenever presented with width. Keep mentioning how strong he is through that offside region, likes to stand beside the ball. And just play his hands through that delivery. And neither of them will come anywhere near that. That's four more to Athanas. Yeah, he gets inside the line of the delivery well so that he can play it fine. Maybe not as fine as he would have liked, but fine enough. And despite the two fielders being positioned in the deep, neither of them were, were close enough. And that'll be four again. He is helping himself to boundaries at the moment. Athanas, expensive opening over from Shardul Thakur. 12 off it. West Indies are 39 for one. Terrific strike. Every time he gets an opportunity to throw the hands at it, whether it's way outside the off stump or six stump. Just allows his hands to flow through that shot, even though it's a part of safe field. What in? That's why they stack that offside field. First wicket in ODIs for Mukesh Kumar. Wouldn't be his best delivery, but a good timing of the jump to catch it. Mukesh Kumar continues to enjoy his time here in the Caribbean. Not the delivery he would have been looking to bowl, but he'll take the wicket. And a well-timed jump by Ravdanja Jadeja at backward point. Joy for the man. He deserves it. Good start, but he goes for just 22. West Indies lose their second for 45. Straight. Very, very straight at him. That is wonderful from Shadow Takur. They can't look. Great assessment of the shifting of line. about attacking those stumps when you're bowling to Brandon King. No foot movement. He stays next to the ball, unable to get behind it. Brandon King goes for 17. West Indies in further trouble at 45 for three. Is he going? Is he going? Is that on time? Marie Rasmus, over to you.
TV Ampar to Director, we have a place review for Court Behind. Original decision not out. I've checked the front foot and it's a fair delivery. Can we start with spin vision, please? I will need Ultra Edge, please. Clear gap between bat and ball. Thank you. I'll go back to Nigel on field. Mm. You on screen now, signal. <laughs> I'm tempted to still leave the umpiring to the umpires. Yeah, in the gap. Well played by Shea Hope. Another attempted short delivery. Had to wait slightly and did well enough to get himself another boundary. The reason why he's considered an X-Factor bowler is uh, because he bowls those attacking deliveries. Went for the Yorker first stop to Shea Hope. Now short. Not in control, but gets away with this one. And another boundary, another short delivery. Shea Hope did not know where that one went. But the result is another one, back-to-back -back boundaries. Malik, gone short again. I guess from an India's perspective, there is that accommodation that he'll be a little bit expensive. Yeah, well played. Neatly tucked behind, will get himself a boundary. And Hitmeyer, so crucial. Gets his first boundary of his innings. Of course, batting at number five. He's batted in various positions in this format for the West Indies. Yeah, Clean him up. <laughs> too adventurous, too innovative, and pays the price. I was just mentioning how good he is against spin. And then he does that. Jadeja, though expensive. Gets the big wicket. Batting in one-day cricket or in any format is about managing risk. Was that called for? At this stage of the innings, too far inside the line. There was a clear plan to bolt to his pads, and he succumbs. Hetmeyer with very little impact goes for 11. 88 for four now. Goes for the sweep. And will get value for this shot. Not often. Have we seen Rothman Powell sweep, sweep, but he's swept to perfection. Successful over comes to an end, 92 for four. Yeah. In control, full control, Shea Hope. Very familiar with the conditions here at Kensington Oval in Barbados. He hails from this island. And that's competence. Yeah, and the more time he spends out in the middle, the better he will adapt to the conditions and understand the pace of the ball. Yeah, ball. God. Shubman Gale with a very, very sharp catch in uh, first slip. Another ripper that's from Jadeja. And Ravman Paul succumbs to spin. And not for the first time as well. It was a little bit closer to the previous delivery that beat his bat. Had to play enough turn and enough carry to Shubman Gill. Rothman Powell comes. Rothman Powell goes. 96 for five. What a catch. Move there. Just... A moment ago, Virat Kohli, and that is a stupendous effort. Another wicket in the over for Ravindra Jadeja. And Kohli, who prides himself on excellence, not only with the bat, but in the field. Speaks highly of his uh, athletic ability, and there is evidence of it. Wow, created a wicket, taking opportunity for his team. Well supported by Jadeja once more. Shepard goes without scoring. 96 for six. Ah! 
much a bigger feeling they are confident and that's why Dominic Drakes has reviewed more in hope than vain. Let's listen in to Maria Rasmus. TV Amputy Director, we have a player review for LBW, original decision out. Check the front foot and it's a fair delivery. Let me start with spin vision, please. Can I have Ultra Edge to check any bet? Gap between bat and ball. Into the pad, please. No bat involved. Ball tracking when ready. Copy that. Ball tracking coming up. Pitch outside off, impact is in line and it's hitting the stumps. So you can stay with your out decision. Kuldeep joins the party. It's his first wicket as the West Indies lose their seventh in all sorts of trouble at 99 for seven. That is still Kuldeep is very convinced. Ishan is already making the sign. It needs to come from Rohit Sharma. It comes from him. Back to Maria Rasmus. TV Ampatu director, we have a player's review for LBW. Original decision not out. Check the front foot and it's a fair delivery. Can we start with spin vision, please? Rock and roll that for me. Thank you. No bat involved. You can go to ball tracking. Copy that. Still waiting for ball tracking. It's pitch outside. Off. Impact is in line. And it's hitting the stumps, so you'll have to reverse your decision, Nigel. I'll tell you when you're on screen. Simple decision, or should have been a simple decision, initially live, but technology proving the right outcome. Carrier goes for three, 107 for eight. And that's why I said it's interesting, not that long off would have caught this because it's gone for six, but I would have thought with the amount of grip he's getting from leg to off, you'd want him taking the chance to hit against the spin over mid on rather than hitting with spin over long off. Now they're shifting the long off back. He has his third subject to the review, which Shea Hope has taken instantly. Kuldeep is keeping Maria Rasmus busy. TV Ambar 2, director, we have a players review for LBW, original decision out. Check the front foot and it's a fair delivery. Spin vision, please. I'll need Ultra Edge to check if there's any battle glove. Waiting for Ultra Edge, uh, Nigel. Still waiting. Still standing by for Ultra Edge.
A stretch coming into the pad, please. Hitting the pad there. Just rock and roll it. Take it back a bit. Just take it back again, please. Thank you. And forward again. Rolls below the bat into the pad. Ball tracking when ready, please. Pitching in line, impact in line, and it's umpire's ball on the stump, so you can stay with your out decision, Nigel, and fill you into signal. Confirmation of the dismissal of Shea Hope. It's sad to say a limp batting performance from the West Indies. Hope goes for 43, 114 for nine. Perfectly placed for just that. Hardik Pandya at leg slip takes the catch. That will complete a sorry innings and a sorry effort with the bat from the West Indies. Kuldeep has four for six in three overs. It's been all too easy for him and it's been all too easy for India. Oh, wonderful sight and wonderful news for viewers. You've stayed faithful to us and with us. The rains have been blown away at least for the moment. And we will restart in five minutes from now. No overs lost. Let's enjoy some of the highlights of the action so far. India put into bat, there was a difficult chance to Mayers. Shubman Gill looked in reasonable touch. Both sides of the wicket. Ishan Kishan backing up his half century from the last test match and the first ODI with another. He looked imperious. He had his difficult moments when the ball jumped at him. He also had a chance to go to Kesh Moti. Shubman Gill continued on his way. The pitch looked to be reasonable. And Ishan got to his 50 and 51 deliveries, his fifth one day international half century. So when things looked as easy as that at 90 without loss, it became 90 for one. And Shubman Gill fell to the impressive Gurakesh Moti. Shepard came into the attack. And he fell to an outstanding effort by Alec Athanas. Shepard further compounded India's difficulty with Aksar Patel falling to the short ball. Seals then used back of a length to get rid of Hardik Pandya. Sharp catch by King. And then, just before the rains, Sanju Samson fell to Yannick Carrier for nine. The rains came in as Judeja was about to make his entrance. But now we have a restart. Great news for you with a restart now here at Kensington Oval. No overs lost. We had some inclement weather for maybe about 25, 30 minutes. In fact, more than that, 47 to be exact. And Jadeja will partner the man affectionately known as Sky, Suryakumar Yadav. Yannick Carrier will continue and over that begun with the wicket of Sanjo Samson just before the rains came in. 113 for five, happy to be joined by my partner in crime, Rana Kapoor. Yeah, the weather's been kind to us, Bish. So in spite of uh, gloomy overcast conditions, no overs lost. Okay, we're ready. Yannick Karia, look at the first ball that brings Ravindra Jadeja. 
Bye. after the rain break. And he's off the mark straight away. Like Athanas in the deep. Brandon King at slip who took the catch to dismiss Samson. It's a short cover and a short mid wicket. India would know and have possibly identified looking at uh, questions that the West Indian spinners are asking. There's someone in some part of the world that's holding on to a Surya Kumari other of India jersey, Thanks. cherishing it. And that's caused the delay in okay. Surya's jersey getting here. If he, if, if he sticks around for a long time, Samson Yadav, Surya Kumar Yadav, if he sticks around, do you go to Gudakish Moti? You got him out in the first game? Oh, yes. It's a rhetorical question I, I, I'm asking myself. That just for a quick over to given that short but and recent history, if from one end you could just try that briefly, Yeah, it was Jaden Seals that uh, picked up the wicket of Hardik Pandya from the Malcolm Marshall end. Carrier operating from the Joel Garner end. So it'll be interesting to see who Shea Hope throws the ball to at the end of this over. I'm sure there would have been a chat in uh, the Indian dressing room. They lost five wickets chasing 114 last game. So this is about getting to a competitive score. One ball, one ball. I'm going to Jaden Seals. I would go to Jaden Seals to continue his spell from the Malcolm Marshall end. That's what I'm wondering if, and again, it, you may not have need for Gurukesh Moti, but if he lasts for a while, if you'd go to Moti from that end. Just the one man in the deep on the offside, and he stands no chance. Surya Kumar Yadav with his first boundary brings an end to the 25th over, 122 for five. Only Shardul Thakur and the bowlers to come. As it is Jaden Seals to continue. Bowler's right arm over to Deidre. Last ball he bowled before the rain came down. Saw the wicket of uh, Hardik Pandya. An easy shot for Sky. Carrier just lost his length and his line there momentarily, but gracefully played. Good footwork as well from Gregory Brathwaite. He's got a son, uh, one of his young ones, uh, very musically inclined, writes his own music, Gregory. Very proud of him. Yeah. 
Sarah. Off. It's a very attacking, well, nature. Only three fielders outside of the inner ring. You're allowed four, but because both batters are very new, both batters, you don't have a sweeper offside at the moment for Jadeja. So the line has to be tight on the off stump at a minimum from Seals. Yeah, and expect to see more of that. Certainly got the pace, even though that was just clocked at 131, Jaden Seals. Yeah, well, I love the use of the short ball today from the West Indies so far. It's been judicious but effective. It's not the last we'll see of it. It's taken off instantly. He got a response from uh, his partner. Moti, the fielder, Sky was home. Oh, I, and I, I, I want to see the West Indies translate exactly what we've seen there with that quick running to their batting effort. Oh, stay with us, Brandon, in the background. Just use the opportunity to milk every run, not to get run out, although that's part and parcel a hazard of the white ball game. Yeah, for Surya Kumar Yadav, there is an extra man out, so two fielders deep on the leg side, fine leg and deep backward square. Corresponding two fielders on the offside, sweeper in deep third. Try to make something out of that, Surya. Good over from Seals, just two off it. One, two, four for five. Jaden Seals not overly enthused by the footholds for the last couple of deliveries. The one that went down the leg side to Sky definitely was unintended. Six bowlers used by Shea Hope. And two changes made, no Dominic Drakes, no Rothman Powell. Mayors with a five-over burst with a new ball. And Shea Hope has uh, raced over to the other end. West Indies captain, he's now going to make the trip back behind the stumps. He spotted something, noticed something. Oh. Innings of great significance this for uh, Surya Kumar Yadav. Once again, don't be confused by the jersey that he's worn. He's Continued with the Sanju Samson shirt while the world still tries to locate his. But yeah, it's a, a player who's who India eagerly waiting, just nails this format. Oh, it's 
an interesting one for Sky. I don't know batting well enough. I just venture to say that it may be in 50 over cricket, maybe for the moment, what? it requires a little more orthodoxy from him before he feels more confident in branching out into his wonderful uniqueness. more than capable of this nature of play too. At times, even in T20 cricket, Bish in the IPL, when if he's running out of partners, has to bat through 8-10 overs. See, it's controlled aggression. Farms the strike. I think the situation right now, perhaps, in a strange way, may liberate him or allow him to play that way. Times goes too hard too soon. Been good in the field by and large. One, two, seven for five. Jiran Seal is to continue. He has that ability to find that gap backward of square. And even though there are two fielders positioned there, with surgical precision, finds the boundary. Hello, Shakira. Hi, Samuel. And we saw him try to create this, manufacture this shot. The last ball of Jaden Seals, previous over, just steps to the offside quite early, sets himself to access that gap between deep fine leg and deep backward square. No! And it puts you on the Tremendous pressure, doesn't it? When a batsman can play those types of strokes to a delivery that isn't necessarily short or, or badly lined. And Jaden Seed is not too happy with where he's landing, his front foot, the footholds. Remember, it's the same surface that we're using from a couple days ago. So not much time in between for the ground staff to sufficiently repair those areas. And then given the, the rainfall that we've had as well, makes it moist and a little bit difficult to get a firm footing. And this innings has been essentially a tale of two halves, hasn't it? Uh, the first partnership, 90 for the first wicket, and then they've lost those five in quick succession at 90, 95, 97, and two at 113. So a bit of a repair job needed. This partnership, just 18, just started. And some repair also for the non-striker with his bat. Maybe something just sticking out. Vintra Jadija. Unbeaten on six at the moment. No! Yeah, West Indian fans have an opportunity to support to support your team. A nice crowd building up here Saturday at the Kensington Oval. 
Visit tickets.windyscricket.com to purchase West Indies home tickets in 2023 and you can save 20% on venue box office price when you buy online and in advance. Of course, the T20 International Series to follow this as well as England will be visiting later this year in December. So don't miss out. I think it's that first ball that was hit for a boundary. Jaden Seals has opted to go a lot fuller. That's a right, Kumar Yadav. Who seem to have been sitting back because of the length that the West Indian bowlers had been hitting and also because of the extra bounce on this surface. He hasn't quite been able to kneel down one day international cricket just yet sky good running good response another opportunity for him to make a statement in this format 132 oh, for five Yeah, just a confirmation of that very good start and then those five wickets falling in quick time. And those red marks on the horizontal axis. Yeah, and a carrier, the man who heals from coal mine in Sangre Grande, East Trinidad, will continue. Yeah, getting some bounce and turn. did dismiss Sky in the opening one day international. It was Gulakish Moti, beg your pardon, but did get a wicket with this same type of operation. I got the wicket of Shadul Takru. This one is neatly placed. Results in a couple. Yeah, Yannick Carrier played for the West Indies on the 19 in 2010 in that World Cup in New Zealand. And scored an unbeaten 110 against Sri Lanka in the third place playoff. So he has ability with the bat. As a matter of fact, his first innings in international cricket against New Zealand right here at the Kensington Oval resulted in a half century oh. and Shakira Selman he was named captain of the West Indies emerging players team in 2019 a team that went on to win that regional liste tournament Joshua da Silva fondly calls that team the ultimate rejects because they what he made up of players who did not make their respective domestic territorial teams. It was a tremendous achievement from these guys, led by Yannick Carrier, to win that tournament no. against first choice players. Also part of that team that played in the UAE and had good returns, Yannick Carrier was included in the World Cup qualifiers, but suffered a nasal fracture there and was subsequently not able to participate. And he's returning here now. Beaten, stifled appeal, not too convincing, not convincing enough for Murray Erasmus anyway. Having a think about it, She Hope decides against it. Yeah, she oh, okay, went okay. immediately. Almost like he was convinced that that one took the outside edge. But deciding against the review. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it was a good take from Shehoop, and sometimes that emotion can get the better of you. Single to end, 29 done, 136 for five. Good view towards the east of the island. It doesn't look too bad at the moment. A couple of deliveries ago. There might have been something there. No, it's it's a bat hitting the pad. So you have to look at where the ball passes, the bat on the right, and then where the contact is made. So did hear something, she hope, but it wasn't bat on ball. So really good on playing. A really good decision in the aim by Shea Hope. Romario Shepard back into the attack. A bit of a loosener, that one. Not carrying through on the full to Shea Hope. But he was good in his initial spell. Got two wickets for 17 runs from his four overs. Accounted for Ishan Kishan and Aksar Patel. Now, yeah, Perton from around the wicket, wide of the crease, so is getting the ball to sort of follow the left-handed Ravindra Jadeja. And that was the way he got the wicket of Aksa Patel. Good short delivery, rising, couldn't get his hands down in time. It has been a, a good comeback from the West Indies. They need to win this game, remember, to keep the series alive. Won the toss earlier today, Shea Hope, and decided to bowl first based on the conditions weather-wise as well as possibly some moisture on the pitch with a 9.30 a.m. start. And for India, no Rohit Sharma, no Virat Kohli. They're seeing themselves on the big screen. Always entertaining when you see yourself there. This has been good from the West Indies throughout the day. The ground feeling. And that man in particular, Alec Athanas. His catching has been exceptional. His energy on the field. Look at this. Yeah, he's been really good behind point. Backward of point. Throwing himself around. Being good on the ground and in the air. Obviously, that spectacular catch. Ishan Kishan getting the second wicket for West Indies. He's been a very good across series, really good in slips as well. Pull away, wide of mid on. Very well controlled by Sky, and they're enjoying it. Saw something similar when Sherman Gill was batting. Not too short, but it just levels off around hip height. It's easy pickings for someone like Sky, who loves to play off the back foot. So welcome boundary for India. Yeah, it really wasn't a, a cross batted shot, wasn't a pull. Almost vertical bat and wide of the field at mid on. There's a change in field now, the slip comes out. And goes into mid-wicket. No! Just five runs coming from that over. 30 gone, 141 for five.
Nash Green outfield, not as quick as it usually is here at the Kensington Oval due to heavy rains overnight and early morning. Godakesh Moti back into the attack. Great. Pick off the bowlers for the West Indies in game one. Already picked up a wicket here in his first spell. Wants to Jadeja. Not too interested, Surya Kumar. Moti was able to prize out Sky in game one, and that was the result of a few deliveries before that spun viciously past the bat, and Sky decided that his best option was the sweep shot. Missed out and was dismissed. It'll be interesting to see what approach he takes this time around. Wants to Jadeja makes to himself. But Sky wasn't queued on, so it's just one. <laughs> He's smiling. There's something that Sky will have to improve as he goes on. Should have been an easy two. That ball overthrown by Jaden Seals. The fielder at a long one, not getting in quick enough to back up. Catch him now. Good occasion, Moti. Just perhaps starting those deliveries a bit too straight to Jadeja. He's able to tuck them around to the fielder at deep backward square. Oh, yes, boy. Yeah, but I just wondered how long it would have taken Shea Hope to reintroduce Gudakesh Moti, especially with Sky at the crease. Not just because he accounted for his wicket in the first game, oh, yes. but also because of his struggles against left arm bowlers. A little bit of a slight drizzle at the moment. As I'm too worried for now. Oh, yes. Nice and flighted from Moti. So I really like the way he's going about his bowling. Changes of pace. 145 for five. Ominous looking clouds high up. And so far, so good. Still on the field. Shepard will continue. Yes! Oftentimes, Shakira, we speak of how difficult it is from a batting standpoint when there's a bit of weather around. How challenging is it for a bowler when there's moisture on the ball, particularly for a fast bowler? I know for spinners, it's quite difficult and challenging. No, 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 but being a fast bowler yourself, is there an element of challenge with that? Yeah, definitely. If that seam gets too wet, Especially if you're a bowler that loves to hold it on the seam and relays on swing. It becomes quite difficult to control the ball. So quite often you will see fast bowlers resorting to holding the ball cross seam as well. In the air, fielder settles, carrier completes the catch. Well judged 
not in control, tried to keep it down. Ravindra Jadeja, and you've seen two different types of responses, one of joy and one of despair from the fans. Shepard strikes again. Reward from Mario Shepard. He's been good. Followed up that very full delivery with a back of a length delivery. Jadeja unable to keep it down, unable to ride the bounce. He top edges, he goes for just 10. Caught on the boundary by Yannick Carrier. India lose their six in further trouble at 146 for six. West Indies continue to take wicket across this second power play. Shadul Thakur, the new batsman for India. The best of an unbeaten 50 in one-day international cricket. India desperate for a partnership as the rain gets just slightly heavier. As you can see on screen at the moment, umpires remain in position. Oh, yeah. Mario Shepard has been really good throughout this second ODI. Another short delivery, and despite trying to keep it down, the top edge. Palms to the heavens from Yannick Carrier and comfortably pouched. And you can see that top edge and you can see how close he is to the boundary as well. Hitting with the wind and look at those smiles. That says a lot from one camp. There was a bit of despair from some Indian fans who are in. Shadow Thakur off the mark. I must commend the umpires, Shakira Selman, for staying on the field. It's just a, a, a passing sprinkle, and they've made the decision to stay on. Wisely so, it's dissipated quite significantly at the moment. Yeah, Gregory Brofwick, a Barbadian himself, would know much about the weather. What? Whether or not it's coming. It has seemed to ease a bit, so well done. But the umpire is choosing to stay on. Successful over from Romario Shepard. In the 148 Overboard. for six. Yeah, an exceptional start from India, from their opening batsmen. It's fallen away quite significantly since then. Surya Kumar Yadav unbeaten and a runner ball 24. Catch it. Yeah. Another catch from Alec Atanas. That young man has been quite superb. Another wicket for Godakesh Moti. And another wicket for the West Indies. India in further trouble. And once more, Saray Kumar Yadav falls to a left arm bowler. Not the best delivery from Gudakesh Moti. It did turn, it did grip, but it was a bit wide. And a good catch held at a backward point by Ali Atanas. Jubilation for Moti, jubilation for West Indies. They have a seventh wicket 
Sky goes for just 24, a start, and he fails to carry on. India, 148 for seven. Yeah, lots of excitement in the crowd if you're a West Indian supporter. A new batter for India, Kuldeep Yadav. Not the best batting starts from him. Picked up four for six with the ball. Didn't expect, I'm sure, to be batting in a situation like this. Has to reboot that one, Gurukesh Murthy. Remember, India resting a couple of the experienced players. The bounce is what did Surya Kumar Yadav. Another sharp catch. Rich Sharma and Virat Kohli over 70 international, one day international centuries between them, not here. And India, 149 nice. for seven. Shakira Selman, how impressed have you been with the West Indies so far? I've been really impressed, mostly by their effort, their energy in the field. <laughs> and I think that has impacted the way the bowlers have gone about their jobs. Darren Sami, I'm sure he is very happy. He wanted improvement. Catch it! Whoa. They've done much better, and now they have India on the back foot. Really good bowling changes by Captain Shea Hope. The bowlers have stood up to the task. Yeah, just a wide from that over, along with the wicket. 149 for seven. Yeah, collapse of epic proportions from India. 59 wickets, 59 runs rather. They've lost seven wickets. It's over to the bowlers. In the air, in the gap. Brings up the 150. And Shadul Thakur can bat. West Indies should not underestimate this man and be complacent. A tainted short delivery from Romario Shepherd. It does get high, but Shardil Tucker is able to control it and roll the wrist and hit the gap between fine leg and deep backward square. He is very capable with the back. He has a job to do, Shardil Tucker. Wow. Some bounce and some away movement, some seam movement from Romario Shepard looking to play on the own side. And then a steep rise in bounce. Look at that. Whatever India makes, Shakira Salman will not be an easy chase for the West Indies. And so they have to ensure that they look to shut this game off and close off this innings as quickly as they possibly can. A bit of medical assistance needed. Got a hit on his body, Shadow Takro. But from what we've seen, not only in that first game, but in this game as well, so important that West Indies 
look to chase as, as little as they possibly can. 175, 180 perhaps might be what they're thinking. Anything over 200 will be quite challenging. Career best effort from Romario Shepard, the first wicket, Ishan Kishan. Splendid catch from Artanas. And then Aksa Patel, a short rising one, couldn't get his hands away in time. And then Ravindra Jadeja, another well-judged catch in the deep from Yannick Carrier. And reward for his persistence and diligence and confirmation of his best in one day international cricket. The man from Burbies in Guyana, three for 29. This is what he's done so far. There's been quite a variety in terms of the lengths that he's operated in. A few short ones resulting in the wickets. And of course, length and a little bit fuller. Rich Hammer, of course, not involved in today's proceedings. Given the other youngsters an opportunity as India look to see where their bench players are. Rod Kohli as well. Sorry, Virat Kohli as well, not involved. Second ODI here at the Kensington Oval on the back of the first one by India. The final one to be played at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Trinidad in a couple of days' time. And that will be followed by five T20Is. Whether or not we head to Trinidad with the series squared or with India taking an unassailable 2 0 lead, we'll find out during the course of the day. Seems to be okay now to continue. Shadow Taco. Goes down to the non striker's end. That single brings school deep. Yada von Strake to face Romario Shepard, who's going to continue around the wicket to left handers. And I wouldn't mind seeing a, a forward short leg and maybe another slip looking to, as I mentioned, for the jugular and trying to finish this innings off as quickly as they possibly can. And because of the bounce that we've seen, Shakira Selman, that forward short leg, just to put some doubt in Kuldeep's mind and perhaps having him be a little tentative on the front foot. Wait, wait. Yeah, I agree with you. And you were right in saying that West Indies will want to wrap this up as quickly as possible and not take for granted the position that they're in. They would have seen where India struggled chasing that paltry total of 114 in the first game. And the way they struggled today as well. Yeah, and maybe we can see the reintroduction of someone like Alzari Joseph with his extra pace against these two. 154 for seven. Oh, hey, 
ha, ha. Nice multi, nice multi. Oh, Multi very good again. Two wickets in the previous game, two today so far. And a couple of slips hunting against Shadow. Oh, is he? Getting a touch too straight. Get him. And the leg by. Good afternoon. This afternoon to Darren Ganga. Afternoon, Bish. Hello, everyone. West Indies. Uh... Of course, competing fiercely in this second one international, one down in the series with one match to go. In with a good chance of uh, leveling the series. One of the good things that they've done as a bowling unit is, of course, pick up wickets in clusters. Two wickets to fall when the score was on 113, two to fall when the score was. 146, 148, so a very good sign. Seizing moments, imposing themselves as a bowling unit. One five seven for seven. Mario Shepard has been good, very, very good. What he wants to do is to keep the same disciplines with that slip in place. Shadow can be a dangerous lower order batter. And the lines here will again have to be fairly tight because there's no one in front of square sweeping on the offside boundary left just left of your screen there's a deep third so he wants to be relatively close to be off stump another play and a miss we've seen excessive bounce from the surface. They're yeah, cutting under the bounce. I also would like to see an adjustment in the field. We've seen a lot of runs score square off the wicket. I just feel the guy at short mid wicket and that of Hetmeyer and at cover. Sinclair should be closer to that white line. Square. No. A lot of runs scored square offside to the right and left of. Uh, Young Atanas. That field, and the field is within the 30 yard circle. They've not been adjusted given the conditions that we've seen from the pitch. Don't want to give him that whiff, and that's how dangerous Shadow Takur can be with no one sweeping out there. Got to tighten up the line and control the length. 
There's a no-nonsense type bat across seam delivery too wide, too full. Many of you would recall that innings that he played in the recent IPL when he peppered RCB bowlers. 68 from 29. So beware, She Hope and the West Indies. Well, as Shepard has bowled, if nothing happens, I wonder if it might be the end of another spell for him and maybe get back to maybe one of Joseph or Seals as for a couple of overs. Last ball to try to make another impact. Good pick up and throw from Gudakesh Moti. 1 6 4 for 7. Sigari Silvers in the house. Turned 87 yesterday. The great man still in and around cricket. Not the greatest all rounder to play the game. So Gary back right will be honored by Cricket West Indies in the boardroom of the Meeks Warrell and Walcott stand during the interval between this game. Always a pleasant sight to see him here at the game. Yeah, Jaden. Usually. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And Moti entice a false stroke. Maybe with his guile, his flight. Now. Usually he'll stay wicket to wicket lines and then just try to spin one a little bit more with a lot less pace on his delivery. Trouble, big trouble. Could not get the power in the throw. But it was a really good effort to stop it and to create doubt in the mind of the two batters. Shimron Hetmeyer. Good commitment. Yeah, created chaos. Uh, Just wasn't yeah, yeah. Come, in come. a good position to get that power in the throw. He well to move to his left. Chadul Kako just forced. Cool deep to commit to the single. Luckily for both, no damage done. Very good team in world cricket. They're able to find bowlers who can really close an innings out with the ball. Haven't seen that from the West Indians so far. Get him, oh. I'm bad. Drink. One, six, seven for seven. And time for the Blue Waters drinks break.
India 167 for 7, 37 overs gone. We had a brief interruption for weather. Well, 47 minutes, but no overs lost. Nishan Kishan got 55. Shubman Gill was the first to go. Yeah, when he was set, you expected him to go on. He didn't do that, just played a false stroke to Moti. The brilliance of Atanas in the field with Shepard and his bowling round the wicket accounted for another then. The bounce, Aksa Patel, Hardik Pandya struck one from Jaden Seals to mid-wicket. And wicket stumble. Sanju Samson caught and slip. Jadija tempting a pull shot. Top edge one. Carrier made no mistake. Atanas again accounting for Sky. Moti getting his second wicket. Romario Shepard with three for 37. Two very good spells. And he'll be happy with the work he's put in so far. It's not done yet. As will the West Indies. Can I have center? Joseph back into the attack, replacing Romario Shepard. No! Good piece to start with. In these certain areas as a fast bowler you want to look at on the surface. That was to Ishan Kishan earlier. Just short of that length. That was Shepard to Shadow Takur. So there is a spot when you're bowling into the Joel Garner end that is causing some consternation when it is hit. And occasionally you want to pepper there, occasionally, to see if there's a reaction. Very good from Joseph again. It took a while and Shadul review straight away. Have a review for yeah, copy that, Greg. LBW given out for two. Keep your pie to that. There we have a player review for LBW. On field decision is out. Check front foot, and it's a fair delivery. Front on spin, please. Okay, the ball is close to the batter. Can we confirm with Ultra Edge, please? Keep going through. Yeah, just take that back one frame, please. Just take it back. Yeah, just, yeah, and and just fold frame, frame by frame. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, yes, complete gap between back ball and left hand side. Uh, ball hits the pad, so ball tracking one of the please. Original decision is out, pitching outside off. Impact is umpire's call and it's hitting the wickets, Greg. So stay with your original decision of out. I'll let you know when you're on screen. You're on screen, signal now. Fingers gone up. Excellent change of bowling by Shea Hope. Good pace, good length from Alzari Joseph. 24th wicket on this ground, 16 to Shadow Taco, 167 for eight.
Yeah. Umran Malik, he will have his own opportunity later on in the day, weather permitting to ply his trade on this surface. But for now, Alzari Joseph has him in his sights with a short forward square leg. That shot there just should send the message to either get a short leg in or another slip. Preferably a short leg, but instead it's gotten the rain in. It's so unfortunate if you're a West Indian fan to see the rain interrupting once more. We had an earlier interruption that accounted for just about 47 minutes in break. Messinese uh, continuing their wicket taking in this uh, middle phase of the innings. We've got uh, four wickets uh, in power play two at the moment. Eight already. Just sneaking up on length. Shadow Taco just hanging back. That's what you usually do when you're facing Alzari Joseph, but all credit to him. Getting it fuller and on target. Ground staff have been hard at work. I'm already looking towards the east and I can see a lightning of the cloud color and cover i just wanted to look alzari has used this scramble seam a lot today not for the first time we've seen it nipping back shadow taco himself is an excellent proponent of the scramble seam with the nip backer shepherd prevails in the wickets column of 55 to ishan kishan 34 to shipman gill it was 90 without loss at one stage, the West Indies have fought well through Shepard and Moti initially. Yep, just confirmation of 90 for the opening partnership. 33 between Jadeja and Surya Kumar, who is looking good. Bowling wise, Mario Shepard standing out amongst the fast bowlers. Three wickets to him. He was accurate. He extracted bounds from round the wicket. Moti. Ever threatening, maybe a little bit on the shorter side in the latter stage of his spells. But two for 30, significant contribution from him. And two from Seals, Joseph and Carrier. So. Umbrellas are up. Wrong staff here have been very active and very good to be fair in, in, in getting the covers on this playing surface and across the square. If you missed any of the action from a start of play, let's have a look at the wickets that fell starting with Shipman Gill again. Gill just trying to sees more control in the innings he was well set on 34 before he decided to go for a big one just hit the outer half of the bat credit to moti getting more spin slowing it up getting more revs on that delivery ishan kishan in full control tried to cut one didn't find the gap as he often does hit it straight to atanas who was flying away to his right He's growing in Statia as one of the best fielders in this West Indian side. Axel Patel with the chance to bat early in the innings, batting at number four. Couldn't negotiate this short one that had a little extra pace and bounce. In the motion of dropping his hands, a little bit of glove on the way through. Hardik Pandya pulled one straight into the hands of uh, Brandon King. Seals another wicket and growing in confidence after a layoff from injury the 
wicket taking of the West Indies has been quite superb. Sandro Sampson tried to leave, but it was too late. The ball brushed the outside edge. The West Indies have been quite good in the field today. They haven't been spot on or faultless, but a big improvement on what we've seen in recent weeks. Yannick Carrier. And then Shepard again. Simple catch. And they've used the extra bounce and the pitch very well too. That's another plus point for the West Indies without overdoing the short ball. And then Sky, he looked in control. But Moti to Surya Kumar was always going to be a thing today. For the second time in the series, Moti has picked him up. Then the last wicket to go, Zari Joseph reintroduced to the attack. Too quick, too straight to Shadow. Both himself and uh, Jaden Seals have been in great spirits all today. The news here is good. That's looking towards the east. The, the skies are clearing. And while the ground staff start removing the covers, we'll take a short break. But after the break, we will have continued action of that first one the international played here two days ago. It's this time India's run chase that they did successfully. Stay tuned.
dribbled away. Short and quick to pounce on it. And it's a hallmark of his batting, ultra attacking in nature. Up in the air, not in control. Flies behind the slip cordon and goes for four. This is a surface with the extra bounce. We talked about it a lot during the West Indies innings. Sometimes spongy bounce. So that short arm jab pull that Shubman Gill usually plays with a plum is challenged here because of steeper bounce. Edged. Did it carry? Brandon King thinks so. And to Jaden Seals. The umpires will just have a quick chat and might do a review. It's about the right line. It will go upstairs, but it's about the right line. It's fourth, fifth stump without a way swing from Seal. Murray Rasmus. Check the front foot and it's a fatal delivery. Can you give me the best angle, please? And another angle, please. Yeah, that the ball's disappearing there. The first one again, please. Uh, fingers under the ball there. Any other angles? Yeah, I've got fingers under the ball. I have a decision for the big screen. Yeah, clearly, Brandon King couching that one cleanly, and the confirmation comes. Harry Rasmus just making sure that the catch was completed safely. And Gill has to depart. A bright spot for the West Indian Seals with a first wicket, 18 for one. First runs, previous three ODIs, he didn't score. Finally, he gets off the mark. Five overs gone, 23 for one. Beautiful. The elegance of uh, Sky on show. Just caressing this one through that extra cover region. 28 for one after six. Oh my goodness. That's so good to watch. Full presentation of the bat and a firm wrist. Gets four. It's only a small sample size, but Ishan Kishan is showing us very good compactness, getting behind deliveries, getting a good stride in, defending well, and now attacking well. One after it. So quick to pounce on length, gets himself into very good positions, and those fast hands just completing the job. And this really is the only challenge for Ishan Kishan, Ishan Kishan as he matures and, and gets more international cricket. To be able to trust his defense when the ball is moving around and wait for these opportunities or create them later in his inning. Look at that. That is a signature sky shot. Scores a lot of his runs in that region. Picks the length, gets inside of the line, and just continues to amaze us. Well challenged the boundary, gets there. So another ill-directed delivery from Carl Mears. The first was a wide, the second a four. Carl Mears just struggling with his line from around the wicket to the left-hander. 
just getting that one too straight. Ishan Kishan is able to just turn that one to the left of the deep backwards curve fielder. Easy pickings. Yeah. And immediately swept away, way in front, feeling that position backward of square. This is the response after that first delivery that spun, that bounce and turn. That one a lot fuller, but very good response by Sarai Kumar Yadav, showing his confidence. No one in front of square on the leg side. That's a huge shout. He's given him. This time he raises the finger. And West Indians are celebrating. Sky is contemplating. Yeah, it does review. Over to you, third umpire. TV umpire director plays review for LBW. Original decision is out. Check the front foot and it's a fair delivery. Let me start the spin vision phase. Can I have Ultra Edge to check if it hit Battle Club? Roll through, roll through, roll through, roll through into the pad. Thank you, no bat involved, ball tracking when ready. It's pitch in line and the impact is in line, Michael. And it's hitting the stumps, so you can stay with your decision. Signal. Yeah, signal decision now. upheld, a very good decision from the on-field umpire. And Surya Kumar Yadav falls for the sweep shot, eventually goes for 19 in their 54. Skies have cleared enough for us to have a restart in play. The second interruption we've had in the innings, but we are reliably informed that there's no loss of overs at the moment. India 167 for eight. Alzari Joseph in the middle of a successful over. 55 to Ishan Kishan. 34 to Shipman Gill. But India so far have found it challenge on a surface offering enough for spin and for seam and the West Indies batting effort later on today weather permitting will I'm sure have to be judicious in their run chase if they are to succeed but for now Darren Ganga the bowlers need a couple more wickets they do two more to close the innings off that will be the focus by the West Indians they started with Carl Mayers and Jaden Seals Mayers with five overs in that first power play West Indies went wicketless in that phase of the innings and then it fell in power play two. Still with a chance of closing the innings out before the last power play. play. Sorry, Joseph loves playing at the Kensington Oval. Should be another one, could be another oh, Brilliant catch, magnificent from Casey Carty. West Indies have been tremendous in the field for the most part of today. The agility of youth and athleticism. And high class catching, very contagious in this match. Great support to the bowling efforts in this innings by the West Indians. We saw it from Atanas now. Carti had to run a long way. Long way to his left understanding that the ball will hang a little bit longer because of that easily blowing across the ground. But in combination, Carti and Joseph accounts for another Indian wicket. This time, Umran Malik goes without scoring. 167 for nine now.
He has to face up against Alzari Joseph. Oops. Two wickets in the over. It was interrupted by a rain break. Numran Malik knew what was coming. Just backed away. Given an almighty slog and an excellent catch from Casey Kati. This is testing for India's tail enders. First runs for Mukesh Kumar in international cricket. There's a smile on his face. He knows it's lucky runs, but India will take them. 171 for nine. Gurukesh Moti will continue. Kuldeep Yadav has company. Slip and a leg slip. And the three fielders inside the circle. Samuel Badri sums up the high standard of fielding we've seen from the West Indies today. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. We've seen Alec Athanas and now we've seen Casey Carty. Wonderful stuff. Because he played that shot, it would not be signal wide. Had he played the conventional sweep, it certainly would have. 171 for nine. Remember, Ronak, that in their bowl, the West Indies out for 114. I just wonder what they're thinking and what she Hope behind the stump is thinking based on what he's seen. That's a gift. And a gift that Kuldeep Yadav gladly accepts. These could end up being vital extra runs from the lower order. Kuldeep has four. And maybe perhaps Jaden Seals from that end for this over just to finish things off. As you mentioned, every run from here on end is important. Kulip against the left-hand orthodox might fancy his chances much more against, let's say, a Jaden Seals. It's going to be a single of the penultimate ball. And go back to that first ODI, Salmon. How easy it was for Kuldeep Yadav. He had lower order wickets or lower order batters against him, but four for six in virtually no time, just over three overs. And they have the extra spin option in Aksar Patel. So while it's a weakened batting 11, it's a stronger bowling 11. They could make a game of this. Mukesh Kumar has uh, two men in the slips. Survives the one ball that uh, Kuldeep Yadav gave him. 176 for nine. This could be the day for cricket fans in the Caribbean to see their home team register a win. Outplayed in the first test, significantly behind in the second. So too in the first ODI. And here on top for the moment. Azari Joseph now has... 25 wickets here at the Kensington Oval, the most by any bowler at this venue. 
He also has the most wickets at any venue by a West Indian bowler in the region. Previous best, 24 wickets by Kirtley Ambrose at the Queen's Park Oval. So he's produced consistently and regularly at this venue. Didn't play in the first ODI. She mentioned that it was a case of workload management. He's a, an all-format bowler, has been playing international cricket quite regularly this year. Also played in the IPL and plays in franchise leagues. So important that we continue to manage him well to ensure that he stays on the park as regularly as we can get him. So from that standpoint, it is quite understandable that he was rested in game one. Continues to show his worth. Just one of the few bowlers in the world who can generate that type of pace. Clock very close to 150 in an earlier spell. Gets bounce as well. So when you have an asset like this, it's so important that you look after it. Not very often that you get bowlers like these. Yeah, when he's on song... Boy, is it exciting. And he's going to change the angle to Kuldeep Yadav. Yeah, when it comes to workload management, you look at fixtures, you look at gaps between games, just the one in between the first and second ODI, slightly longer gap coming up. It's a sharp bit of work by a man under the helmet. Shimron Hetmeyer. Yeah, game today on Saturday, then the third ODI, we head back to Trinidad. That's on Tuesday. Then come the T20Is and Azari Joseph featured in both test matches. You can see the difference he's made today. They've enjoyed it. Watching India's batters hopping around. Wait, wait. A little bit a change of pace from Azari's slower ball. 140 that's recorded. How wonderful will it be Ronak, if we head to, to Trinidad from a West Indian standpoint, of course, with the series leveled, West Indies, of course, haven't won a one international against India since 2019 and haven't won a series since 2006. One international series, that is, these youngsters are certainly enjoying the action out in the middle. But let's see if the West Indies can keep this series alive. Going to have to re-bowl that because they're going to run through, but it'll have uh, Alzari Joseph face a ball because Gregory Brathwaite, upon uh, assistance from Maria Rasmus at square leg, has deemed that to be too high. So it's not a bad result for the West Indies. It gives Alzari one ball to try and wrap up this innings to Mukesh. Yeah, good call. Clearly too high. Mukesh Kumar, the two deliveries that he's faced of Alzari Joseph had no idea where the ball went. One flew away for four. Quite fortuitously. Still got a strike rate of 200 against him. <laughs> well, that's not bad. From Mukesh Kumar, over mid-off. He's going to help himself to two precious runs and also keeps Kuldeep Yadav on strike. 180 for nine. Yeah, what an image high above the Kensington Oval. Fondly referred to as the Mecca of cricket here in the Caribbean due to its rich history and legacy. We've come to see King Kohli. Not today, guys. Confirmation that we're into the final ten. He's up to continue with Gurakesh Moti. 
just might see a few shots from Kuli Piadav and that can present an opportunity. Mukesh is keen for the single against spin. Kuldeep Yadav didn't take off immediately, just looked up, see if uh, number 11 partner is happy to take strike. He was more than happy, he was halfway down. Yeah, two for 26 for Gurukesh Moti in game one, two for 36 at the moment in his final over. Confident looking stroke from Mukesh, mid on is inside the circle. In the last 10, extra man in. He's still got two slips. He's allowed five fielders outside the inner circle. At the moment, he only has three. I yeah, thought about it momentarily. Nice and slow from Moti. That was a good delivery. Had to reach for that one. And credit to Mukesh, he didn't go after it because of the pace of it. It might have been tempted. Catch it! That'll do. The end of India's innings. A third for Gurukesh Moti. As Mukesh Kumar is scored at cover. It's been an excellent performance with ball and in the field. Yeah, and they've done what they needed to do with the West Indies. They've bowled in their out inside 41 overs. Gurukesh Moti picking up his third. Another wonderful performance from him, leading edge. Shimon Maya completing the catch. And just looking to turn that one on the one side. Mukesh presenting an opportunity for Shimron Hetmeyer. But they'll be very happy with what they've done so far. They'll also be cognizant that the job isn't over. It's a challenging surface, and it will require a solid effort from the batters. But this man on screen, once again, a solid effort from him. Two wickets in game one, three in game two. Yeah, half the job done. After Shea Hope won the toss and India, the bold few selection calls. In the absence of Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli. The opening partnership was of 90, so they started well. But Sanju Samson at three, Akshar Patel at four did not work. The two players coming into the side. Low score for Hardik Pandya. Surakamari Yadav was looking good at 24, but dismissed it again to left arm spin. Nothing much after that. Bowling for the West Indies, Moti and Shepard, two men from Burbis and Guyana, picking up three apiece. Joseph, with his pace, picked up two. 25 wickets for him now here at the Kensington Oval. Jalen Seals and Yannick Carrier, now wicket apiece. So 181 all out. India, good day for the West Indies. Let's go over to Darren Ganga in the middle. Fine spell of bowling from Romario Shepard today. His best ODI figures, three for 37. Congratulations to you, Romario. What was significantly different about your bowling effort today that brought that success? Well, more intent, you know, basically I tried to run in hard and try to hit the pitch because you see when you hit the wicket, you get something out of it. So that was in my bowling plan today, especially, you know, to, to some of the Indian batsmen, you don't want to get too full to them. Yeah. At the end of the first power play, the West Indies didn't really pick up any wickets. Then wickets started to tumble. What accounted for such uh, a change in, in the nature of uh, the bowling outlook? Well, basically, when I came in, you know, I got a wicket and, you know, that set the tone there, you know, basically the guys started to, you know, push a bit and we started to squeeze them there and eventually we got another wicket and, you know, that put pressure back for them. Yeah, you came into the into the bowling lineup, you know, a little bit in that in that middle phase of the inning. Is that a phase that you prefer bowling as against probably opening with the, with the new ball or bowling in the debt? Well, basically, you know, I can fit any role. So basically, that is the role I have now. So I have to work with that. And, you know, the skip and the um, coach trusted me in that role. So I, I did well today, you know, so I thought, um, I'm happy. Same pitch used uh, as the last game. Did the nature of the pitch change at all in your estimation? 
Not, not really. If this one is a bit more consistent, you know, it's, it's less grass, so basically it's a bit slow. So it's playing slow, not, not that kind of um, popping bounce and stuff like that on the first game. Halfway stage uh, of this match, 181 the score set by India. Confident that the West Indies uh, got what it takes to, to win this one? Yeah, we got what it takes, but we know it's going to be challenging. So um, I have faith in our batsmen to go out there and, you know, chase that total down. Well done today again. All the very best. Thank you. Romario Shepard with his career best figures. That has resulted in India being dismissed for 181. That's what the West Indies need at just under four and over. Can they register their first win since India have arrived in their shores? It's time for us to take a short break. We'll be back with uh, Ian Bishop for some analysis on the other side. Back here at Kensington Oval in Barbados, India have been bowled out for 181. The top score, Ishan Kishan, with 55, his fifth half century in One Day Internationals. The leading wicket takers, Gurakesh Moti and Romario Shepard, the Burmese boys doing the damage here against India. A couple of wickets for Joseph, who is very fast and hostile. Alongside me as we welcome you back, the wind 
it's just died down a bit, still a little bit grey. I'm a little bit worried about rain coming later, but Shakira Selman is from here. She knows better than I do, and Darren Ganga alongside here. Uh, let me start with you. How pleased are you with the West Indies bowling? Oh, very happy. I think they were excellent all round, especially in the field. I think that set the tone for the bowlers, and the bowlers fed off of that energy, and that's how West Indies were able to get in to that position. Darren, they started taking wickets post that opening partnership. Um, what was significant about the way things tumbled? I think it's the manner in which they were able to enforce uh, when they picked up that first wicket, enforce themselves through wickets falling with the score in the 90s. Again, the exploitation of the conditions to me was something to, to look at and to admire. First with Moti, when he got the wicket of uh, Shubman Gill after they were well set, and then the support in the field to the bowlers, the extra bounce proving to be useful for the West Indian bowlers. Romario Shepard in particular, able to do so from round the wickets. And then the field placing, I think at times, could have been a little more robust, but sufficient enough to get wickets at regular intervals. And Yannick Carrier got into the act as well. Yeah, he was good. He bowled steady lanes and Sandro Sanson. Unfortunately, he was unable to make his mind quite early. But again, a good catch on the boundary there by Yannick Carrier. And here, Atanaz, he was brilliant at Bower Point, saved lots of runs and took some crucial catches. Yeah, I thought the changes in the bowling as well were, were quite spot on from uh, Shea Hope. So the aggression of Joseph at times and the catching, we'll come to that in a minute. But Casey Carty, a young man coming Catch in for it. his first game of the series, was very good. And then that was all she wrote for India's effort with the bat. Let's go back to that because you touched on it to absolutely start with and that energy, that vibe in the field. Yeah, you spoke about it when we were on air. That is something you can control, the effort that you put out, the attitude in the field. And I thought the effort started really good. Even there when Romario Shepard hit the stumps, even though it didn't result in a wicket, the other fielders just seemed to feed off of that. Yeah, seven different West Indian players uh, accounting for catches. That, to me, was tremendous. Two actually taking two catches. And that shows that energy you spoke about. It also shows that it is important to focus on that aspect of the game. It's not only about batting or bowling. And I think in recent times, the West Indians, they haven't been able to capitalize on opportunities to support bowlers. So today, with everything coming together, exploiting conditions, bowlers actually bowling and using it effectively, creating wicket-taking opportunities, and then the fielders doing the last part in securing full 10 wickets. Thank you very much for that insight, Darren Ganga and Shakira Selman. We will talk about youth and agility. We'll hear on the other side of this short break from one of the West Indies' young players. He's very good in the field. We'll hear about his journey and the role his grandfather played in his ascent after the break. Here's a little bit of what we can expect. I don't think a word can describe the relation with me and my grandfather. I, the love that I got for him is it, so surreal. Like I, you can't describe it. It's like a father to a son. I actually take him from an early age, from his parents, because a sight like this by, like he gets some of me in he, and I grew me from a tender age. We sit down and we draft out the old future.
My earliest moment in playing cricket was in Bormai scheme. Uh, when I heard chilling for dominate cricket in, so we had a little concrete ship strip. So I used to like bowl and call myself chilling for. But at that time, I didn't have the knowledge that he was an half spinner. I eventually turned into half spinner. But I used to bowl medium pace. But my grandfather he met, was the was the man behind me bowling spin. He told me, don't conserve your energy. Just stand up and spin the ball. I don't think a word could describe the relation with me and my grandfather. I, the love that I got for him is it, so surreal. Like, I, you can't describe it. It's like a father to a son. I actually take him from an old age, from his parents, because a sight like this by, like he gets some of me in he, and I grew me from a tender age. We sit down and we draft out the old future. He actually gave up his job to just train me in the backyard and that, that is something that I hold close to my heart, that he would quit his job to just make sure that I get maximum practice. So that is some things <laughs> words can't explain. Between me and you, I used to box. So boxers have to get movements. So I show him the boxing movements and the cricket movements are combined both. The only move, man, you put there one place. Huh? Your foot got to move, you got to move like you're playing. Can there one place and play? Some days it's be tough because when I don't get it right, it's be hard on me. You know, play bottom ball, you know, <laughs> he's arguing with me. So it's mostly like, it has be a, a tough session, but all in all, you just want to get it right because you know, you know you get the ability, you know you get the, the, the talent, you know. Later on in life, I understand why he was that hard on me. Now I'm telling you, this thing, if you take it, if you didn't take this thing, this is serious business. I could have taken my time and go do other things, but I make certain that I convert my time with him to see. Let me give you a little bit of, of, the, of the schedule. So 5 a.m., I, I ride and go to him, his workplace, security. I practice, five to seven. So when he get home, he send me to the market, get some vegetables. I come home, he show me what to do in terms of cooking, because he, he teach me how to cook, basically. So he could relax and don't got to do nothing, maybe just get the rest so afternoon he could practice me. So I cook for him, mainly eat. Uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, we practice again. Late in the night, I make his dinner, his tea or whatever, prepare his dinner, pack up his bag, he gone to work, I sleep, and go, go again in the morning. So it's an everyday routine. He used to find ways and means in me get him, you know, prepared. Because he always tell me, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So he always want me to be ready. <laughs> get him on board, eh? Back in the area, Anger is Avenue, Patrick, that I'm like I always mentioned, it's known for, for crime and you know, violence and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of negative gambling, you know, drinking. So his way was, you know, like get the kids in a ball field and let them play cricket. And, you know, they fall in love with him, fall in love with the game. And most of them represent Borbees, which is a county team. And I was the fortunate one to represent Guyana and West Indies. I missed out on the West Indies on the 16 when I was 16 years, 15 years old. I cried a lot because I had visa issues. And I was really grateful that I'm gonna be able to represent a West Indies B team, a team that, you know, wear the West Indies crest on the chest. We was the underdogs, but we were, we were a young bunch of guys, right? So we're gonna be more fast in the field, you know what I mean? So we feeling was outstanding. I think the feeling make we win that tournament because you don't run twos and threes against us. If anyone had told me that I would have played for West Indies at age 21, I want to believe. So when I called my grandfather, he was like, he was like happy, he was like, you know, this is it. You work hard for it, you know, this is your dream. So whenever you get the opportunity, go out and showcase yourself. The first person that really approached me was Bravo, because I think he was the, he was the guy that dealing with the bowling. So he was telling me about angles, you know, the conditions, even the skipper as well, you know. Tell, I was telling me, you're here for a reason, your grandfather worked hard with you, so you gotta believe that you have the ability. So now being able to play international cricket, I remember those moments and I, 
I look to, you know, be the best, you know. Le Bravo or Polar Cedar, you know, wherever they share with me, you know, it has been instrumental and it worked. You know, I've learned something from them, you know. I was shaking, I was nervous because um, I see Wicked start tumbling, Chris Gale went, Evan Lewis went. Oh. Might have gotten it. Is he going? Yes, he's going. It's a hat trick for Akila Dananjaya. So it was like, damn, they got into us here very quickly. No doubt about okay, that one. Okay, My captain Polari, he has uh, this more, this, this kind of, you know, mindset of him that he always back himself, he don't back down, so. He goes again. Three in three for the West Indies captain. Six sixes for Kyron Pollard. Herschel Gibbs, you Brad Singh, you have company. And a little bow to the waving gallery of his teammates for the West Indies captain. When he hit that six, 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 I was like, wow, damn. Cricket is a really funny game. Got it, pull up. Got him, grabbed it. A first T20 international wicket for Kevin Sinclair, who does his somersault, his trademark reaction. The battle was gonna tail the card left under. It was my eighth or ninth delivery in international quick time. I got my first wicket, pull out card to the shot mid wicket, and I did my, my trademark. You know, that was a special moment for me because I know back in Guyana, everybody tuned in because they love cricket. They know where I come from, a humble background, you know. And when I got my first wicket, you know, I know everybody was happy for me. I, I did that celebration because of my area. So when they watched me, they said, he used to do that in, in the bushes. He used to do that in the backlands. Bringing him here, you know, it, it didn't take anything out of me. I just want him close to me to, you know, enjoy my moment. So I say, whether I play it or play not, I'm going to bring him over and let you you know, let you engage with his grandson. He never traveled before, and I just called the Minister of Housing, and he was like, hey, I'm gonna share this joy with you, and I'm gonna make it happen. Don't worry, you focus on your cricket, go to your training. And he went down to the city of Jarstown, and in one day he had his passport. So that was really, really good, and that don't happen. It don't really happen, so I was really grateful for that. And I must say he had fun, man, he had a lot of fun, and he had more fans than me. <laughs> Now we're glad to have you here, and I'm glad you're supporting all these years when I was a child and troubles. I think you already talk so funny. Seriously. You speak so funny. I don't think anybody's happy than him right now, you know what I mean? Because he always say, don't tell me anything negative about my grandson. So it goes hand in hand because I always look out for him, he always look out for me. And like I said, I, I, I love him dearly and, you know, not for what he do for me, but what he, what he, do, what he does for others, you know what I mean? He has a, a pure heart, and like anybody could engage with him. And he is like me father, so I don't think I can eat, me can do, he against it. He know my favorite meal is duck curry, and I can't even want to eat duck curry. Yeah, definitely. I just want him to be around. You know, as long as possible. That's why I was told him, you know, he's have the curry, he's have the meat, you're too old, you know, focus on fruits, you know, eat healthier so he could live a longer life, so he could witness his grandson, you know, do the goods to the West Indies team. Me making West Indies team and he's alive, 875 is something that, that I really cherish. I want you to, to know that, you know, that I love him dearly and whatever work that you put out with me, you know, giving up his job, just want you to know that I, I'm really grateful for that and, and I will cherish him and I will let you enjoy whatever you have to enjoy as long as you live. You still got in further than where you presently. The world ain't see the best that they said to buy yet. It coming. <laughs>
Hello and welcome back to the Kensington Oval where the West Indies will be in pursuit of 182 to level the series. Yeah, final words of inspiration and perhaps advice from the Indian contingent led by Hardik Pandya today in the absence of Rohit Sharma. Lots of work for them to do in defense of 182. The batting wasn't particularly good on a challenging surface. Another challenging surface. The same one that we used a couple days ago that this team bowled the West Indies out for 114. So there will be some belief in there. Confirmation of the target, 182 to win. A full allotment of 50 overs. There has been some weather around. A few interruptions already during the day. Hopefully there isn't any more. It gives these guys an opportunity to chase this total down. Calmias once again at the top of the innings. Best of 120. Scored a century here not too long ago against New Zealand. Gave his wicket away, you would think, in the third over of the first game. And Brandon King scored two centuries recently. The one in the World Cup qualifiers and one against the UAE just prior to that. And he'll be looking to build on that in his fledgling one-day international career. As he did in the first ODI, Hardik Pandya is entrusted with the new ball. Well, he's entrusted himself with that responsibility, really, as he's the standing captain. We're just about ready for the chase. First ball. A good bounce and carry. Look at where Ishan Kishan took that away movement alongside me, Ian Bishop. Bishop, this isn't going to be an easy chase, is it? It'll have its challenges on a pitch that is offering assistance for the seamers. The rain, again, just seems to be sweeping across the hilltops here. So that's another thing, particularly the batting unit have to keep their eye on. Even the spinners are getting something. So only the third time Hardik Pandya is opening the bowling, bowling the first over, I should say, of an ODI. Brandon King, who really favors the offside, likes to stand beside the ball. There are two feelers and slip because he goes after those deliveries outside the line of the off stump. Also be concerned about the one that angles in because Hadik Pandya usually goes wide of the crease and scrambles the seam for the one to in-swing. Off the mark, the West Indies and Brandon King. What would we want to see from Carl right Mears today? We saw him trying to take the attack, perhaps a little bit too early in game one in the third over advancing down the track hitting it high on the bat and essentially gifting Hardik a wicket first extra of the innings how would you want to see Kyle Mears approach this innings today a number of things for this opening pier in general being able to even in the first ball play, ascertain where the gaps are in the field, run hard, be ready to run, and not just sit back waiting for boundaries. But it's a nice phase of ODIs where Mears has to understand the allotted role for him. Come back to it. Wow. Off the mark with authority. 
and that allotted role for Kyle Mears will be something around getting the team off or trying to get the team off to starts which will involve boundary scoring. I think the West Indies are very clear on what role they've wanted him to play at the top. Now he has to balance risk reward. When to go, when to pull the trigger. Yeah, that's the one that goes away from the left hand. Again, generating good pace and bounce. Hardik Pandya immediately adjusting his length. Across Kalmiers, who thought about playing at it, belatedly decided against it. Yeah, he too was surprised once again by the bounce. Misfield from Jadeja, very rare will you see that. Good start for West Indies, seven without loss. Mukesh Kumar will be opening the bowling from the Joel Ghana end. Started off from that end a couple of days ago with a maiden. It seems to have the ability to hit lines and lengths consistently. That will be another boundary to Carl Mears. This one down the leg side, ill lined, and starts off with a four. Yeah, Mukesh looking for that swing but getting too straight. Almost a loosener which he will look to correct with a better length and perhaps much better line now. And through the offside, flayed away by Carl Mears. He seems to be in a hurry. Down the leg side, through the offside. Three boundaries now for Mears. West Indies would have had discussions, and I'll stress it again. What is Carl Mears' rule at the top of the order? And if it is to be aggressive, what fans around the Caribbean have to be patient with as they try to reform the team is with risk sometimes can come the downfall so if you want him to be a high impact player at the top of the inning sometimes you have to be prepared for the odd injudicious shot Mentioned it in the test match. If he does play it and gets out, is he going to be chastised for it? Or are you going to say it's part and parcel of their development? One thing he has to, to be has to improve on is to trust when to leave the ball and how to defend it. A lot of teams are going to come hard, hard length at him. will get at least a couple does it have enough to still go all the way i don't think so Hardik pandya the man initially getting in the way of that one but a positive start really good intent shown from Carl Mears. when it comes off bish he is credited and applauded and as you're alluding to when it doesn't come off he's heavily criticized and condemned and I think there needs to be a certain level of, I suppose, leniency and latitude, given that this is the role that has been assigned to him. 
And given the way that the international game is played now, On the other side of the, the coin, someone like a Brandon King, he has the responsibility of batting deep and complimenting Kyle Mayers. If he gets off to a flyer, then Brandon King has, I suppose, the opportunity to bat time, bat a little bit longer. But these two are the ones to give this team that foundation. Excellent end to the over from Mukesh. Not a good start, but a good end. 18 without loss. Eighteen without loss and two overs, the West Indies. Ken taking that ball above his head, Ishan Kishan. Narek Pandya is quicker than most people think. It's a sort of length that we've seen, for example, KG Rabada bowl to Kyle Mears in recent years. Back a hard length sometimes using the short ball but getting the ball above waist high to him and then looking to follow it up occasionally with the one that is fuller yeah, that one just leveled off I've seen him get dismissed playing this shot a couple times recently Carl Mears. Perhaps expecting it to bounce a bit more than it did. And thudding into the midriff. Now that can be disconcerting. And quite uncomfortable for any batsman. This conbobulating. Yeah, they've strengthened that offside region. The first innings, we've seen some steep bounce from the West Indian quicks, Jaden Seals, Azari Joseph, and even Romario Shepard. Yeah, bobbing and weaving all sides, resulting in a wicket as well. So it's going to be challenging for the West Indian batters, of course, India. 45, their spin bowling department, including Aksa Patel. Just think that India, for them to win this game and take an unassailable 2 0 lead, they'll have to bowl the West Indies out. In the gap, we'll get a, at least a couple. A couple, of, a couple of points to be made quickly. When you're at third, deep third, on a pitch like this that is bouncing, it's not a resting position. It could be a catching position, and that's in the future. The other thing is the West Indies left-handed batters in the top order are going to be critical with Jadeja and Aksa Patel to operate in this attack. So they have to understand that that's another piece of role clarity that Hetmeyer and maybe Alec Afanaz, I'm not going down to Gurakesh Moti, Yannick Carrier in this. That was full of flair. Didn't result in any run. Outside the off stump, just raised that front leg, Carl Mears. Have a look at this from Mears. Outside the off stump. I just tried to get that one perhaps through that mid-wicket region. 
spoke to him before the start of play for the first ODI. He says that he really enjoys playing at home here at the Kensington Oval, as most players will when they play at home. <laughs> 19 for Mears, 1 to King. Run, run! 21 without loss. The engine room of this batting lineup, Shea Hope and Shimron Hetmeyer in the middle. Carty reinforces the batting depth. Good running. Very intrigued to see if India continue looking to bowl mostly straight, not exclusively, but mostly straight with the odd one, perhaps leaving Brandon King to take the outside edge and how he combats that today and over his career. Shadow Taku bowled a wonderful scramble seam that knocked back his middle peg. A lot of bowlers are going to try to replicate that, so he has to be able to combat that without losing his ability outside off stump, because they'll be looking to breach the outside edge as well. That's the line that you're talking about, isn't it? A nice straight line. A very deliberate effort to keep it on the stumps. Turning the face of the bat too early and the leading edge found. Just look at the gaps as well. You're looking to hit boundaries in the power play, but look at the gaps. Extra cover on the offside. Just backward of square onside. Yeah. So I throw out another area of improvement for Brandon King. Sometimes he stands very cool at the non-striker's end or after he struck the ball if it's not a boundary. He has to be urgent and always looking to run. That gap to the left of screen between cover and mid-off is an opportunity if it doesn't go for to get a single there or just to the right of mid-wicket. He's got to recognize that, okay, I, I had a, a decent enough qualifiers, for example, and a, a tour of the UAE, but this is a high level. Be urgent in your running. Don't just jog and amble. Follow your fielders. Back up with energy and run hard between the wickets. Just two runs from that Mukesh over, 23 without loss.
159 more needed for the West Indies. And the lights are on here at the Kensington Oval. It's a little bit dark at the moment. Mentioned that it's been cloudy throughout the day. Doesn't look too threatening towards the east. Weston is desperate for a win to keep the series alive. 20 overs, remember, will constitute a match. Yes, I mean, viewers are not coaching and, and just trying to work out how the batsman can be better. I'll tell you why. This is two balls ago. This jog here down to deep third. I, I know it's, it's a shorty single, but look, we were in the Netherlands not too long ago. And we saw, for example, a less talented Netherlands team running those hard, putting fielders under pressure and causing little misfields. So those little areas, I'd like to see them run harder. West Indies have done well today, exceptionally well with the ball and in the field. Absolutely beautiful. And every little thing here for me is a, an opportunity to learn and to be better. But I just want to say that batting is the harder of the two main skills in cricket. I think I could take a fast bowler, anybody off the street, and get them to bowl at their best. But batting is much more technically challenged. So any one percenter you can scrape out of it, please do. Batting is hard. Yeah, Hardik Pandya got Carl Mears out in that first one day international. It was only the third over off the innings, looking to give him the charge. Hitting high up on the bat and a simple catch for Rohit Sharma. Perhaps trying to take on the bowling too early on that occasion and not giving himself enough time to assess the conditions. He's gotten off to a flyer today, 20 from 18, with a few boundaries already. Played this shot a couple times without much success. At this time, it goes all the way for six, the first six of the innings. So his persistence eventually pays off. Clearly gone for six. From our end. And confirmed there. Didn't quite get high enough from Hardik Pandya. It was just maybe on the back edge of a good length. With a deep backward square in place now in case he wants to go short again. Goes full 30 without loss. Yeah, this is a really good start from the West Indies. Similar, India had an exceptional start. And he looks very good when he's driving, doesn't he, Brandon King? 
This is a six. Couple times in the over, he played a similar looking shot. Look at his eyes, look at where he's looking. He's not looking in the direction of the hit. Eyes on the ball until he makes contact and even after. Yeah, they're signaling. They knew immediately. Get them to umpire. Yeah, this will challenge the boundary as well. Fielder in pursuit. And he didn't go full tilt all the way. Held back because he thought it was going to the boundary. Slowed up significantly. And you just feel that if he was on full pedal all the way through, he could have stopped that. Anyway, it's a boundary for Brandon King. One of the dangers in trying to bowl straight as possible is sometimes you get too straight. So that's good for Brandon King to open up that onside. Uh, Mukesh will look to adjust more towards off stump. And that pull for six by Kyle Mears reminded me of a couple of people. Brand Charles Lara, of course, as a left-hander. With that right leg off the ground. And the first name on that stand, Cutbutt Gordon Greenwich. Right-hander. But often, Sir Gordon would take his left leg up and play the pull shot to rapturous applause around this Kensington Oval during his heyday. Huge shot from Mukesh. Murray Erasmus unmoved. And that one just nipped back in. There is a discussion. Hadik Pandey. Pandya is thinking about it. Yeah, it doesn't up for it. So now we can ask the umpire why it was not out. There's a smile. Nip back, beat the bat, the inside edge of the bat. No, actually, it did hit the inside edge. Good decision from Murray Rasmus. Good decision from Hardik Pandey as well, not to review. Felt as though he missed out there, Brandon King. Split second to decide whether to just stand and ride it into backward square and get one or two, or play the pull shot for the absolute maximum. That's okay. 197 back in 2000 is the lowest score successfully defended on this ground by Pakistan against the West Indies. West Indies have less than that to chase today, 182 to win. Very well bowled by Mukesh to end the over and 34 for four. Identical figures from the bowlers. Not often you see that. None for 17 from three. Both Hardik and Mukesh. Hardik continues. I'd be surprised if Kyle Mears faces a number of deliveries in this over if I don't see the shoulder high short ball. If. So far, the bounce we've seen is largely outside the off stump with no deep third, which is a dangerous delivery. The two deep fielders are a deep backward square and fine leg. So unless he's going to bluff at some point during the over, if Mears is on strike, we'll see that genuine short delivery. Just making an adjustment. 
in the field with that fielder at deep forward of square now. I just wonder if Calmiers will go after it if it is in fact a short delivery. Deep fine leg and deep forward square. Yeah, this sort of delivery, and again, everything is a work in progress. With that leg side feel, only one feeler saving a single at mid on. You want to get some bat on that to tuck it for one and get off strike and foil whatever plan Haddock is building up. Lots of open real estate saving one, but two deep fielders left of your screen. Just maybe sensing something about to give, and he has to keep his wits about him, Carl Mears. Uh, these youngsters are seeing themselves on the big screen. It's the July August vacation here in the Caribbean, most of the territories anyway. So these kids are off from school. An opportunity for them to come at this historic venue to look at the West Indies. And also to see some Indian stars, IPL stars. Yeah, and talking about stars, Umran Malik bowled a couple of us in the first game. And I think he'll be another interesting one, Rohit, not playing today. He'll be another interesting one on this pitch. I, I think India have to be very patient with this guy. 23 years old, he's hardly played a lot of cricket, first class or listy. But every over is a development block for him. And if he can bowl rapidly, aggressively, and hold his length in between. He'll be a great asset. I give him another year and a half, two years to really understand bowling. And I don't restrict him around Malik just to white ball cricket. I think that if he is willing, you can look at guys like Mark Wood and, and the kind of destruction that he is keeping in the ashes. O'Shane Thomas is one from the West Indies side. That pace, you cannot go down to the grocery store and purchase. When you have it, work with it, give it time, be patient with it, and don't let him pull back on the brakes. Let him learn through repetition. In the air, in the gap, another boundary for Carl Mears. Very flamboyant and West Indian like. 38 without loss. Last ball of the previous over. With the men set back, every West Indian fan will be looking at this and, and be pleased with the execution. On the other side, Harik Pandya did not get it as high as he wanted. It needs to be at least shoulder height. Uh, speaking of Umran Malik, he's introduced into the attack 13 wickets in 10 matches. Already that extra pace surprising Brandon King. He sometimes goes for a few runs because he's an attacking bowler. And runs in at full tilt. Not many to play with today for India. So it'll be interesting to see how they use him. How his spells are broken up if he concedes a few runs early on. Ideally, you want to have runs on the board to unleash someone like 
Umran Malik. And that one keeps Lou. Brandon King with just a smile. Nice and quick, match. Nice and quick, match. Yeah, and at that pace, he wants to be a little bit straighter at Brandon King. Because one bounce, the first one popped on him, and that one went underneath the bat. So he's probably wondering, what comes now? What position do I get into? They're very strong, very, very strong through the offside. And with that pace, any bat on it, it will fly away. Yeah, the, the, the downside to pace. Not too far away from backward point. I'm going to come back to his career as well, if nothing happens next ball, Umran Malik, just to give you a little glimpse. And again, wit and flayed away by Brandon King. That's bread and butter for him. Will not miss out on those types of delivery. Spoke about him being a little bit expensive, Umran Malik consecutive fours yeah he missed his run as well i don't know why he didn't stop great for brandon king it's meat and drink but umran malik definitely missed his run up at one point i thought he might stop but he definitely has to try to be tighter on the stumps a thousand runs for brandon king in odis Yeah, he's played nine ODIs, 80 20s, Umran Malik. Seven first class games, seven, 12 Liste games. He's played a few, quite a few T20s. So he really is only in the game for a minute. So when you see him bowl those loose deliveries, think about what he could be in a couple of years with, if given the chance to mature. Uh, the backward square being position, fine leg comes in an inner circle. Maybe something short. Just look at that from Brandon King. So graceful and elegant. 46 without loss. One thirty-six more required by the West Indies if they are to win this one. The second ODI match of the three-match series. Remember, India already with a lead, winning the first game. Bowling change, Shadul Thakur with the ball. Operating from the Malcolm Marshall end. There is that flick. Off the legs, brings up the 50 partnership, and again, style and flair from Carmez. Flamboyant once more from Calmiers, and that shot is a trademark of his. Every time it levels off, just raises that front leg and whips it off the hip behind square. This time it goes for. A six all the way, 66 meters behind square. Those kids are happy.
under pressure from the start of his uh, spell, Shadow Takur. Two sixes so far for Carl Mears to add to four fours in this innings. Catch him is the cry. Was their bat? Was their bat? Takur is celebrating. And India, they strike. They eventually find the breakthrough that they were searching for. And it's the danger man. His strength becoming his weakness. I was just thinking it's risky to go without that fine leg. Fine leg in the circle. And he tries to repeat that shot, which resulted in the sixth. The first ball of the over. But again, this man, Shardu Takur, with the golden arm. Kalmiris, a decent knock by him, but he goes for 36. India have a breakthrough. 53 for one. Atana's uh, new batter. Young man that has shown great promise. Had the chance to debut in the Test Series. The good innings. In the first match of this ODI Series, 22 from 18. Usually he works hard, he gets a start. Maybe a little more focus on him carrying his innings a little bit deeper. Slip and play, change in field, no deep backward square. Yeah. Off the mark immediately. Here's a look at that wicket again. This one perhaps bouncing a bit more. And Kalmir is unable to get further inside of the, the line of the ball. Just cramped a bit. Just manages to find sharp fine leg in Umran Malik. A good wicket for India. And good for Shardu Tucker again. That looked good, looked good. And umpire Gregory Brathwaite agrees. However, Brandon King goes straight away for the review. LBW. TV umpire to direct away the player review for LBW. On field decision is out. I've checked the front foot and it's a fair delivery. Front on spin vision, please. Okay, the ball is very close to the back. Can we um, confirm with Ultra Edge, please? It's very slow. Okay, yeah, just take that back one frame, please. Just want to make sure it's pad first. And through to the pad. Yeah, obviously, clearly pad first. So ball tracking when available, please. Original decision is out. Pitching outside off, impact in line, and hitting the wickets. So stay with your original decision of out, Greg. I'll let you know when you're on screen. Significantly in that confirmation, ball making contact with the pad first, clearly. And Brandon King, with his start of 15, has to depart. West Indies now 54 for two. Thank you. 
Skipper himself making his way out to the middle. Shea Hope. What a record. Fabulous in this format of the game. Over 50 with 15 centuries. Now carrying the responsibility of leading this West Indies ODI side. Looks quite relaxed. Last wicket to fall. Double strike by Takur. Another delivery that was seeming into the right-handed Brandon King. And a good decision by umpire Gregory Brathwaite, despite the review. So India now hunting. Good by Tucker. This is good. Once more, that was that scramble seam delivery, which hit and seemed back to Brandon King. It's exactly the delivery. Lots of bowlers will be looking to bowl to him because he stays next to the ball. So West Indies were off to a very good start, but losing both wickets on 54. No! Good call. Sent back, Atanas. Two dot deliveries first up for Shea Hope. Nine overs gone, 54 for two. Omran Malik will continue his spell from the Joel Ghana end. Atanazi's only faced one delivery. Will be cut off. So straight away, you can see a change in the lengths from India. Yep, they've sneaked through for two. That's great awareness from the skipper and Atanas. Exactly what you want to see when West Indies are batting. Initially, they think it's only two, but look at Shea Hope, he's pushing the whole time. And as soon as he realizes that Kuldeep Yadav has held the ball for a few seconds longer than he should have, he pushes for that third run. Speaks to his fitness, but also his awareness. Yeah, turning a two into a three. India, of course, will be trying to utilize the excessive bounce we've seen from this surface. More so with the new ball, Romario Shepard did a great job for the West Indies in the first innings of this match, getting his career best figures in one day internationals. Yeah, good piece. Really good piece. The bounce just leveling off. And if you followed Shea Hope and his career, you know that the extra bounce is something that has plagued him throughout his career. Yeah, that one was quick, but it did keep low. That variable bounce we were talking about 
across both games. Really well taken by Ishan Kishan behind the stumps. Wouldn't have been easy. Hey, he's in a no-nonsense mood. She Hope usually spends a little bit of time at the start of his innings to get himself in. In the West Indies Bowl, I spoke about the significance of reading the conditions and adjusting as a captain. Great to see that Hardik Pandya has invested in two fielders behind square offside. Although it's uh, a de defensive type field, it's also very attacking because we've seen, because of the bounce, a lot of shots played in that region in the air. Very good hand from Ishan Kishan, diving away to his left. The taste once more, that one. Beating she hope for taste, taking the inside edge. But look at that, acrobatic stop by Ishan Kishan. Full dive, full length dive to his left. Then he was able to turn and hit the stumps in one motion. Picked up. Whipped away, leg side. And it flies all the way for six. Don't often see this from Shea Hope. He's worked really hard on increasing that straight rate. He's been under some pressure in this game, but this one off his feet, and he's able to whip that one behind square. Back over to you, Umram Malik. Yeah, most teams in the world, they know that She Hope loves to get on the front foot, drive the ball, so short deliveries on show. Here's another one, shot off a good length. Well defended in the end. Ten of us gone, end of the first power play, 64 for two. Signal to start the second power play. Hardik Pandya bowled uh, four overs uh, with 21 runs from this uh, Malcolm Marshall end. Extracted significant bounce. Oh, wow. And he was followed by Shadul Thakur. And as a batter, you've got to recognize when there's a bowling change, what's coming at you. Takur has done is, of course, adjusted the length from this Malcolm Marshall end. He's going a little bit fuller. And if you're not aware as a batter, you might be inclined to hanging back, expecting that significant bounce. Even though that was just a warm run, you could hear she oh, oh, saying, push, push. It's good urgency, putting the fielders under pressure. It's not going to be easy as this game goes on. So they want to capitalize on every run they can get. Fielder on side comes over to the offside behind square again. The investment in two fielders in that region. Baron! Shikira Salman, himself being a bowler, 
you know, there are always opportunities for you to learn from preceding bowlers. And there again, recognizing what uh, the opening bowlers have done straight away, Takur, just making the adjustment and getting success straight away. Yeah, definitely. If you're bowling second, you can learn from what the opponents did when they first bowl. But also, if you're bowling first or second change, you can learn from what your teammate would have done. Shardul Tucker realizing that the batters were hanging back. He's gone a bit fuller. What a beauty. Just caught on the crease, Shea Hope, neither forward nor back. Luckily for him, it didn't find the outside edge. Again, that scramble scene delivery. They don't seem to do too much, but Shea Hope caught on the crease that you so rightly said. It's good to see him pitching up the ball, still overcast conditions. Remember, it's two new balls being used. So the ball can still swing around a bit for him. Yeah. Two runs from the over, 11 overs gone, 66 for two. An exciting power play with stroke play from these two, in particular, Carl Mayers. Playing his signature strokes that whip off the hips with one leg in the air. Then Brandon King cutting square, punching as well. Mayers eventually going for another flick off the hip. He departed. And straight after Brandon King was a judge LBW. It's a spin. Kulip Yadav with four wickets for just six runs in the first match. Being a real nemesis to the West Indians. There is a slip. Strong offside feel. Pulling from opposite end to what we saw in that first match. Choosing to start over the wicket. And he's trotting. Quite a bit of turn. His first delivery. Quite interesting that Hardit Pandia captain in this game has decided to use Kuldeep from the Joe Garner end and also to introduce him before Jadeja. I guess he recognizes the fact that uh, West Indies are inching closer and closer to that target score. They need a further 150 ah, to win. Him being the key figure in the first game, here he is straight away. Luckily for the West Indies, though, there is a left-hander at the crease and the right-hander to support. So that line, that field will have to be changed once the strike turns over. If he worked onside, the one thing we saw from Atanas in that test series was his ability to bat the likes of Ashwin, Jadeja with ease, no pressure. 
kept a calm head, was able to turn the strike over, not necessarily only use the big shots to score. combination there Shall we go point to leg slip no in back did it come off the bat or the pad we'll wait uh, vampire murray rasmus to signal and he signals four Inadvertent and very risky. A very full delivery. Shea Hope decides to go back. It takes the outside edge. And it's through the legs of Ishan Kishan. Nothing he could do there. But way too full to be sitting back. I don't think he could call that a chance. Smothers that one. Six runs from the over, 72 for two. In the mid 181, they were bowled out. Ishan Kishan was once more very good with the bat. Another half century to him. Go run. Shardu Tucker continuing from the Malcolm Marshall aim. Persisting with that fuller lane. Oh. Went for the pull shot. Ishan Kishan gets under it and takes the catch. So the surprise delivery on this occasion being the short ball, not going full. And Atenez in all trouble. Yeah, Ali Atenez caught completely off guard. Cross seam delivery. Surprising him. Getting way too high for him to be able to control that. And a good catch by Ishan Kishan. Tucker has his third. Atenez goes for just six. West Indies 72 for three. One left-hander replaces another. Shimran Hetmeyer wasn't very impactful with the bat in the first one-day international. 11 from 19, although he had a good partnership. The most significant one of the innings with his captain, Shea Hope. Pace and bounce once more proving to be effective for wicket taking. Shadul Takur, the bowler, just setting up young Atanas. Surprising him with that well directed bouncer. Yeah, it shows he's a thinking cricketer, a thinking bowler. It's gone full on a number of occasions, just bringing him forward and then surprising him with a short ball. 
Yorker first up on that wicket to wicket line. So good to watch his work as a fast bowler, shadow tacker. There is a process and a method towards his wicket taking. If there is perhaps one thing I think West Indies perhaps went wrong with was that bowling in terms of the length at the beginning, especially to Ishan Kishan. I think perhaps they could have done what Shardul Tucker has done here. Bring him forward, bring him forward, and then surprise him with the short ball. Straight away, went for that pull in front of square. I think he'll think he missed out on that one. He's looking to hit that one well in front of square. But this is a very important partnership for West Indies. There is some rebuilding to do. And no real pressure in terms of scoring rate. But someone has to stay with the captain. It's three runs and a wicket from that over. West Indies 75 for three after 13. Yadav, just one over from him so far. Westin is 75 for three. The most experienced pair out in the middle, Hetmeyer and Captain Hope. Yeah. Sherman Hetmeyer and Hope are very good against spin. They use the crease quite well. We look to rotate the strike. And such an important part of combating high quality spin. You knew what Kulip did in that first game, picking up four for six from just three overs, so his threat looms large. There's a silly mid on in position, along with a slip searching for wickets, hunting for wickets, Hardik Pandya. Almost very sharp and quick to that fielder. Hello, Ian Bishop. That would have had to stick. Because it went quickly. You'd have to be asking for a bit of luck as a short leg. What made me laugh was Harik Pandya falling over at mid-wicket at the sighting of a chance. Yeah, this went very quickly. It's Surya Kumar Yadav. 
could have easily held on. Well, not easily, but possibly. Yeah, he was smiling. Desperate for another wicket. Nicely, boy, nicely. It tells you how badly Hardik Padia wants another wicket. Just keep your eye left of screen behind Sky. Kanju <laughs> bhai, aa raha hai. Shardul bhai samne. Nicely, Suri bhai. Aaj to lag raha hai ekdam. West Indies got a good start, a good opening partnership of 53. India got 90 when they batted. And then wickets tumbled. West Indies lost the three quite quickly as well. So that trend continues into the second innings. Up to these two now. To buck that trend. Could be two. They're pushing hard. They run well, these two. Very good energy. I'll say it again, that has to become a part of the culture, but Hetmeyer and Shea Hope do it well historically. 81 for three. Eighty-one for three. Shadow Takur continues. Well, I like what he's done with the ball. Hey, he's very his length. Utilize the conditions and offer quite well. Yeah, what he's done with the short ball. He got a wicket with his second or third legal delivery. Second legal delivery. But these are the short balls that were bowled at Kyle Mayers. I want to come back to that. Just keep a snapshot of it. Yeah, if you go back to that ball tracking again. I was talking about getting the ball higher to Kyle Mayers, not letting him whip it off the hip. And that wicked ball from Shadul was the highest bouncing short ball. They finally got it up to shoulder height at Kyle Mayers. I think Shakira Selman had alluded that it bounced more. This is absolute proof that they need to get the ball shoulder height or higher to Kyle Mayers. Otherwise, he will play that pull shot with abandon. Very good early from Shadul Takur. And like every good fast bowler, he does not forget. His line to, to Brandon King was absolutely spot on. Almost a mirror image of how he dismissed him in the first ODI, except the ball didn't get past the pad this time. And he was hit for six prior to the dismissal of Carl Mears. Brandon King and... Gurukesh Moti in discussion. Yeah. One. And no chance of a second by that man, Ravindra Jadeja. Rocket arm and as quick as anything across the ground. Yeah, back in 
West Indian colors after some time in the series, Shimron Hetmaya. Didn't have the best outing in game one, an opportunity to see his team over the line and to square the series. Will be very familiar with the opposition bowlers having plied his trade in the IPL for a number of years, Shemron Admire. So you'll perhaps understand what they're trying to do against him. But this partnership, so crucial for the West Indian chances. That chain, that chain there. I've often wondered about that chain when he's batting, clicking against the helmet and the grill that can make a noise simultaneously as ball passes bat. I think it was what happened in the first game and they reviewed it. Now, oh, he ended up taking off the pendant, the bat off of the chain afterwards. Anyway, maybe he will send it off at the Blue Waters drinks break. Eighty-four for three, thirty-six to Carl Mears before he was dismissed. Hope and Hetmeyer at the crease. Three wickets to fall to Shadow Taco. The first Carl Mears caught simply by Omar Malik, and then Brandon King, second game in succession, being dismissed by Taco. Another short one accounting for Alec Athanas. West Indies lost three wickets in quick time after a good start. And confirmation of the bowling. Shadow Tapro, three for 16 from four overs. Five bowlers used so far. And the only one with success is Tapro. ICC World Cup in display. India, of course, will be host of the tournament in a couple months' time from now. And no doubt we'll be hoping to replicate their victory from 2011. We're, of course, being hosted here in beautiful Barbados, the aquamarine waters. So many activities on offer. Whether you like activities on the land and all of the culture and the tapestry of this beautiful island nation. Or if you like activities on the water. And the jet skis, the scuba diving, the white sand beaches, and also the undersea life and the creatures beneath can be quite romantic and also lots of activities for the entire family. If you get an opportunity, it's an idyllic part of the world to visit. Sunsets are breathtaking and something to behold. The gem of the Caribbean. Ravindra Jadeja picked up three wickets in game one. 
will be introduced into the attack from the Joel Ghana end. The end which he operated on a couple of days ago. Started off expensively. I think went for tens and over for his first two. Good stop by Shadow Takor. And again, I refer to the point about the left-handed batters. Hetmeyer critical to facing up against the left-arm finger spinners. The wrist spin of Cooley slightly different, but he fell to Jadeja in the first game. Yeah, no Ravman Powell today. And Casey Carty into the team. No rounders uh, to follow. Mario Shepard, it all. Padded up. Really wonderful opportunity here for the West Indies to get back in the series. Remember the last time they won a game. I won the international game against India was way back in 2019 when Shemron had by himself and scored a sensational century. And lost nine matches in succession since then. They were blunted 3 0 at home last year against this opposition. All three games being played at the Queen's Park Oval. Can they? Keep this series alive. Very good. Very, very good. Not saying it's a portent of things to come, but just the body of work of batting between these two in the past has been good. I think they average over 40 together as a pair. Eighty nine for three. Kulipa switched ends. It's good. At least for the moment, nice little gap finding. Yeah, the ICC World Cup trophy doing the wrongs. It's a turn of the West Indies to have a look at this beauty. Of course, the West Indies not hey. featuring in this edition. <laughs> but will be hosting the 2024 T20 World Cup starting on June 4th, <laughs> along with the United <laughs> States of America. But India, they are in <laughs> high preparation mode <laughs> for that home World Cup and looking to emulate the exploits of 2011 where they won at home. It's not only that it turned, you know, but the pace at which he bowled it and the quickness of the turn. Now really good. Good line, good length, everything about that. Good speed as well. A little bit of a conundrum, Hardik Pandya. In terms of the runs that are on the board, 
cannot afford to have ultra aggressive fields. Perhaps another catcher somewhere around to get the breakthrough, but he knows that it's only 92 needed. And though he wants to break the partnership, yeah! has to also balance that with not giving easy runs. Kuli, that last one seemed to have been the googly, really good with his ver varieties and his variation. Very skillful bowler. I wonder what Hattie looks at from whether he looks to read it off the pitch or whether he's looking at the variation in the hand position releasing the ball. Very good length, very good from Kuldeep Yadav. He'll play a significant part, I think, in that World Cup later this year. Might be the one that just came back in or just skidded on. I think Hetmeyer was looking for the one spinning away from him. He's a master craftsman now, Kuldeep Yadav in his career. Yeah, a little bit quicker you know, from Kuldeep Yadav. And targeting and honing in on that off stump, getting the breakthrough, the much needed breakthrough. The Shemron Hetmeyer once again feels on return. Not a significant impact. Goes for nine. West Indies, 91 for four. Good work from Kuldeep Yadav, Casey Carty in for his first game of this series. He'll have a tough time if he has to face up to Kuldeep in this form. That he's at a non-striker's end at the moment. Yeah, Googly from Kuldeep Yadav, maybe not picking, you were just asking Bish whether he picks from the hand or from the surface. It was a little bit flutter, didn't allow him enough time to make any adjustment. Yes, baby, yes, baby. But that's on, what the wrist spinners do. They bring you back in the contest. And that's why he's in this team, Kuldeep Yadav. Attacking wicket taking bowlers. No, no, no. She has been playing Ravindra Jadeja, who bowls a lot quicker, predominantly from the back foot. Let's look at him. He didn't pick that one. Yeah. Hi, 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 hi. Casey Carty, of course, made that. 87 against Sri Lanka at the back end, the very back end of the West Indies journey in the qualifiers. This is going to be tough with another slip going in though and the ball gripping from that end and bouncing.
that was 99 kph good pace and turn let's look at the revs on that ball really puts a lot of energy two feelers lurking next to the wicket keeper and take some catching Ninety two for four. As close as West Indians will get to it for the next World Cup. But we had a hand on it, a good two hands on it in 75 and 79. Good use of the crease. Yeah, I want to go back to Shadul Taco. He's used the short ball beautifully, but he hasn't also forgotten Brandon King. The analysts would have done a lot of work coming into the series on the left of screen, the first ODI, and then on the right of screen. And that's why I wondered whether Brandon King is aware of what's coming at him and how he can counter it. Because this is around the world, and since the qualifiers, people have been talking and studying ways to counter him. So he has some work to do. Brilliant from Shadow Takur, though with his short ball bowling, and then with his memory of Brandon King's weakness. A lot of friends around Casey Carty. Yeah, they've gone a little bit quiet at the moment, the young kids, the supporting the, the home team, the West Indies team. Okay. Those young kids have to look at the variation, look closely by television if you're at home. Look at the, when the googly comes as compared to the one that spins from off to leg. He's known for a very slow start, Casey Carty. Something that in his young career has been discussed. His strike rate, just three feelers out in the deep. Although four are allowed. Off the mark, pleasant strike. Yeah, how wonderful it would be for someone like a Casey Carty if he can remain there to the very end with perhaps a 40 or 50 not out. And give him that level of confidence from a West Indian standpoint. I suppose that's what everyone will be hoping for. And they're looking for another, searching for another. Oh. 94 for four. Very keen observers, West Indies need another 88. And this is going to be tough. Very tough again. That 88 is going to take a lot of work from all and sundry, perhaps. 
from the batting team anyway. And you've got to give Carty a consistent run and even if it doesn't go as well immediately because later on in the year you've got England coming here so the West Indies home series 2023 for Caribbean fans Caribbean is used Mastercard visit windyscricket.com to get details of a 20% discount on any Windies home match nice again I have to just say that this is the type of activity and running that I want to see from ball one, not when the team is under pressure. And I'm looking at Carl Mears and Brandon King and saying, in addition to your boundary hitting, this is what you need. And every time you get an opportunity to score, you have to take it. Not too often will you get loose deliveries from Jadeja or scoring opportunities that last one short and angled down the leg side and Kati did well just to nudge it around the corner and she hope has been doing it well as well Never. just nudging nudging it around those fielders are creeping in that much closer and presents an opportunity then to just hit it past them with a little more force and look for Twos and potentially threes. Come on. Dot to end. 20 gone, 97 for four. Akshar Patel for the first time. Replaces uh, Kuldeep Yadav. So Akshar and Jadeja bowling in tandem. suggested it was probably sliding down that's what Aksar feels as well it's gripping and turning for Jadeja from the other end so finger spinners are asking a different category of questions to the 21st over we've got a game constituted West Indies are in front will they stay there Shakira Salman you will certainly hope to stay there This partnership will perhaps be the most crucial one. Should we have the full photo of overs? That is as quick a maiden as you'll ever see. 97 for four. Two key numbers, 85 for the West Indies, six wickets for India. Don't think we need to worry about the overs. One way or the other, this game isn't going to the final few overs. Opportunity for an overthrow and they'll take it. Jadeja is uh, not pleased with Umran Malik, who just looped that in. He went on the half volley to the stumps and ricochet allowed for an extra runs. Jadeja immediately expressing his displeasure at what was a 
just a misjudged loop. Hundred comes up for the West Indies. Hundred for four at the same stage, India. Hundred and three for three. This was around the time that India really collapsed. It's really important that West Indies doesn't make the same mistake. It's been hard work for Casey Kati. 17 balls for his three. A number of those of Jadeja that uh, he had no chance of getting bad on. Nicely, nicely, boy. It does seem like he's growing in confidence. Yeah, it can't be easy starting against a bowler who's extracting so much turn and bowling so quickly. By quickly you meant pace or just the duration of the over? Yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Call is for two. Yeah. And it's a fielder they're keen to take on, Shardul Thakur. It's good running. Six of the over, 103 for four. West Indies 103 for four. And, uh, 14 over the DLS pass scores. Akshar Patel will ready for his second over. Floodlights are on at the Kensington Oval. What's been a gloomy overcast day by and large. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's another good run. Remember, this is a day game. Start at half past nine in the morning, floodlights are on. It's got the feel of a day nighter. Yeah. We don't want the weather to play an active part any more than it already has, but we do get more rain. It's a key period of play, this. West Indies lose one wicket, the game turns the other way. It's India in front with the five wickets down in the DLS pass. So, important phase of play. Boy. Boy, and I'm Did sure Captain Sheho will be well aware of that. So, no unnecessary risk need to be taken now. Perhaps Casey Carty is the first perfect foil for a situation as such. He will take his time in constructing his innings. Kisko, bada boundary dije. Theek hai, idhar se. But idhar wala, idhar se ball dalne pe turn ho raha hai. Idhar se. It's got all the makings of a low-scoring thriller, this game. If a wicket falls now, DLS pass scores are level. Yeah. Let's ignore all that for the time being. Because uh, Shea Hope and Casey Kari are negotiating the spin, 107 for four.
does look like the weather will just about hold for us to get a result. Shakira Salman knows these parts of the world better. You're the local, come on. Are we going to get more rain? A local, but not a weather expert. <laughs> I think we should be fine. I'm sure everyone around this ground will be hoping we can complete the game without the LS coming into play. Or oh, Malik back with his third over from the Joe Garner in. Went for 18 in his first spell of two overs. Hardik Pandya chopping and changing his bowlers, hoping for a breakthrough. Yeah, Brandon King took a liking to him in the opening over. Shea Hope then just picked one up for six. We did see assistance for Jaden Seals and Alzari Joseph. If he gets it right, he can be a threat home run. You usually have a very fine, fine leg for Umran. But uh, that leg from Aksar Patel is not good enough. So that's another boundary. Again, with this pace, sometimes it can be that much easier to score. Just getting it a bit too straight there. But perhaps a better effort needed on the fine leg boundary by Aksar Patel. Boundary taken by Shea Ho. It's a good field, uh, Akshar Patel. I'm surprised he didn't put the dive in. A bit of width. There is a sweeper on the offside. You know, I'm always so surprised when I see lapses in the field by an Indian side. We saw a misfield by Jadeja earlier on in the innings, an overthrow by Uran Malik. And now that effort or lack of effort by Atsar Patel, it's not something common with Indian sides. They're normally very good in the field. Yeah, and I think it seems like one of those days where the West Indies have outfielded India. They set a very high standard. That man, Casey Kati in particular. Good in the outfield. Excellent catch to dismiss Umran Malik. India, of course, without Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli today. It's not been an easy day in the office for Hardik Pandya. It's one of the most expensive players in the world to carry the drinks in the history of cricket. Certainly most high profile. And I'll tell you what, lots of fans who showed up here today, even though they would want to see West Indies win, I guarantee you they showed up to see this man here on screen, Virat Kohli batting. No guarantees he'll be back in the Caribbean anytime soon. Somebody is bullying you, Zvendra Chahel, at the moment. Oh. Culprit is revealed to be Rohit. Poor Yuzi. They've quietly helped themselves to 5-6 and over in the last few. It's not a big score, so even mini partnership 30-40 will do just fine. That's clever. And it's a misfield from Shardul, just the point that uh, Shakira Salman was making. India's fielding. It's been a bit shabby today. 1 1 6 for 4.
66. Doesn't seem like a big number, but this is a team that hasn't had a win since India have been here. Low on confidence. Balls turning and Kuldeep Yadav's reintroduced. So just a couple of overs for Akshar Patel from the Malcolm Marshall end. And Kuldeep is back from the end where he got the wicket of Shimron Hetmeyer. No. That was close. She just has to be careful going back to those fuller deliveries. He seems intent on playing Cody off the back foot. Especially with the ball turning back into him. Just hoping to open up that square leg area. Kuldeep. <laughs> Ishan Kishan is in love with this bowling. And this is where Kuldeep just getting that tad bit quicker has made all the difference, Shakira. So much more of a threat now when a batter misjudges the length. It's made the slower one more potent as well. Deception. That's what Ishan Kishan has just said there. That he's just about surviving. He's going back when he should be playing forward and he's just about surviving. So far, it looks as though he's right. Sheho, not very decisive or sure about his footwork facing Kuldeep. Spanish to get all straight. Again, going back. Just turning that one in front of square. So the operating in some very short spells. Start with a two over spell from the Joel Garner in. Then a two over spell from this Malcolm Marshall in. So hard it perhaps not wanting the batters to get too comfortable. Change of angle, change of tactics, extra man at slip. And Kuldeep coming left arm around the wicket to Kati. Final ball of the over. And he tosses it wide outside off stump, coming in. That is a beauty. That is a beauty from Kuldeep. But Kati survives. 1-1-7 one, one, for four. Absolute beauty. Last ball of uh, the previous over. I think one uh, box that India can firmly take win or lose in this game of the series is Kuldeep Yadav solidifying his place as. The premier wrist spinner, we saw use Vendra Chahil the bench a little while back. Chahil will be the premier T20 spinner and Ravindra Jadeja now back. It's been that kind of afternoon with spin, oohs and ahs, batters not sure. There has been a lot of discussion as to who will be the premier or spinner in this Indian team for that 50 over World Cup. So the Adav has used every opportunity. Perhaps making it easier for the selectors. It's 
Slipping a gully for Chadeja as well now. Shubman Gill and Surya Kumar Yadav. He's made a change in his field shot. Fine leg has gone to short mid wicket. Now, Kishan has uh, gone up in appeal to square leg. Umpire Brathwaite is not even going to send it upstairs. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at this. It's the kind of keeping that uh, triggers some serious debate. And to be fair, there was a moment where he lifted it, but it did not match with the timing of... Uh, Kishan disturbing the bales. I've seen TV on-field umpires go up for that more often than not. Well, it looks like there's been a belated request from the fielders to the umpires. But there is uh, there's nothing, or there's no reason to really watch that again once the ball was presumed dead. It did come up on the screen and they saw it then. It is the correct decision, so don't know the fuss is about. The players have obviously seen this on the big screen and thought it's worth another look. He may much ado about nothing. Gregory Brathwaite got that right. Ardit Pandya still not happy. He's pushing for two here. He's comfortable too. This is it blown up. You can clearly see Kia Security's foot is still on the ground when the bill is dislodged. So good decision by Gregory Brathwaite. That's an excellent shot. Work to do in the deep for the fielders. He's going to help himself to another two. Casey Kati makes it five of the over, 122 for four. Sixty for the West Indies to level this three-match series. Ishan Kishan is uh, still deliberating with umpire Erasmus. Now, if we this is the point where Kishan has dislodged the bales and Kati's foot is on the ground. Just a second later, at that point, had Kishan waited just a little longer and then got the bales off, Kadi would have been in trouble. Only one wicket. That's also the batsman who's on strike, boys. It's a brave on-field call from Gregory Brathwaite. So, well done to him. Yes. Plenty of turn again on offer. This time, it's going to lead to runs. Partnership now 33 of 55, crucial to the hopes of the West Indies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looks like there's going to be a change of field again. Shaman Gill going back to leg slip. 
So that deep backwards clear is coming around to his left a bit more. He deserves more than a wicket, Kuldeep. Bowling well, boy. Shai Hope is a good player of spin. Beating them all ends up. Continues to cause problems on both edges of the bar. First delivery caught the inside edge. For that reason. See, slip and leg slip now. Yeah, I think this is a better field. I think it was... Uh, Bit of a gamble to leave out the conventional slip. Telling you guys, just one wicket. We'll get them out under 150, boys. No need to elaborate on what Kishan just said. Straightforward analysis. One wicket and Kishan thinks it's going to be six for 25. Kishan Kishan having a lot to say behind the stumps. Kudi Yadav went back around the wicket to Casey Kirti. Still a conventional slip and leg slip. Ah, good thinking. This time, Kati deals with it a lot better. One, two, six for four. Fifty six runs away from registering a comeback in this uh, three match series, the West Indies. More importantly for them, their captain's still there. KC Kati is doing well. Difficult conditions to put a price on his wicket, just hang around. Brave leave, brave leave or not. He has to be careful. Jadeja does bowl that arm ball sometimes. Yeah, bye. Baba, it's not like Dima Dalona could carry out. It's really important Dima not like Casey Carty. It's good running again. And not best fielding. Oh, boy, struggling every ball here. Again, at Sarfa Tell. It's normally better in the field. Thought oh, perhaps he could have gone down to that boy. one a bit quicker instead of escorting it. Ah, first one, first Very one. Very well played. Again, like I was saying, a really important knock and opportunity for Casey Kirti. Didn't play that first ODI. He's in the team replacing vice captain Rothman Powell. It's an opportunity to show what he can do. And I'm sure he will be in the plans for West Indies as they look forward yep. to that 2027 ODI World Cup. Huh? Yeah, and the fact that he's been ready to fight it out against the turning ball. Okay. Criticism of Rothman Powell even in the IPL. Terrific ball striker, but against good quality spin, difficult surfaces. Has he become extremely vulnerable? And Kati, young man, it's just showed it may not be easy. Different match situation though. Knows that uh, it's not a big run chase. It's been impressive. Four of that over, and that'll do nicely for the West Indies. 130 for four.
Kuldeep Yadav will continue. Looks so threatening with the ball. The left arm wrist spinner. To the credit of these two out in the middle, they've done impressively well. The ability to rotate strike. Quite refreshing to see as a West Indian. It's not about bang, bang, only boundaries. Being able to manipulate the field use each other's strengths to blossom in this partnership yes. with 40 so far. Hat -trick, hat -trick. Samuel Badri alongside me. Now a little more pressure on ah. Carti. Deep backwards yes. square comes into the 30-yard circle. Yeah, inside out, deliberate from Casey Carti. Will result in an additional two, thinking momentarily about the third, not on. Yeah, but he would have picked this delivery from Kuldeep Yadav, and you can see it was quite a deliberate shot over the top. No protection out there. So good batting from Carti. Yeah, given the state of the game, it's about low wrist boys. cricket and shots low a risk ah, as okay. possible to get these runs don't let wicket, India one get one back wicket, into the contest at this stage West Indies and on top okay. 24 singles so far for she hope out of his 44 runs accumulated what? make that 25 no fault of Aha, Hardik Pandya, the standing <laughs> captain. Miracle, miracle. Yeah, they're still enjoying the contest out in the middle. You can hear from the chirping from behind. You can see the smile on Hardik's face. A bad bounce just in front of him. Not much he can do with that. Right, right, 47 right, needed right. for the West Indies. A wicket for India will bring them back in this match. A change in the angle, bowling wrong the wicket now. Kuldeep. Another impressive thing about this partnership, they've not swept the ball. They've played primarily with vertical bats. You spoke about managing risk. That's one way of uh, going about achieving that. One thirty-five for four. Crowd swelling nicely on this uh, Saturday evening here at the Kensington Oval in Barbados. Majority of the crowd, kids, young aspiring cricketers. And the Prime Minister of Barbados, the Honorable Mia Motley, has a lot to do with these kids being here. Ensuring that 500 tickets were made available to them to come and look at the West Indies play. And so kudos to her and for that. The reintroduction of Shadul Takuru, three wickets in his first spell. Changes ends, now operating from the Joel Ghana end. Nice little crowd in Saturday here in Bridgetown. Series on the line for the West Indies, a win to stay alive. Yeah, the three wickets that he's taken so far. The first, that of Carl Mears. 
more bounce than the others were able to extract. And again, the second time in consecutive matches, getting the wicket off Brandon King. And Alec Arton has another short delivery accounting for him. Seems to have that uncanny ability to pick wickets for India, or for any team he plays for, rather. Yep. India will, no doubt, be desperate for him to get another here. Exploiting the deficiencies of the opposition batters. That's high priority for him. The supportive thing about that is the skill set that he also has as a bowler. Good control, good aggression. Where is that aggression? So he can manage his lengths properly depending on what he wants to achieve as a fast bowler. That first spell, very, very impressive. Three wickets for 16 runs and just four overs. Especially when the West Indians had a good start of 53. single they were thinking about two runs well speaking about that spell remember he followed the opening spell from Hardik Pandya his captain and this is what I mean when I talk about his control of his lengths and exploiting the deficiencies of the opposition batters operating across the range short on a good length full as well so you can't predict what he's throwing at you and in three different lengths, he's picked up wickets. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Unfortunate for Shea Hope. And you can see his reaction almost hit too straight. Ricochets and goes straight to the field at mid on. And certainly would, would have been a few runs. Instead, it results in a dot ball. Went full, just trying to get She Hope maybe playing across the line, not having his feet, hands, head in position, but She Hope well set on 46, was better able to cope. Appeal down the leg side, Shalul Takro, Ishan Kishan, umpire Murray, Erasmus on move, there will be a discussion. Jadeja is raising his hand as if to indicate it's out, but this is the man who has the decision to make, and he makes it over to the third umpire. Yeah, copy that. Um, player review copy on not out. Yeah. TV umpire to director. We have a player review for court behind. On field decision is not out. Check the front foot and it's fair delivery. Front on spin vision, please. Okay, can we have a look at Ultra Edge when available, please? Just building Ultra Edge Mirror. Yeah, keep going through, please. Yeah, keep going through all the way past the back of the glove. Yeah, flat line, keep going all the way through. Thank you. Okay, no batter or glove involved. So I'll stay with your original decision of not out, Murray. Let you know when you're on screen. Yeah, decision upheld. Not out, it remains. And a smile from the captain. 137 for four.
Yeah, target of 182. My scene is 137 for four. This is Casey Carty. Miles out of his crease. Had Shadow Thakur gotten something on it. We saw a dismissal in the first ODI. Had it Pandya. And I think it was run out like that. And a carrier grasped an opportunity and it ricocheted onto the stump. Fortunately for him and the West Indies, there was no contact. Ball watching a bit. Casey Carty, she who was already on to him to complete the single. What the West Indies wouldn't want is a miscommunication to account for a wicket and to break this partnership, which is approaching 50. It's an ideal example for the other West Indian batters to follow in ODI cricket. Not only about hitting boundaries, I think the expectation as a team has to be a lower one for the West Indies to find a baseline, to get consistency in their game. More so consistency from a batting point of view. Just one boundary in this partnership of 48. Haven't seen too many deliveries bowl to one batter. So that rotation of strike ever present. And 28 singles in this partnership of 48. More than 50% of the runs. They're growing in confidence. The longer he stays out in the middle, Casey Carty, the easier it becomes. I wonder if there's an opportunity for young Casey Carty to bat at number three and allow for Alec Atanas to take a little more time to get himself into international cricket. Number three is so pivotal in one day cricket. You expect that top four will take the burden of responsibility to score runs consistently in this format. Yours, yours. I'm not saying that he lacks the talent, but just allow him time to find his feet in international cricket. So far, what I've seen from Casey Carty is a complete batter, someone who understands the situation, who's batting well alongside his captain, and his game is suited for that number three position. Quite good in defense. Fifty partnership between these two continues to blossom. 141 for four. Once again, Shea Hope, the captain, part of a major partnership, most significant one, or second highest. 53 is what uh, Brandon King and Kyle Mayers put on for the first wicket. But he'll want this to be the match-winning partnership. <laughs> 50 of 84 deliveries, exactly what the West Indies required. Not a very hefty target that they are chasing. They look quite relaxed at the moment. Romario Shepard, center of screen, padded up. And to right of screen, Yannick Carrier. But these two out in the middle will want to take their team over the line. On the cusp of another half century in one day internationals, she hope. A very familiar with the conditions here. We've spoken a lot about the pitch 
that has been presented for this series came into this series with an average first inning score of 236 in 10 matches previously that will significantly reduce wide down the leg side brings the total down required to 39 Yeah, very good to see She Hope so fluent in white ball cricket as we've seen previously. Invested a fair amount of time playing T20 cricket to shift the equilibrium of his game in that direction. Remember him playing in the Pakistan Super League. Also played for Yorkshire. And invested some time in the Bangladesh Premier League. So outside of international cricket, showing that commitment to continue the development of his game despite him being probably what the most decorated ODI batter in this squad of players speaks so much about the infrastructure that supports his development as a player when he's in that uh, county championship setup with Yorkshire having all amenities to further his game What a shot, powerfully drilled down the ground from Casey Carty. That was authoritative and ferocious. And a statement of uh, some form. Whilst they haven't really dominated this partnership with boundaries, they've been in full control, both Casey Carty and his captain. Just pressing the advantage now, maybe. Yeah, picked that knuckleball quite early, Casey Carty. And a really good strike. Takes his time to get going. But just a glimpse of what he can do. Really like the tempo at which he played and paced this particular innings. She hope was almost ducking for cover. Just uh, asking that question using his body language. Whether that was a wide due to the height at which it passed him. Cross Seema. As we said before, Shadur Thakur doesn't rely on bowling in a cluster to get wickets. He's always trying something. Good single. Really good from these two has been the hallmark of the partnership, the way they've communicated and responded. 148 for four, and it's time for the Blue Waters drinks break.
148 for four. The West Indies, 34 more needed. Overs to spare, not an issue. Shadul Takur with three for 25 has been the outstanding bowler so far. Kuldeep Yadav with one for 30. West Indies well ahead at this moment on the DLS method should rain come in. Very, very good from Casey Carty and from Shea Hope. Ironically, Rothman Powell is out there who played in the first game instead of Casey Carty. And to me, that was bewildering. And I said it on air, I'm not apologizing for that. After 87 against Sri Lanka, where he looked so good. Uh, give him a run. Right, Shakira Selman is uh, alongside me, and the West Indies have just announced some exciting news about the Women's Academy Shakira High Performance Camp squad. How pleasing is that for you? Yeah, it's very exciting news for young girls and all involved in women's cricket to see West Indies, Cricket West Indies, making an, a major investment into the women's game and particularly into the development of young players across the region towards developing and honing skills. Most of those players would have been involved in that inaugural on the 19 Women's World Cup held in South Africa earlier this year. Some two have been in and around the West Indies setup for a few years. So now they get the chance to work alongside some brilliant coaches around the region. Steve Leibert, I think he is supposed to be the head coach for that academy. They try to develop a team and prepare those girls to get into the senior team for West Indies and hopefully turn West Indies fortunes around. Great initiative, which will take time. Hardik Pandya is back. 34 to get. So still work to do. It's not a foregone conclusion. What West Indian fans packed in to the little sections of the stadium and those viewing by television who want to see Casey Carty finish off the job, if, po if possible. Yeah. So far, Casey Carty has used this opportunity quite well. Lots of us were asking why he was left out in the first place after that 87 in that last game at qualifiers. We're not saying that Rothman Powell is not capable, but Casey Carty obviously earned this call up. That's a half century for Shea Hope. Excellent running again, which has been one of the hallmarks of this partnership. 150 comes up two for the West Indies. But really making the number four position and taking ownership of it. Leading by example with the bat continuously, Shea Hope. Shea Hope continues to grow as a leader and continues to dominate in 50 over cricket. He will want to see his team over the lane. He knows the job is not finished. No! Fifth 50 plus score in 2023 in ODIs. 13 matches. In fact, there are those who have whispered softly, think that he needs to be back in the red ball setup, perhaps batting 
lower down the order, but closing in on 5,000 ODI runs. Yeah, I talked about the running between the wickets, Shiki ran. Look, we've been talking about it for years, but the start of each game, and I mentioned Brandon King, who I'd like to see in particular, but not exclusively, along with Carl Mears. Only two boundaries in this partnership of 61, right? We'll come back to that. Turn them around, but this is a look at this. I mentioned ball is going to deep third and jogging one earlier. But look at this this is Casey Carty and Shea Hope. It could easily be one. Shea Hope is jogging, but Casey Carty is second. desperate to get a second. He actually forced the misfield because it, it went fairly straight to the fielder at deep third. And that's the energy, that's the vibe that must become a cultural thing in men's and women's cricket in the Caribbean. Completely agree, Vish. And as a fielder, I know it becomes much more, much more challenging. Oh, yeah! Much more challenging when batters are pushing you. Dot to end the over. Four from that over. West Indies, 152 for four. to get whatever the result the West Indies bowl magnificently and I, I would think about 85% of their fielding was outstanding Shadow Taku yep. you know we like to show when technical mistakes are made I think when you do things right it's worth showing again so down to deep third he covers it, Shadow Taco, but he misfeels because the guys, Katie, Casey Carty in particular, is right. You see Shea Hope applauding him there. That's the energy. And I hope the guys in the balcony are watching those around the Caribbean. More of it, please. Yeah, it's happened to me as a fielder. As soon as I hear two, 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 all of a sudden I'm under pressure. So really good by KC security in particular on that occasion, but good by these two throughout this partnership. And we've seen it constantly with Shea Hope. And again, that's because of how hard he works on his fitness. It's gone on to 53 and he's still pushing hard. Look, he's calling two again. As soon as he hit it, he says two. I like that, Shakira, because I want to I wanna go back to something that Virat Kohli said when he spoke to Darren Ganga in Trinidad. I think it was Trinidad. He said, my fitness allows me to do things like hitting boundaries, but also running hard because he's not a big boundary hitter in the way that some of us are. And you have to be fit. And he's amongst the fittest. So if I were in that West Indies balcony there right now, or young guys, Kevin Wickham and those guys sitting there and around the region, I'm saying, how can I be the fittest cricketer in the region or across the game? How can I make that my baseline and then branch out my skills from there? I may not be able to outskill Virat Kohli or bowl as fast as Mark Wood, but I'll be the fittest cricketer around the place and give myself an edge.
Nice glance. This young man has talent. And when he's had good form as he showed against Sri Lanka, you want to give him that run and confidence. And he continues to grow in that confidence. It looks much slim, simpler now. Obviously, Tucker drifting, getting that one a bit too straight. But he's able to capitalize every time he's been given the opportunity. He moves on to 35. Finish the job we always said in the dressing room. Don't leave it for anyone else. Good marriage of defense and attack. One five nine for four. Pandya. Yeah. She a hook. Did hit a six off on one mallet early on. A bit lucky to get away with that one. But he has been in control for most of the innings. Not a lot of boundaries to show, but lots of singles and twos, and even a three. It's really good running and really good leadership. And just to finish that point about fitness, I completely agree with you. It's one of the things completely in your control. You're right in saying you may not be as skilled as other players, but there's no excuse for other players being fitter than you. And that leads to the fielding. You can always get better in the field. You can always work hard at your fielding. I always think I want to be the best fielder, which means you have to stay fit. Keep giving yourself the best chance to perform. You can only do that if you remain fit. And lots of people look up to Virat Kohli and Shea Hope, but these guys, continue to perform and dominate because of how hard they were on their fitness. And I'm sure all of these youngsters will be aspiring to do what they have been able to do for their countries. I'm sure Casey has had conversations with Shea Hope as one of the more outstanding ODI batters of this generation. And he has a great opportunity. We saw a wonderful shot at the end of a test match in Trinidad of Ravindra Jadeja talking and going through the motions of bowling with Jomel Warrican. So Casey would be well advised to go to Rohit Sharma or go to Virat Kohli before this toys finish and say, yo, I have some questions. Can you share some info with me? Because he's done it with Shea Hope, I'm sure. Yeah, there's so much you can learn by simply having conversations with people who have done the job for years. 
And these guys have lots of experience. I'm sure they'll be willing to share whatever knowledge they've gained along the way with youngsters from all around the world. And I can tell you with assurance, Virat loves doing it. Rohit loves doing it. Loves talking cricket. Very good. Very, very sensible, low risk, and very mature from Casey Carty. One, six, three for four. Partnership of 72. Basper Drakes, Dominic Drakes' his dad. Just got to stay consistent and stay with what you've been doing all along, Casey Carty. He nods his head in disapproval, perhaps, of the execution of the shot. He wanted to hit that one a lot straighter on the up. But back face closed, perhaps the bottom hand taking over. We're going so close to that field right sharp, may wicket, but he survives. I think it's important that he sees the game through to the end. He's done so well so far. And this is exactly what West Indies management and I'm sure Darren Sami, head coach, would have wanted. He's shown some resilience and that's all you wanted from West Indies batters. Tough going. But willing to fight, willing to take on the challenge. All the way for six. Struck with authority. Really is playing a captain's knock to get his team drawing level in this three match. CG United ODI series. Just helping that one over fine leg. All the way for six, 69 meters. Yo. Ambitious. That one just seemed to have kicked. Reared up from a length. Surprising Shea Hope. Looks to have been crossing. And has oh. Ishan Kishan leaping. But it just shows that it hasn't been easy batting on this surface. Shea Hope is 61. And he's still getting surprises. We're seeing this 10 away. And just, just for, for obviously for Caribbean viewers who know Casey Carty from the island of St. Martin, first international cricketer from there. And for Indian viewership as well, as a young man who was a member of that 2016 Under-19 World Cup. I've told a story before about him getting tattoos for each landmark that he's crossed. But this for him is just another really brilliant learning curve. Don't 
don't get too ambitious, just finish it off clinically. One, seven, three for four. The last ball of that previous over hit the seam and again reared up from a length, taking Casey, Casey Carity on the right shoulder. Quite an ambitious stroke. Just looking to finish it quickly. But it's an opportunity to see his team across the lane finish with a not out and improve that average. Yes, Shakira, and, and, and the significance of that for, for, for viewership who may not quite understand finishing off the game. I know a number of cricketers, one in particular who's still playing former West Indies captain, who has tried for years to finish games off, be there at the end and don't leave any things to chance. So that's how elusive that can be. But when you are there at the end and you finish off a game, you're filled with confidence, you understand how to close out games. So when a close situation comes around in future and it will as sure as the sun rises tomorrow you know what to do dropped it cool deep yada thought it was coming a lot quicker than it actually did and ended up having half step back and then to dive forward casey carty finished the job yeah again looking to finish install Look, he takes a step back and then has to dive forward. The ball eventually dying on him. Another chance for Casey Carty to see the team over the lane. Anything later than that would be absent. As fine as you can get it between the slip and the keeper. Just four more to win. His risk-taking level has gone up in the last 15 minutes. And the race mode to complement that shot. Very brave. With what looks to be a third slip in place. He takes that right off the stumps. Just four runs left. West Indies one hit away. If he wants to hit a six to get to 50. Just short and Carty throws his head in the air because he wanted to hit it for six to get to his 50. But more importantly, he's coming today for his first match of this series. One game later than he should and has seen his, his team over the line with his captain. Well played Casey Carty, well played Shea Hope. The West Indies draw level in this three-match series with one to play. They win by six wickets here at Kensington Oval to the approval and the pleasure of this crowd. They're staying faithful. Excitement in the stands. And the winning shot by Casey Curti. Trying to bring out his 50. Oh, and it falls agonizingly short of the boundary. One bounce into the boundary, but enough to get the West Indies team crossing line. Just look, he's willing it on to get cross that boundary, hoping to get a 50. But a good knock by the youngster brought in for Vice Captain Rob McPowell. And finally, smiles in that West Indies count. You can see how much it means to them to draw a level in this series. And not just to win, but to win against a very good Indian side. He has done the job 
and he will be given much more opportunities to do it again. He's done it alongside his captain, Shea Ho, who was brilliant for his 63 not out for 80 deliveries. Just two fours and two sixes. And a lot of running, you can tell by the way he's drenched in sweat. It's Darren Sammy, he'll be happier now. Romario Shepard, I thought, had an outstanding game with the ball. Yes, no Rohit Sharma, no Virat Kohli. That must be reminded. But you can only play against what is put in front of you, and the West Indies have done that magnificently through their bowling and then through the Carty Sheho partnership. 91 unbeaten. Give guys a chance when they're in form to cement their credentials. At least the error was rectified today. She Hope, what a batter. What a 50 over ODI batter. From the start of his career in 2016, his standards have not dropped up to today. West Indies winning this game by six wickets, getting to 182 for four on the back of a 91 round partnership between Captain Shea Hope and Casey Carty. Shea Hope got to 63 off 80, Casey Carty 48, not out. And there was a foundation built by Brandon King and Calmeers. Calmeers got to 36. Three wickets for attacker for West Indies doing the job and winning the game in the 37th over. A yeah, confirmation of what Shakira Selman has said, three wickets to Shadow Taco. His initial spell was outstanding, a wicket with his second legal delivery, followed up with Brandon King's wicket. Alec Afanaz and Kyle Mears, the others, and Kuldeep with improved pace in his bowling, I thought, caused a few problems early on as well, one for 30. So a sequence of nine games winning by India is broken from December 2019 till today. West Indies winning by six wickets on the back of their bowling effort from Moti and Shepard, the Burbese boys, and uh, Joseph with a couple carrier with one series level at one apiece with one to play. The MasterCard priceless moment of the match. A wonderful catch by Casey Carty, full of athleticism. And that's only one aspect of how well he fielded today, how brilliant he was, and then how outstandingly well he batted. But that's a moment to remember. MasterCard priceless moment. What an athlete. Very satisfied West Indian supporters still remain in the ground for the presentation. We'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll hear from the captains.
It's taken approximately three and a half years for the West Indies to secure a win against India in ODIs. They've done it with a collective effort. Joyous West Indian fans all over. Let's now join Samuel Badri. Hello and welcome to the end of match presentation of the second one day international of the CG United Series West Indies versus India 2023 powered by Yes Bank. I would firstly like to congratulate West Indies on winning this match and keeping the series alive. A win by six wickets. Cricket West Indies would like to thank the official sponsors of the series who have made this possible. CG United title sponsor, Yes Bank, Mastercard, Daffabet, Blue Waters, Banks Beer, Coca-Cola, and the Barbados Tourism Management Inc. Thanks to all of you. I'd like to first of all introduce Hardik Pandya, the captain of India. If you can come towards me, Hardik, for a quick chat. Uh, commiserations on the result today. If you were to evaluate that performance, what would you say? Um, see, obviously, we, we didn't bat the way we were supposed to. I, uh, I think wicket played pretty well. Um, I don't think it was like the first game. Uh, first game, it was coming on nicely on the bat and much better wicket than the first inning. Uh, but it's just that I think, um, you know, barring Shubman, everyone played their shot and kind of got out and or hit, hit, the, hit the fielder directly. And yeah, disappointing. But uh, at the same point of time, many, many more things to learn. And if you were to point out a few positive from today's performance, you mentioned Shubman Gelly Shankishan, another half century, Sharul Takru, three wickets, a few of those? Yeah, absolutely. The way they opened, uh, you know, the way uh, they batted throughout, and even Ishan as well, especially uh, the way he's striking the ball. Um, you know, you can see that the confidence which he got during IPL is carrying forward that, and it's very important for Indian cricket as well. And at the same point of time, Shadul coming and bowling the way he bowled uh, kind of got us back into the game and, you know, kept our hopes alive. Uh, you know, unfortunately, um, Hope batted really well and the other guy as well who came and kind of gave him good hand and uh, yeah they hold their nerves and they got the, uh, the score. Yeah Casey Carty tell us a little bit about your bowling and how is the body uh, how are you feeling? My body's fine. Uh, I have I have to bowl uh, uh, what do you call uh, more overs to get uh, you know ready workload for the up, yeah, yeah workload up uh, for the ODI series, uh, ODI World Cup as well. So yeah, slowly, slowly. Uh, you know, I'm 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 being a turtle right now, uh, not the rabbit, uh, and uh, hoping that by the time the World Cup comes, uh, everything goes well. And if I can express my West Indian bias, series locked at one apiece, heading to Trinidad and Tobago for that series decider. What can we expect from you guys? I mean, see, to be very honest, uh, you know, you would want uh, the series to be 1-1, one, one, uh, you know, going on the third. You know, it kind of gets the character out of everyone. You know, even they will be tested, we will be tested. So rather than, uh, you know, having this game, I think next game would be quite more exciting now for the viewers as well and at the same point of time as players as well. Always a pleasure chatting with you, Hardik. All the best in that series, Isaila. Thanks Thank again. Uh, the captain from India. And I would now like to call on... The player of the match, and that will be presented by Miss Tasha Myers, the Chief Financial Officer of CG United. Quite a few contenders, three wickets for Gurakesh Moti, three wickets for Romario Shepard. But on a difficult batting surface, the award goes to none other than the West Indian captain, Shea Hope. Shea will receive that award. And many congratulations. Thank you very much, Miss Tasha Myers, for your assistance. Shea, if I can call you here for a quick shot. Um, another one-day international half century for you. I think it's your 24th, now your third here at the Kensington Oval. How pleased are you with that batting effort and the fact that you were there at the very end? Again, all my runs, as long as I contribute to team wins, I'm happy. So whether I get a 50, whether I get a 100, a double 100, as long as we win, I'm happy. And that partnership with Casey Carty came in at, I think the score was 90 for four in a precarious position. It was proliferated by running between the wickets, yeah. those singles. How important is that and was that out in the middle? Yeah, the thing about batting, when things are difficult to score, especially on a surface like that, you've got to find ways to score quickly, especially when they got quality bowlers. So in that case, you've got to make sure you run hard, push the fielders in the deep. And we got a lot of tools there, so it made the job a lot easier. Uh, that partnership really set the tone and set the, the platform for that victory. Talking a bit from a captaincy standpoint now, keeping the series alive, your first win against India in some 10 efforts. How satisfied are you with that effort? Yeah, very satisfied. Like I said um, previously, the aim is to get back into the series. We know we had two games um, to go and <laughs> we got one win. We got to win the next one to win the series. So the guys are going to come hard again and try to get over the line next game. 
Lots of energy in the field, some fantastic catching. Casey Carty himself took a spectacular one along with Alec Athanas. What would we say accounted for that performance today and how can we replicate that every single time we step on the field? And I say we because I'm talking from a West Indian standpoint. <laughs> No, that's good. Um, <clears throat> we, we keep speaking about that attitude, and you have to bring that attitude into the field. Whenever you cross that line, you have to give effort. And that's all I ask for the guys. And today, was we, we display that very tremendously, and I think we need to replicate that to be more consistent uh, with both bat and ball, and then definitely in the field as well. And your bowlers, I mentioned Romario Shepard picking up three wickets, Gulikesh Muti once again with another three-wicket haul. A total bowling effort for you? Yeah, complete performance, I must say. It was a bit challenging again, the surface, so the batters, especially to start with the new ball, was a bit tough. But yeah, the bowlers did their job, the fielders helped them out in the field, and then the batters finished the job at the end there. The fans in Trinidad and Tobago could not have wanted anything better. Series squared at one apiece, all to play for in that final game. What are you hoping for from your men? Yes, yeah, simple as that, just to replicate that same attitude and effort, and then the result will take care of itself. Obviously, we want to be on the winning side, so as long as we tick our boxes, I'm sure we're going to be winning. Thank you for your time, Shiop. Well played today and all the best in that final game. Thank you very much. It's a bright spot for the West Indies in this tour, in this series. A reflection as to what transpired in this second CG United one day powered by Yes Bank. West Indies, of course, winning the toss, inserting India. They were bowled out for 181. Top scorer for India, Ishan Kishan, with another half century. A real collective effort with the ball. Moti, once more, was very good. Three wickets, spun the ball, had good control. But the real shining star for the West Indies was Romario Shepard. Bowled with accuracy, extracted bounce, got the important batters out. Gave the West Indies a good chance of winning the game at the halfway stage. West Indies, in reply, had a good start. Opening partnership of 53 between King and Mez. And then it was that unbeaten partnership between the captain, Shea Hope, and Casey Carty. They produced 91 and secured victory for the West Indies by six wickets. Fanfare at the ground, fanfare all across the globe if you're a West Indian fan. But for now, we're going to take a short break and we'll come back with much more for you.
Back here at Kensington Oval in Barbados, the ODI series is level at one apiece. The West Indies winning today by six wickets after India took the first game by five wickets. They took the Test Series as well, India, by a margin of one to nil with a drawn second Test match. So one more ODI to go in Port of Spain, Trinidad on Tuesday. To my right, Shakira Selman, a World Cup winner, Rana Kapoor, a man who knows global cricket like no other. And one of the men of the moment, Casey Carty, the first international cricketer from the island of St. Martin. Casey, let me start with you and just say well played to you. What are your feelings on finishing the game and getting your team to a win? Well, it's good to um, be there and level the series with the captain. When I came in, my job was just, you know, to rotate as much as possible and just bat with him. So I tried my best to stay there at the end and give the team the best possible chance of winning. Shakira, let me jump to you then and your thoughts on this victory. Yeah, I think it was a really good victory by West Indies. They were clinical initially in the field. And I thought that was led by players like what we saw from Casey Carty, he was really good on the ground first before he took that outstanding catch. And I think that the bowlers were able to feed off of that. And then they were really good with the bat. It was a challenging surface to bat on. So I thought he and Shea Hope, they were resilient and they played the situation very well and got West Indies over the line. Yeah, Shakira has been on about that energy in the field from the start of the morning. Ronak, now just contextualize mm. this, this whole game for me. I think a lot of fans would look at this and say, oh, India dropped Rohit and Kohli arrested them to try and give the others a go. I'm still sceptical of what India have learned from a game like this. They've been outplayed by the West Indies, who just stuck to bowling good areas on the surface that helped and fielded exceptionally. They outfielded India too. So full credit to the West Indies. This was, I don't know if India were taking it a bit too easy with the selection and the attitude today. We'll come to that a little later. But take nothing away from the West Indies. They played the better cricket today and they deserve to be 1-1 in the series. Casey, we are inducting you into the Media Hall of Fame for this moment <laughs> as we show a package of your batting. And just as we look at it, tell me what about this pleased you most today? All in all, for me, it's just that I was there. I was there to the end, you know? Just wanted to, to win the game. I would like to win as much games for West Indies as possible. I would love to get back on top of world cricket and make the nation proud. So for me, it's just, uh, just being there at the end and getting used to that winning feeling. All of that running, those white lines that we're seeing there are singles, the yellow ones are twos in between the blue boundaries. How important is that facet of the game to you? Well, it's very important to me because I'm not a boundary hitter. Mm -hmm. So that, that plays a big part, part of my game. Um, it, it also was a difficult pitch. So, so boundary hitting would have kind of been difficult to carry on throughout the innings. So running hard, ones and twos were very important. I want to go back to that moment. And we've got it on camera. You didn't get away when it just went short of the boundary line for the winning shot. Just keep feast your eyes on this and tell me what was going through your mind here. I always love you to raise your bat for West Indies. So <laughs> I just wanted to raise my bat for the team, you know? Yeah, quite interesting that you said you wanted to see the team move the line. And Bish and I were on asking you to come not out and carry on. So how important do you think that was, carrying the team over the line to your chances of staying in the team as you continue? Uh, it's always very important to finish the game. You always hear, leave it up to no one. Um, I back myself in almost any situation, almost any situation. Um, so, you know, I just, just try my best and whenever I'm in a position to, to bring home the game, to try and do so as much as possible. Ronak will have a question for you in a moment. I just want to go now to that catch that you took and the moment you saw it off the bat again, what was your approach? Well, I thought it was actually coming to me more. Uh, sprint off and I kind of slip, which is why I had to end up putting in dive, but Thankfully, I caught it, and <laughs> as, as I didn't have anything to, to curse me about. <laughs> Is that one of the best ones you've taken? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we saw you in the qualifiers as well take a brilliant one over the ropes, and then your disappointment, I think, at putting down a much simpler one a little bit later. How hard and assiduous do you work on that aspect of your game? Well, I wasn't a strong fielder from young, so for me, it's like repetition. I always have to keep at it to to be in good form. So uh, as much chances as I get to work on my feeling, I would try and put in the work. Mm. 
I'd just love to talk to you, Casey, about the partnership with Shea Hope at a time where the spinners were bowling really well. Mm -hmm. Kuldeep was turning it around. There's a lot of chatter from Kishan behind, too. There was balls that were gripping. Tell me a bit about what you've learned and what was the discussion with you and Shea Hope when the ball was turning so much. Well, he, he keeps it simple between the wickets. Um, he always tells me to back myself and back my skills. Um, the, one key, the one key thing he told me was that with the bar spinning as such, it, it's yeah. going to be hard to go down the ground. So you try and hit the square sweepers as much as sure. possible. So I took that into consideration. I've actually been working on, on it from since in Zimbabwe because they yeah. told me about it from then. And really, that was it. Yeah. Your color commentary is coming along quite beautifully yeah. in this little <laughs> chat here. So now I'm going to take you to your captain's half century here and just educate us with what impressed you and what impresses you about his batting and what you talk about? Well, in general, he, he, he's, he's a hard worker. Um, every time he comes to bat, he looks like he's in charge. He looks like a guy that averages 50 in, in this format. Um, I commend him on that. He, like I say, he, he has a very hard work ethic. And as you can see, every time he walks out to play, it almost looks like he's going to get runs every time. Yeah, lots of singles in there for Shea Hope as well, Ranok. Yeah, and I think I love what Casey said a little while back, Bish. Shea Hope, Casey Kadi, those that partnership was the kind of partnership that one day international cricket in particular allows to flourish. And I've heard Casey said he, the aim for a young player is to get the West Indies back on track, especially when it comes to ODI cricket, missing out on a World Cup. Now, I want to ask you, Casey, how important is this format of the game? You said yourself you're not, uh, you don't consider yourself as much of a boundary as Shea Hope to is more atoned in this format. How much does one day international cricket mean to a young cricketer like you? Well, I actually love the white bar game. Mm. You know what I mean? Coming from this day cricket where I got a bit of success. Yeah. I grew to really love it because I got a better understanding of the game. You know what I mean? It, it, it poses a lot of challenges. Mm. And when you get better in this format, to me, you get better in the red ball format in terms of your stroke play. It's just, you know, to tone it down or up, but I really love this game. Brilliant. Just, 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 just to close off, um, you came back from the Under-19 World Cup, you went to get a tattoo, and your mom said, get it off before you get back to the Dutch side. What tattoo are you going to get now that you've finished the game here for the West Indies? No, I have to do something a little more. I have to do something a little more. <laughs> so I can have an excuse. <laughs> First 100? International 100? Yeah, definitely. You wanted to ask him something, Shakir? Yeah, I really wanted to ask you this. How confident were you coming into this game after having been left out in that first game and with West Indies 1-0 down? Uh, very confident because I've been batting well. I've been working hard on my game from Zimbabwe leading right up. Even though I didn't play, the coaches were still doing good work with me. So it's just when I got my opportunity to make use of it. Thank you very much, Casey, for coming across. Our floor manager is giving me the evil eye. She said, get Casey back to the dressing room before the rain comes down. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And congratulations. All the very best in Trinidad. Thanks. As Casey Carty in that match-winning partnership with his captain. Just the fielding again, Shakira. I want you to continue touching on that for me as an entire package, not just Katie's cases and how much that has meant. Yeah, and it really started with some of this ground fielding. There was Yannick Carrier and this, this is really good by Romario Shepard. It didn't result in a run out, but I think everyone fed off of each other. They were diving around and there was so much effort. And during qualifiers, you heard the captain, you heard the head coach asking for efforts like this, asking for consistency and good attitudes in the field. And again, I think that's what led to West Indies being able to get 10 wickets. Yeah, very good. And the Casey Carty's catch, of course. And the challenge will be to bring this, at least the energy, every game from here on. You may not be able to take all the catches, but the energy, the bowling was good as well, which is something that we need to touch on with Romario Shepard yeah. picking up his best career. Home. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's an important personal performance for Shepard, who at times cops some flack on what's his role in the team. Is he going to bowl you? Uh, wicket taking overs in the middle, is he going to win you games with that? That's what you want him to do on a pitch which offers some assistance, get nasty, get uncomfortable, because that's the kind of bowling that the likes of Akshay Patel and Ravindra Jadeja will be most tested under Bish. So, I like what I saw from Shepard, that's the kind of high-impact, intelligent bowling we need to see from him, especially when the short ball can be so good. 
Yeah, and I think he deserves all the commendations he gets. He works really hard, and I hope that West Indies continues to give him a chance to perform this role. Explain the role to him and give him more opportunities to excel at playing this role. Yes, um, hard trier, Murakesh, Gudakesh Moti, again, I'll say he's the best finger spinner in the Caribbean, played his part. Yeah, he's certainly proven that. Every time he's been given an opportunity, he makes the most of it, and he was able to break that 90 run partnership, taking Shaman Shem, Gill early on. But then he came back, and he accounted for Sky again once more, Sky falling to the left armor. I thought he was exemplary for West Indies, and he led the way with the ball once more, getting three wickets on this occasion. Best left arm spinner, best finger spinner across formats. I should be clearer on that. A good grouping, good accuracy, spins the ball. So just a little bit of rain coming down. So forgive us if we seem a little bit rushed here. Uh, Runnock looking forward to that third ODI in South Trinidad. Yep. Um, your thoughts? I think India should, and I think they will play a full strength team. Right. It's okay to give players an opportunity to see what they're about, but India need to try and simulate the kind of cricket and positions that they would find themselves in in the World Cup. And I don't think the series has given them enough on that just yet. Is Ishan Kishan going to open when Rohit Sharma and Shubman Gill play together? Is Surya Kumar Yadav going to bat three or six? And he's going to have to bat with a Virat Kohli, who will have challenges playing quality left-arm spin like Gurukesh Moti did. Today was an opportunity to play one of the two. I would have liked to see Kohli. And I think they took it a bit too easy and they would have encountered that they may lose this game, which they have. So I expect a response and I expect them to try and put themselves in the best possible situation to try and win not just this game, but perhaps test themselves further in the World Cup. So I hope for, a more, I hope for more of a response. Speak your truth and quickly as the rain comes on a little bit heavier, West Indies to continue this. Yeah, it's an opportunity for West Indies to show some consistency, consistency with that effort, consistency in winning as well. They haven't won many games and they, this is the first game in 10 outings that they've beaten India. So it's an opportunity for, the, for them and they'll go on with the momentum and I think it will be a really good game in Trinidad. I thought we banned the use of momentum from our cricket broadcasting. Shakira is going to pay a fine later. Thank you very much, RK. Thank, Thank you very much, Shakira. Just a reminder of how this game panned out. West Indies winning by six wickets. The bowlers did the job. India limited to 181. West Indies chasing well with a partnership between Carty and the captain, Hope. Uh, 91 in total, 182 for four, a six wicket win, remember. Series squared at one apiece, one game in Trinidad, a historic game down in South Trinidad, the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Trinidad. 9 a.m. local time is when we'll be in uh, on Tuesday, sorry, the 1st of August, third and final decider. Hopefully we have good weather for that game between West Indies and India. So we want the fans coming out. Don't forget the times, don't forget the dates. Hope you've enjoyed Kensington Oval. Look forward to your company next time. Bye for now.
catch it. Catch it. Catch it. No, no. 